755-7355. That's 755-7355, The Woodwork Shop. The name has changed from Dobbs Honda Mendenhall to Auto Nation Honda Mendenhall, and everything else stays the same. Same great people on the floor, same great service department, same great deals on new Hondas and certified used cars, and Kenny Meyer still running the show. Dobbs has actually been an Auto Nation store for over 15 years, but now for marketing and advertising purposes nationwide, the sign on the building says Auto Nation. So let's kick things off with the Auto Nation Honda Mendenhall Summer Sell Down event. Vacation time means vans and SUVs, and Auto Nation Honda Mendenhall has Odysseys and Pilots that comfortably seat eight and still have room for your gear. The new 2013 Accord is roomier, quieter, and more fuel efficient than any Accord ever made. When you mix the number one retailer of cars and trucks in America with the number one down home sales and service store in Memphis, you get Auto Nation Honda Mendenhall. Call Kenny Myers at 848-5507 or drop by and visit at 2875 Mendenhall Road South. Auto Nation Honda Mendenhall. The home of the Ole Miss Rebels, Memphis Redbirds, and the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. Sports 56 WHBQ Memphis, a Flynn Broadcasting Company. Now, a Sports 56 update. It's 3 o'clock. I'm Bash. Got some college football notes for you. Alabama coach Nick Saban says starting inside linebacker Trey DePriest has been suspended for quote-unquote for a short time. Saban didn't elaborate on what the linebacker did, but says it wasn't a very smart thing to do. There has to be a consequence sometimes when you don't do the right things. DePriest was second on the team with 59 total tackles last season. Top receiver Amari Cooper wore a black non-contact jersey in today's practice as well. Saban says he'll be out several days with a strained foot. Little college hoops news as well. Tennessee won't have a home game against Kentucky for the first time in over six decades. Tennessee coach Quanzo Martin confirmed Tuesday that volunteers would face Kentucky only once. And that would be at Rupp Arena this season. In NFL news, the Raiders were already going to struggle this year, and things might have gotten worse, and losing arguably their best player. Starting left tackle Jared Veld here will have surgery on a torn triceps and likely miss the entire season. Tom Brady reportedly took a shot to the left knee in practice today, lipped off the field gingerly with trainers, headed back to the locker room. Brady obviously went back under a little bit of pain. I'm sure whoever laid that hit won't have a job much longer either. In baseball news, the contending Kansas City Royals are only four games out of the playoff position. Just added utility man Emilio Bonifacio from the Blue Jays in exchange for a player to be named or cash consideration. Speaking of the Blue Jays, they just placed outfielder Colby Rasmus on the 15-day DL. Do have plenty of day baseball going on as well. Minnesota Twins are up in the Cleveland Indians 7-4. The Reds are beating the Cubs 3-0. Detroit's up on the White Sox 6-3. Kansas City, the aforementioned Kansas City, has a 2-1 lead on the Miami Marlins. Baltimore and Arizona just got underway, as well as San Diego and Colorado. Sports reports brought to you by Charlie's Golf Shop. Visit Charlie's Golf Shop at Vantage Point Golf Center at 9580 Macon Road in Cordova. Charlie's Golf Shop, your complete club repair and fitting service for over 20 years. Call Charlie at 340-1305. It's time for Fish and Stats on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Fish and Stats is presented by Auto Nation GMC. Now, here are your hosts, Rob Fisher and Brett Norsworthy. Good Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday, August 14th, 2013. 15 days until the start of college football. It starts that Thursday at 5.30 Central with South Carolina, North Carolina. Now Steve Spurrier saying he's all in. He's good to go. Jadavion Clowney. He'll be there. Steve Spurrier, 68 years young and going strong and maybe pulling off the best coaching job of all he's pulled off. And Tampa Bay Bandits, was it was really good. Duke was unbelievable. And even Florida when he stepped in there. But now at South Carolina, a place that had zero success, they've had it now and they've had it under Steve Spurrier. Good afternoon, everyone. That will be in 15 days. But today we continue our countdown, our review, preview, of college football and the SEC. We'll go right up to the Thursday of opening night. And one little change, we might not do Ole Miss that day because I don't know how much I'm going to be on that day. And we'll have the golf show that day. We might do Ole Miss that Monday and flip-flop Ole Miss with maybe maybe Arkansas, maybe even Florida. But we're going to, count, we're going to go through them all. And today we'll go through Mississippi State. We did Kentucky on Monday. 
And after the discussion, and we went put the W's and the L's down, I came up four wins, eight losses for Kentucky. Yesterday we did Texas A&M, and with or without Johnny Manziel, I came out with nine wins, three losses today. It's Mississippi State Day, and at 3.30 we'll visit with with Bart Gregory from the Mississippi State broadcast team. He hosts pregame, halftime, and postgame. And in basketball, he is the analyst in men's basketball and analyst in baseball. We'll visit with Bart at 3.30. And then at 4.30, if you didn't get enough state, we'll have another another guest talking all things bullies, all things maroon, as the great Jack Crystal would say, the maroons. We'll visit with Brad Locke from uh, Jack Crystal's, uh, where he lives in Tupelo. Brad's with the Northeast Mississippi Daily Journal, Parish Offered, covers the Rebels for the paper in Tupelo, the Northeast Mississippi Daily Journal. And Brad Lock covers, he's on the Mississippi State beat. He covers all things bullies for the paper in Tupelo. We'll visit with him about 4.30. At 4 o'clock, we'll have Keith Pankey, the head golf pro at Germantown Country Club with golf picks and talk and last little visit for a little while, I guess. What we'll talk about tomorrow doing Mid-South Golf for the radio show about Jason Duffner. I've seen Jason Duffner everywhere since his win, including on the on the Charlie Rose show on PBS. You think Jason really? Duffner? You think J- Jason Duffner two weeks ago thought he'd ever be on the Charlie Rose show? <laughs> no, I don't think and so he, at all. And he was great. David Basham's the voice you hear. Good afternoon, Bash. Afternoon, stats. How you doing, buddy? Doing great. Doing great. You've been here since when? Since the last night when we got off there? Yeah, pretty much. I got the <laughs> cot next door. Yeah. Just hang out. <laughs> the Redbirds played most of the night, didn't they? They were here all night. <laughs> Boy, they've had the tough weather to split the doubleheader last night. Maybe uh, good weather tonight. They'll, they'll be okay to go at, at regularly scheduled time. But uh, Jason Duffner was good in his – I don't even think it's self-effacing. I just think it's him, his, his very – all shucks, just you know, homeboy. It's done good I, style. I, I think holds it. it, it I think he's just being himself. That's that, that's a really that's really smart. You you need to be yourself. No, oh yeah, you got to be, don't you? I mean, I, I don't think you know he needs to go on Charlie Rose and try to you know you know quote Tolstoy. No, just, but but just I th- be you, man. But, but he is a bright guy. Economics major, economics degree at Auburn and. I heard Chuck Galeen on with you guys telling the story of how he found Auburn and how very much he's you know he, he he's an Auburn man and how he fell in love with that campus and that town and that would be easy to do both of those things. Uh, I, I I like Auburn and I like I love going to games at Auburn. I love I love that town because it of uh, it's still very much a town. Uh, some of the SEC locales have gotten a little big for me, and the traffic's gotten a little heavy and it's gotten gotten a little cityfied. I I, I I I tell people if it was just strictly kind of retirement rank, where where you know if I could retire in any of the fourteen SEC towns cities, uh, n- number one would be Oxford, and for a lot of reasons and proximity to Memphis and the airport and when you, you, when you need to pro sports and things like that. Number two, and it it makes one of my Alabama friends irate when I say it, but I think it would be Auburn. And really? I'm, I'm not so sure that three wouldn't be the golden triangle. Maybe not Starville, but Starville would be fine, especially that beautiful area out 82 in uh, West Starville that's growing and growing and growing. But, man, you you plop me in at Old Waverly, and I'd be just fine. I'm a, I'd, be, I'd have no issue with that. <laughs> uh, I, I'd take Columbus. I think we just covered the Golden Triangle, didn't we? Uh, yeah, we did. We <laughs> I think, covered it. I, I think that, that's not a topic for discussion today, your, reti- your retirement places in the SEC. And I, as I said yesterday, well, a lot of retirement talk for somebody's not even even close uh, in in years or, or in, not even there in month, close to in money, closer in years than I am in money. And, and you know, I ruled out the East yesterday because the East Coast time zone. Well, we know that that's just the messed up time zone. Come on. Right. Right. Why you got to be so late with everything? Speaking of money, Baz, you got two point three billion. You lend me? Um, maybe in a couple of years I'll get back to you. I'll buy the Cowboys, put you in charge, and we'll have a big old time, won't we? Forbes value of NFL teams, and gosh, yeah, it's got to be, and it always has been, but it's got to be getting smaller. On if somebody ever wants to sell, who are you going to sell it to? Maybe that Russian guy, Prokhorov. Okay. All right, we got that Russian guy. We got 31 more. What if they were all for sale? That, that's about it. Yeah, I mean, Cowboys, 2.3 billion. Patriots, 
Washington, 1.7. The Giants, man, and what the Maras and the Tish family, from what, what they paid to now, someday they're going to get the nice big capital gains hit. 1.55 billion Texans, 1.45. It didn't cost them near that much to buy in. I mean, it's just outrageous what some of these what what some of these are valued at the lowest the o, uh, Oakland Raiders and all they need is taxpayers step up new seven eight nine hundred million dollar stadium and and it will go up their value would go up fifty percent or so you, they they should but I was kind of surprised to see the Texans up that high but then when you think about being in Houston and that state I mean it is nice no question I, I'm kind of surprised to see them up that high where where's the Saints on this list I am going through it because it's a big if, and I can't prove it. And it's terrible it took what it took to bring stability. Can you believe out of Katrina, and we're coming up on the eighth anniversary commemoration, eighth mark of Katrina, no anniversary you celebrate, but it took that tragedy, that disaster, to really lock up the Saints. Benson was kicking the tires, and car salesman that he is, he was kicking the tires. I mean, uh, yeah, he was kicking them, and the fact that the city needed the Saints at that point, that's why they stayed. Oh, and then he, he learned that he, 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 the city needed the Saints, and Tom Benson need, needed that city and really b became a rallying point. But you, you look at the prices. I know Jerry Jones paid 140 million for the Cowboys when he bought them because the story goes in some Arkansas circles that he, he you know that's a lot of money I'd, that would set up just about all of us on the easiest street we can imagine but he, he scraped together his last penny in his oil and gas exploration business and bought the Cowboys 140 million had a, about 20 percent at that time limited partners a uh, guy named Mike McCoy Mac McClarty, who later was chief of, chief of staff for President Clinton and now is in business with Henry Kissinger, was a small, small investor, uh, two or three, two or three percent. And but he, he needed them to push him across the goal line to buy them from Bum Bright. And then eventually he bought the minority people out very quickly in his tenure and his ownership of the Cowboys. And you know, it's been his lock, stock, and barrel. And he, he has been quoted and has said many times through the years that he, he wants to become like the McCaskies, the Hallis family. The McCaskies are the Hallises and the Tishes and the Maras and the old guard families and, and it be, you know, owned by Jones, you know, in a hundred years. Uh, you know, whether it is or isn't, I don't know how we're going to keep score of it because I know none of us would be around to, to, to know, may not have football at, at that point. Sure won't have it, I, I, I think, in in current form. But Jerry Jones, to spend $140 million and now it's worth 2.3. Pretty good investment. That was better than any oil and gas deal he ever got in. <laughs> no question. Great investment. But looking at the average, the NFL average is, where well, I just lost that, $1.17 billion. And then soccer, the next biggest international sport, the world's top 20 soccer teams averaged to $968 million. To see that difference between just the averages is pretty ridiculous. We knew that the NFL was bigger and better than all the rest of the sports, but oh, double the NBA's average. The NBA team average is $509 million. I mean, That's just crazy to think that it's double that. And, Bash, we, we always do, and we always have this conversation about will it be the next big thing? Will it be that next wild, wildly successful, huge money made? And I, I know every generation thinks there's no way, and every then everyone after that, it, it, it does. There, something comes along, uh, you know, the turn of the century guys that kind of led into that, the speculators that got into it like the Roonies, you know, their, their money by and large has been from the NFL. That's what they've made their, you know, they, they weren't wildly, you know, wealthy people. And they got in, got in for a song and, and, and turned it into this. Um, the Maras, while successful, not, not this kind of money, but they have it now, but you know, will we will we keep producing? Will, will America, will or the world keep having? You know, unless you know the the Middle Eastern oil barons decide to buy NFL teams, 
Can, can we always have somebody that can afford this? I think so. I mean, the, it's it keeps going up, but I think you're always going to have people that are going to be in that in that bracket in that range. By the way, the Saints were 23rd on the list overall. Yeah, it's, it's tough on the but, Saints because there's you know this right. But new, I, I I mean, going back to your question, I, I think it will always be there's always going to be people inside of that bracket that are going to be able to take care of it. Yeah, and the miracle of compounding interest. I mean, somebody you know, right now there's a lot of money being made just on what the, that that group has in, has in the bank. It it's big money today. We will talk about Mississippi State. We'll do that with we'll do that with Bart Gregory about 3:30 with Brad Locke from the Northeast Mississippi Daily Journal in Tupelo at about 4:30. Dave Chase on baseball to wrap up the day. A lot going on around baseball. The investigation into the fans. Uh, passing in Atlanta. It was no foul play. It was a horrible accident. Six foot six man, I, you know, that, that had to have something to do with it, didn't it? The the rail was, I, you know, I'm, 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 I'm no plaintiff's attorney and I'm no insurance expert, but the rail was probably fine for most fans that go, but for a man six foot six, that's what I'm reading. Is that right, Bash? Right. And that's what I was, that's kind of what I noted to earlier as well. Is it, it's I know exactly where that rail is, and it's about four, four and a half feet maybe tall. For somebody who is a tall person, I could see somebody kind of tripping over that, flipping over it. But, I mean, I'm tall. I'm six. I'm between 6'3 six, and 6'4, six, but I never had – the only way that I would be able to go over that railing is if I were to actually pick up one of my legs and put one of them over. That's the only way that I would have been able to do it. Yeah, and it, 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 it doesn't sound like, you know, it was, it was any prank or any, you know, showmanship or any dare or anything like that. It, it seemed like he was kind of uh, aloof, standoffish, and j just terrible for, for that to happen at the ballpark. I thought the Braves did a nice job in, in how they've reacted to it. Not, not a lot they could, you know, not a lot you could do, but I think they've done, done all that they can do. And, I, you know, I've seen some quotes from his family. And, of course, there's always, you know, whine, you know, a little bit, you know, that could have been prevented, but, you know, it's why they call them accidents too. Uh, while terrible, it's an accident. That's I mean, that's the bottom line. It's an accident. Mm -hmm. It's extremely unfortunate and very unfortunate that this is the third one in Atlanta, second at Turner Field. But you want to, you always want to make stadiums or any arena as safe as possible. That's always the goal. And ideally, I would think that that should be relatively safe. You know, not to go over a rail. That should be something that you know not to do. But I don't know if he tripped over it. I don't know if he was messing around on the side of it and just slipped over the edge, but it's a very unfortunate accident. We have had a lot of fun this week with the question of the day. On Monday, it was mostly about Tiger and the major. Yesterday, it was about Keith Oberman back at ESPN. Got a little contentious with a back and forth, not for me, but some of the textures, a little contentious back and forth with the textures with their temperament about Keith Oberman. Today, a little more fun question. And this is the question. You can text 67129, best answer. We will announce that at about 5.53 or so. And the winner will win a $25 gift certificate to Humdingers. Two locations for Humdingers. My favorite is at 6300 Poplar Avenue. I call that the Toys for Tots location. That's where every year for the last five years we've been there around the holidays. And it's the best thing and best day of the year on these airwaves, the other one, 1134 North Germantown Parkway. I'm about a Tuesday regular at Humdinger's at Poplar, and uh, the grilled fish and peri-peri chicken, it is terrific food, good and good for you, and Alan Schlesinger, one of the one of the great people in town. That's what you will win at 67129, and here's the question. After, after a little bit of a rancor yesterday, I thought it should be a little bit lighter today. I think Bash approves of the question. Here it is. It's multiple choice. A, B, C, or D. If you go off the grid, you will not win. You can go off the grid if you'd like, but you have to stay on the grid and answer my question to win the Humdinger's gift certificate of $25. Cushiest job in sports, is it A, Sean Foley? So you're, what do you do for a living? I'm a golf teacher. Yeah, who do you teach? Tiger Woods. How hard is that? A, Sean, difficult. Sean Foley. B, Uncle Nate Fitch. So, Nate, what do you do? I don't really know. I do whatever Johnny Manziel tells me. I handle Johnny Manziel. 
I got him in a lot of trouble right now. <laughs> a, Sean Foley. B, Uncle Nate Fitch, the administrative assistant to Johnny Football. C, <laughs> World Wide West. World Wide West, I don't think, has ever done an interview. Has he ever had an actual job? I, I he, he does zero interviews. Very few. Well, I won't say very few. Not a lot of people know what World Wide West's voice sounds like. But life's been good to World Wide West. And I don't no, really know no. what he's done for it to be so good, but it's been good. Therefore, cushiest job in sports. A, Sean Foley. B, Uncle Nate Fitch. C, World Wide West. Or D, the tournament chair of the Maui Classic. No name, just the tournament Doesn't chair. Doesn't matter. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's a, a he or she. Do you? Oh, no idea, but we know it's a cushy job. I, I didn't say chairman. I didn't say chairwoman. I said tournament chair of the Maui Classic. Cushiest job in sports. Is it A, Sean Foley, Tiger Woods teacher, B, Uncle Nate Fitch, Johnny Menzel's administrative assistant, C, World Wide West, I don't really know what he does, D, tournament chair of the Maui Classic. You can enter at 67129 with that. But before we get into any text, let's get to the top story of the day. Top story of the day. It's the Cardinals' last stand. And last night was a big win for the Cardinals, but you know what? It means nothing if they don't back it up tonight with a win and really need a sweep. I don't know how the Pirates gave it away. I think the Pirates are better than the Cardinals. I know the Dodgers are. I know the Braves are better than the Cardinals. And I, th I think the Pirates are better than the Cardinals. And they handed one to the Cardinals last night. I know a lot of people are thinking you know, that might be the one that the Cardinals rally around. It might be the one that breaks Pittsburgh. You know how fragile they were two years ago with the bad call, and about this time last year they started collapsing. I don't think it, I don't think it's the latter at all, and I don't think it's the former for the Cardinals. But the Cardinals had to have that win last night. They got it, and it's the top story for today. It means nothing if they don't back it up with a win tonight. Cardinals very fragile team right now, and I think very flawed. And it's not just the Yadier Molina injury. He's going to be back, and so will Shane Robinson. <laughs> and so will Shane Robinson. Crickets. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But y Yadier will be back. Uh, in it, it's the When a team is going kind of off the rails, when you get pitching, you don't get any hitting. When you get hitting, you don't get any pitching. When you get starting pitching and a little bit of hitting, you don't get any relief. Uh, then you have a you know a star injured. It it all kind of kind of you know snowballs on you, and it it doesn't, it doesn't go well for you. But I think probably the biggest thing about the Cardinals, and I thought it when it was going well, Cardinals were really fluffing up that record against not very good teams, and they don't have they don't have a stretch now. Well, they, they play the Cubs on the north side of Chicago this weekend, but it's the Cubs. It's a rivalry. And the Cubs' intensity for the last few years against the Cardinals, the Cardinals have not matched it. So after that, then it's in Milwaukee, but then Atlanta, Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati again, Pittsburgh again. That's tough through Labor Day and then some, through about the 8th of September for St. Louis. They could fall way out of winning the Central. It could even get dicey on the rear flank if the Nationals were to have a push or someone are, are, are the Diamondbacks, but somebody every year about this time has that, oh, 29 out of 36 down the stretch run, something like that. You know, the math may be a little off, a little off but you, just, you, don't, you don't see them coming. And, you know, down the stretch they come, the Rockies in 07. And that, that run they had came a cropper come World Series time. Uh, the Cardinals, two years ago, it was a little bit later than this, actually about two weeks later, dead and buried. I'm telling my friends, it's over. I don't care. It's football season. It's over. Really didn't pay attention again until about the last week of the year. And, and you know, can you believe this? But, uh, but the Cardinals, you know, they did it two years ago. It can be done. I don't think with the expanded playoffs anymore you can catch that old saw that proverbial two hot weeks of pitching and hitting because it takes much more than that now you almost have to do it you almost have to do it for you know four weeks to to win it all so i i, I don't i don't know that the cardinals uh can do it i don't know that anybody can do it i think it'll come from one of the good teams and in the american league keep your eye on detroit 
not top story. Not top story of the day. Bash, I have one. What was the good one I was telling you I was going to do earlier about college football? Oh, it was the, uh, all the guys who like to That's it. give the... Uh, Thank you. That's better than the one I was going to do. BCS speech. Over the last BCS life, every college football sports writer, commentator, analyst, anything, it just killed the BCS. I didn't through the years. In fact, through those years, I defended it. I was basically alone, uh, felt alone most of the time because I thought it was a little better, not a lot better than what we had. I used to like the drama of you kind of need a team to lose and this one to win and you know and shoot the gap and get lucky on New Year's Day. I even liked the split years. I didn't mind it at all. Yeah, we want it. Yeah, we want it too. Well, good for both of y'all. I didn't mind that at all. Now, Every college football writer, analyst, commentator, prognosticator, all are writing and saying a lamentable story about, man, sure going to miss the BCS. Didn't say a word like that through it. Everything I pick up from guys I like, from guys I respect, from uh, great writers, great commentators, great storytellers, great college football historians, they're all going to miss the BCS so bad and just turned it into a pinata all the years that we had it. And guess what they're going to do with the next system, with the 14 playoff? Going to be a pinata until it's done. Until you're, you know, it's almost like, boy, I shouldn't say this. Remember when Sonny Bono died? Sonny Bono was a member of Congress, Sonny and Cher, entertainer in the 70s. Not many people in Washington took Sonny Bono very seriously until he died tragically. I'm watching his, his funeral on C-SPAN. That's how weird I am. You would have thought Daniel Webster or Alec or Thomas Jefferson had died. It took Sonny Bono dying to get good press. It takes the BCS dying to get good press, and I think that's a little hypocritical, and I don't agree with it. When we come back, we talk the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Listen to Fishing Stats on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. We are the voice of Grizzlies fans. Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Join Sports 56 in the Midday Show at Big Delta Power Sports in Batesville, Mississippi. On Friday the 16th from 11 to 1, we'll have lunch catered by Central Barbecue and Arctic Clear Bottled Water. This is Big Delta Power Sports open house and clearance sale, so you don't want to miss the best deals ever on Hondas and Polaris. We'll have drawings for great prizes like steel blowers, chainsaws, and other products as well. That's this Friday at Big Delta Power Sports in Batesville. Don't miss it. Brian Elder's Roofing Solutions. I'm Brian Elder, builder of the roof on the 2013 St. Jude Dream Home. And now I'm proud to announce builder of the roofs of all six houses in this year's Vesta Home Show. Call me, 867-0303. Let me climb on your roof. My team of expert craftsmen will provide you with options from an inexpensive repair with a full warranty to a complete new roof system with a lifetime warranty. We are among the few certified builders of standing seam metal roofs roofs guaranteed to outlive your grandkids and more affordable than you might think call me 867-0303 i can measure your roof from outer space and give you an estimate right over the phone financing available a beautiful metal roof will be the envy of the neighborhood 867-0303 or brianelderroofing.com Brian Elder's Roofing Solutions. At XMC, your Xerox authorized sales agent, we manage your printing so you can focus on what matters most to your business. XMC and Xerox now offer managed print services to help businesses keep track of what they're spending on printing and manage their resources to maximize their office equipment. The average employee prints over $500 worth of documents each year. With an organization of 30, that is over $15,000 annually. Let us show you how you can save thousands by contacting us or visiting our website at XMCINC. Call 737-8910. That's 737-8910. 
We've all been there. You hear your brakes squealing. You see the check engine light come on. You see a big stain on the garage floor after you pull your car out. Something's wrong and you're scared because you pull into a big retailer and you know it's going to cost you an arm and a leg just to get the car looked at. Well, Scott from Get Gone Auto's here and he says it doesn't have to be like that, right, Scott? No, Peter, it doesn't. Bigger isn't always better. I've worked for some of these other guys that are tripling and even quadrupling the prices of parts. And, and before you ever get your car looked at, they're asking for a $100 check out. We're not going to do that here. So, Scott, what's the Get Gone Auto difference? Peter, the difference is we're going to treat you like you deserve to be treated. We're going to give you a free estimate that the other guys won't, and we're going to give you the price the other guys can't. And, you know, to the big retailers, you're just another n- another number, another face in the crowd. We want to treat you like you deserve to be treated. You can find them on Facebook, or better yet, give them a call. 901-316-5963. Get Gone Auto, where your auto troubles get gone. The Home Depot's guaranteed low prices have made painting any room in your house more affordable than ever. With quality brand names like Bear and Glidden, you'll find the perfect colors at great low prices. Exclusively at the Home Depot is Glidden Duo Paint Plus Primer. This durable Paint Plus Primer can save you more time and money with just one coat. Visit homedepot.com slash paint for details. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Do you have unfiled tax returns or owe the IRS or state more than $10,000? If you don't take action now, your tax problem is only going to get worse. Seizure of property, bank levies, wage garnishments, and potential criminal prosecution. Call the experts at U.S. Tax Shield for help at 1-800-334-5070. Our tax advisors will review your case for free, inform you of your rights, and give you a guaranteed quote. And we have an A-plus rating with a BBB. So get protected. Call U.S. Tax Shield now at 1-800-334-5070. Now, a Sports 56 update. It's 3.30 on Bash. Got some college football notes for you. Alabama coach Nick Saban says starting inside linebacker Trey DePriest has been suspended for quote-unquote a short time. Saban didn't elaborate on what the linebacker did, but says it wasn't a very smart thing to do. There has to be some consequences sometimes when you don't do the right things. DePriest was second on the team in tackles last year with 59 total behind C.J. Mosley. Top receiver Amari Cooper wore a black non-contact jersey in today's practice as well. Saban said he'll be out of several days with a strained foot. A little college hoops news as well. Tennessee won't have a home game against Kentucky for the first time in over six decades. Tennessee coach Conzo Martin confirmed Tuesday that the Volunteers would face Kentucky only once, and that it would be at Rupp Arena this year. In NFL news, Raiders were, Raiders were already going to struggle this year. Things might have gotten just a lot worse, losing arguably their best player, starting left tackle Jared Velt here. We'll have surgery on a torn triceps and will likely miss the entire season. Tom Prady reportedly took a shot to the knee and left in 11-on-11 drills with the Tampa Bay Bucks. He left practice, limped off the field gingerly with trainers. Brady then went to the locker room, but I'm sure whoever laid that hit won't have a job much longer either. In baseball news, the contending Kansas City Royals are only four games out of playoff position. It just added utility man Emilio Bonifacio from the Blue Jays in exchange for a player to be named or cash considerations. Speaking of the Blue Jays, they just placed outfielder Colby Rasmus on the 15-day DL. He'll have an MRI as well as starting pitcher Josh Johnson. Got some day games going on as well. Minnesota and Cleveland are tied up 7-7 heading to the bottom of the ninth. Cincinnati Reds have a 5-0 lead on the Cubs as that one's headed to the ninth as well. Tigers are up 6-3 on the White Sox. A couple of other games have the Baltimore Orioles beating the Diamondbacks 4-2. Colorado Rockies leading the Padres 3-2 in the fifth inning. The sports reports brought to you by the Shot Nurse. Get your game back with testosterone replacement therapy from the Shot Nurse. It's the convenient, affordable way to revitalize your life. Check it out at shotnurse.com. Now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Bart Gregory from the Mississippi State broadcast team will join us in a few seconds. He does pregame, halftime, and postgame on the Bulldog Radio Network. He also is the analyst for men's basketball and the analyst on baseball. Last time we visited with Bart, was he was up in Omaha for the College World Series. Bulldogs was making their run. Look, this this football season rapidly approaching 15 days in Mississippi State. Gear in stock, All most all the local area teams represented, and I'm talking about represented in a fine way at a great place, and that's at Ocall in the Regalia Shopping Center, Memphis Finest Apparel since 1859, and I'm talking about the Peter Millar Collegiate Collection, best-looking logo stuff I've ever seen. Great quality and the the – Various colors, the wash polo, the solid Lyle polo, the classic stripes, all the SEC schools. If they're not there, 
They can order them, have them there in a day or two, three days. T Memphis Tigers represented and some other schools, and they can get about any school, but can get all the SEC stuff. It, it, is, it is the only way to be dressed for the college football season. For you Mississippi State fans that might be going to the Oklahoma State game in Houston, you're going to be inside and temperature controlled at Reliant Stadium, but you want to have the Peter Millar Collegiate Collection stuff on from O'Call. Bill and Bob Levy's granddad told him the customer gets it their way to suit them every time, and that's what you get at O'Call. Dedicated staying current with changing fashions and a personal customized shopping experience for you. And all the labels, their label, the 1859 Wrinkle Free label, the Hiddle trousers, Johnston blankets, Bill's khakis, grown and sewn, Billy Reed from Florence, Alabama, all of them at at O'Call in the Regal Regalia Shopping Center started downtown. It was at Popper and Perkins and since 1996 in the Regalia Shopping Center for any season, spring, summer, fall, football, basketball, holidays, anytime. The best place to go is O'Call. Visit their website, ocall.com, but better yet, go, go by. Make a friend. You will make a friend. O'Call, Memphis Finest Apparel since 1859. We'll catch up with Bart Gregory momentarily. You can text at 67129 your answer to the question of the day, and that question is, cushiest job in all of sports? A, Sean Foley, Tiger Woods teacher. B, Uncle Nate Fitch, no relation, but he's Uncle Nate Fitch to Johnny Manziel. C, World Wide West. Or D, the tournament chair of the Maui Classic. And we've already got uh, a lot of good answers. <laughs> I love, I, I love this job. I love you people. And I'm sorry for going you people on you. I love you people with the clever answers. Already a clubhouse leader that will be tough to fend off as the day wears on. So put your thinking cap on. And if you go off the grid, it's got to be real good to win the prize. And that prize is a $25 gift certificate at Humdinger's. Two locations, 6300 Popper Avenue and 1134 North Germantown Parkway. Let's go inside the Mississippi State Bulldogs and nobody to go inside the bullies with and a great bully, Bart Gregory. Hey, Bart, good afternoon to you. How are you? Hey, Brent, what's going on, man? Doing great. I know you're excited about this time of year. We always get this way, don't you? Man, I tell you what, you know, it's just that uh, time you, you begin to count down a little bit and just any taste. And you're, you're watching every replay that ESPNU or CBS College Sports shows and um, you know, anytime college football is on a replay or anything, you just watch it and just get ready. So uh, we've got exciting times right now. It's hard to believe it's right around the corner. Bart, I think, I think you'll, and if you don't want to, you don't have to. If you want to say, no, that's not true at all, I think you'll attest I'm a oh, pretty fair-minded old old Miss type and fan and lover and especially, and especially fair when it comes to bullies. So I'm going to start this where – and it will be the last time I do it, and I had to do it over and over and over again last year. 36.7 points the 2012 Bullies averaged per game during their 7-0 and start. The team averaged 21 points over its last six games. A lot of people took a lot, had a lot of fun at State's expense, so this is what I'm going to do for the last time concerning the 2012 season. As you know very well, that was at Alabama – home against Johnny Football, at LSU, against Arkansas, and a, a, your biggest, ri a, a biggest rival game and a bowl game against a mighty fine Northwestern team. A whole bunch of teams would have looked like that down the stretch, and that's the last time I'm doing it. Well, yeah, yeah the schedule definitely got a little bit tougher toward the back, the back end of that. And, and uh, I'm, I'm, the defenses got a lot better toward the back end of that. And so, um, you know, hey, you know that's, that's the staple of this league. And, and of course, hey, to be honest with you, I mean, I, you look back at last year's team, they you know, rolled off seven in a row, and you know, all of a sudden you, you're you're winning, you're maybe playing a little bit up above your head, and you know, you and and thinking some thoughts that you may be a little bit better than you are, and uh, it's it's amazing sometimes when you go to Tuscaloosa, that'll kind of bring you back to earth a little bit. Real so bring it. In. I, and I think it, uh, you know, I think it kind of knocked us back, and really never could recover uh, from that loss to Alabama. Came back, played okay against Arkansas the second half, but. Uh, but anyway, hey, it's, a, it's it's a new season. I think the thing about this team and this program with Matt Bayless and the strength program and with Dan Mullen and, and his mindset is, hey, you, you give me something negative to work with in the off season, and uh, and we're going to work hard. And I think they really had a very good off season conditioning program and, and trying to get that uh, that fire back. And uh, uh, not saying you lost any fire at the end of the year, but I think you know they they really have a lot to prove here early in the season. 
Dan Mullen entering his fifth year at Mississippi State, five and seven. His first year ended that year with the the big upset over a highly ranked Ole Miss team at at D- Davis Wade Stadium. Second year, nine and four, beat Michigan in the Gator Bowl, and I thought as good as I've ever seen Mississippi State look. 2011, seven six, win the bowl game in Nashville against Wake last year, eight and five, and lose the bowl game uh, in the Gator Bowl uh, against Northwestern. I, Dan Mullen has got this program on a solid footing. Is it's been on since since the early part of Jackie Sherrill. Well, he does, he does, and I mean, you know, won eight games last year, and you and you uh, you know somewhat felt disappointed at the end of the year, and that's uh, you know how, how many that's times good. as a Mississippi State guy can you say that you know you won eight games and and you're disappointed and you want more, but uh, yeah, that's that's definitely where it, this program has come to, and he's done a great job of developing talent, and and you saw you've seen that with guys that have gotten better from their freshman to their senior year. And, and that's uh, that's kind of what we feel going into this year. You've got a, a senior quarterback who's been here five years. He redshirted his first year at Tyler Russell, and and you've got a little Darius Perkins who's been here a while, and uh, some guys that have been around the program are going to be counted on heavily. And you know, an offensive line that returns just about everybody. Uh, trying to figure out some of these newcomers at receiver who's going to be the guy to emerge there. But uh, you know, there, there's a lot of uh, a lot of positives you can look at going into this year. And, you know, just like it is any other year. I mean, you look at some big games early in the season. At Auburn, it is going to be a huge football game. And you look at the end of the year at Arkansas, it's going to be a big football game. Those are two games that, that are, have been kind of toss-ups for you going in. But, of course, the, you know, at the start, Oklahoma State, I mean, they're picked to win the Big 12. Uh, defensively, it's going to be interesting to see how uh, they stop Tyler Russell. So much has been uh, mentioned about how uh, we're going to stop Oklahoma State, but uh, how they're going to stop Tyler Russell? So I mean, it, that that has potential to be a high-scoring game. So, um, how, how many fans do you think? How many fans do you think you guys will take to Houston for Oklahoma State? You know, State? I think we'll have, we we have a big alumni base mm-hmm. in Houston, Texas. There's, there's almost 2,000 Mississippi State alums uh, in, in that Houston area mm-hmm. uh, with it, with the engineering base in, in in Houston, and so I think we're going to have a lot of folks there. I really do, and. Uh, you know, you probably say ten thousand, maybe a few more than that. And, well, I think you'll uh, do more than that. I hope you do. And, and so, yeah, absolutely. And so, I mean, it's uh, uh, it'll be a big weekend. You know, Oklahoma State. I mean, they're they're you know, they just have so much positive going into this season. And so, um, they'll, yeah, they'll, they'll have someone from the oil industry there as well. Yeah, absolutely. TBP, T Boone Pickens. It's a great experience. I mean, going out there and uh, and playing on ABC at two thirty is a prime time. You know. Prime game on the on that opening weekend at two thirty. So that's a big weekend. So yeah, we'll have a bunch of people out there. Talking Mississippi State with Bart Gregory. Bart hosts pre, half, and post game for football. He's the analyst on men's basketball and the analyst with Jim Ellis on Bulldog baseball. That went all the way through Omaha. I know it was fun. I know your summer was short. It's a lot of fun to talk this year with you. Uh, the the schedule this year, Bart. It it could very if you pull the big upset opening day. It could be a repeat, uh, possibly, of last year with with September a little easier patch than November. Your November at South Carolina, at Texas A&M, the Battle of Highway 82 against Bama, at War Memorial Stadium against Arkansas, and home in the Egg Bowl against Ole Miss on Thanksgiving night. That might be tougher than last year. Hey, you know, it's, it's crazy. When you look at the Carolina, yeah, and what we did with our SEC schedule this year, we we traded off Tennessee and and we pick up South Carolina on the road. And I mean, uh, Spurrier has it really has that team <laughs> primed this year to do some special things. And so, yeah, going to Columbia, this tough place to play, and then going to A and M, and uh, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how A and M has played to that point. I mean, they they could be a preseason top five team, should be a preseason top five team, and. And just to see where they are at that time. And, of course, Alabama. I mean, Alabama's going to be Alabama this year. And playing them here, it's always a great atmosphere. Um, you know, they, they bring you know several fans with them. It's only 91 miles. And so um, that, that's always a big game here. And then, hey, after you have, you know, two uh, actually three consecutive weeks, Carolina, A&M, and Alabama, you know, then you go to Arkansas. And Arkansas is kind of a wild card with uh, Brett Bielema. You really just don't know what to expect out of Arkansas this year. You don't know what kind of style they're going to run. And so uh, by, by that time of the year, they could, uh, you know, could, could have a lot of confidence or, you know, they just could kind of be wandering a little bit. That's where we caught them last year. And so, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, that November part is, is, is pretty tough. But, 
you know, early in the season, you know, you have a chance to set the tone. I mean, if you have, a, you have some games that you feel like you can, can play with and you're going to Auburn, that's kind of an unknown. You know, Gus Malzahn going to have an up-tempo style again down there. And you've got LSU at home on October the 5th, and that's a, that's a big ball game for you there. So, um, anyway, you know, it's uh, it's just it's hard to believe it's here. But, you know, everybody talks about it. We talked about it in baseball all season long, and you know, and in uh, football and baseball and, you know, softball and so many sports. I mean, the SEC is just so crazy when it uh, when, when it comes down to it. And every time you have an opportunity of winning a ball game late in the game in the fourth quarter in this league, it doesn't matter if it's against Kentucky, it doesn't matter if it's against LSU, you have to really uh, be able to, to hone in and, and finish out a game. Y'all need. You know, I was looking down your roster, Bart. Y'all need to get somebody named Brown on your team. You got Richie, you got Beniquez, you got Ryan, you got Fred. You need, you need a few more Browns and and all of those guys, younger guys. The the younger Browns need to come through at a couple of spots. Yeah, and a couple of those guys are linebackers. You, know, you got mm-hmm. Ryan Brown. He really was a surprise last year, defensive end. Um, you know, as, a, as a freshman from down in Louisiana, he played well and. Of course, Richie Brown and Beniquez Brown, those are two redshirt freshmen going to be counted on heavily as linebacker. Uh, Richie Brown is, as a middle linebacker, kid from down Long Beach, Mississippi. And, of mm-hmm. course, Beniquez from up in Florence, Alabama. Those are two guys that you know, sat behind uh, some really good and well-talented players from last year. And you know, Bernard McKinney is going to be a, a big factor in this team. And it's, uh, you know, linebackers have a chance uh, to, to be really special. Even though they're young, uh, they think they, they think really highly of this this young linebacker core. And so a lot of speed, and as you know, in, that, in today's world, you have to have linebackers that can get sideline to sideline in hurries. Many teams spread you out now. And I think that's where they feel very comfortable is they know the, the athleticism they have and the speed they have at linebacker, that could be one of our strengths. Can Richie Brown over the next four years kind of be that – Cam Lawrence type? He probably could. You know, he's, he's a very heady guy. He's got some speed and, uh, you know, just uh, has, has worked hard in the offseason. And that's the thing about Richie is he just goes about and works hard. You know, it's just as hard off the field. It's not harder off the field than he does when he gets on it. And so, um, you know, that's the traits you like to see. And, you know, those are those are things. I know as a retro freshman, those are things that bring, you know, leadership skills later, you know, with guys starting looking to use a sophomore, junior, or senior. So, yeah, Richie's been uh, had a real good off season, and but you know you look at a Philando Bohanna mm-hmm. and linebacker, and I mean just so many of those guys in there that mm-hmm. could, uh, could really be special for you. Yeah, and, and I think uh, there's there's questions about the secondary. The defensive questions are I think are in the secondary. The offensive questions are at receivers. But you got guys that have been waiting their turn. Now it's your turn. Go do it. That, that's right. You know, Tavis Calhoun is at one of the cornerbacks, and I mean, you just have so many guys. And you know, Justin Cox came in. And, and uh, from a junior college program over at East Mississippi, has been very good uh, in, in the off season. And so uh, you just look up and down, and you, you see some guys that have gotten reps in ball games uh, at quarterback. And but hey, you talk about throwing the fire in a hurry. You know, you're yeah. gonna find out. You're gonna find out real quick against Oklahoma State. It's gonna throw it all over the field. And get ready for they, about a 3:45 game. That's gonna be a, <laughs> a long game. Absolutely, and so. Yeah, I mean, we're going to, you know, if there are any unknowns, I think we're going to find out some answers pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, you'll have a lot more answers on the charter home <laughs> than you probably do on the charter down there. Bart Gregory from the Mississippi State Broadcast Team, our guest talking all things bullies. Uh, what would be a great year? What would be a year that, man, when I was talking to Brett back in August, I, I never would have believed this. What what would be that? I mean, yeah, I don't know. I don't, you know, it's, a lot of it depends on who you beat. And, mm-hmm. and you know, you, you don't want to throw out a, out a record because you know six and six well, two years ago was you know we felt halfway decent coming out of the season uh, because you felt you finished strong and last year you know you you went eight games early and you, you kind of tailed a little bit at the end and uh, there was a little uncertainty so I mean you, you know putting wins in there is kind of tough yeah and our appetites but, really change week right. to week and the more you get in the left column you really start kind of having you know you know illusions of grandeur exactly exactly I mean did that do a good enough job of completely Averting the answer to your question. <laughs> you did a great job, Bart. <laughs> Swatted it right over the net. Back at me. <laughs> Good job. Good job, Bart. I know it'll be fun for the opener going to Houston. It'll be a great scene. And and that day, I think the rest of the SEC will be pulling for you. I can't speak for everyone, but I, I know I will be. It'll be fun to watch that game. And, you know, that'll be that's, – that's two cracks the SEC has opening weekend 
against the Big 12, the other one, LSU and TCU. If somehow the SEC could go 2-0, and we could send a memo to Brother Bob Stoops, couldn't we? Not not that overrated, Bob, but if if they get their wins, he can have the last laugh, can't he? Well, he can, he can. That's the thing about it, what makes it interesting. You look across the country and – and everybody's looking to throw darts at uh, at our league, and you know we're very proud of being in the in the best league in the country. <laughs> and, and if you don't, yeah, and if and if you don't believe we're the best, give us about eight seconds, and we'll tell you. <laughs> no, ab- absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I think Alabama proved a lot of that in the championship game last year. But I mean, the, that's the thing about the league is, you know, a few years ago you had Alabama, LSU, and you know they were no doubt the top two teams in the league, and everybody else was kind of playing for third place. But now with with Florida coming on and with A&M coming to the league and doing what they're doing. And, of course, Alabama and LSU are, are going to be good and have been good. I think Tennessee's going to get a lot better. I think Kentucky's going to get a lot better, to mm-hmm. be honest with you, under Stoops. And so, you know, the thing about the thing about the league is the middle of the pack is so good. I mean, the middle of the pack is really, really good. So, it is. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, we're going to find out a lot about the league, I think, uh, that first week. You know, I think, hey, TCU's going to be a little bit better than what a lot of people think. And, and uh, you know, LSU's got some holes to fill, so uh, it's, but hey, they just you know they just throw some great athletes in there and and and, and sick them. So they yeah, got, they got guys they don't even know about that can play for everybody. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. exactly. Bart, exactly. we appreciate your time today. Good luck with the season. Safe travels. I bet we visit again a long time before before the Egg Bowl. But I know I'll see you then. We'll talk and we'll text some before then. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Appreciate you, Brad. Thanks so much. You got it, Bart Gregory with Mississippi State broadcast team he hosts pre-game halftime and post-game he is the analyst for men's basketball and he is the analyst and sidekick to jim ellis for bulldog baseball that went all the way to omaha came up a little short but they had a great year and and you look down this state team and we're going to go a little more in depth and we're, we will have another guest on state coming up brad lock at 4 30 we'll talk a little more about state for teams in this area we're going to try to do two guests as we go team by team in a preview, I I, I just got I just have to believe State's got enough back there in the secondary and enough at receiver to be okay. It looks a little more barren with what they lost, but they've recruited pretty well the last few years. And Dan Mullen's got it going in in a good way. Twenty nine and twenty two in four years since taking over for Sylvester Croom. He's, he's done a good job three out of four years in bowl games. Again, our appetites change. We keep going to the bowls. We want to go to a little one, a little better one the next year. That's just human nature, and that's why they make a lot of money. They have to endure that pressure. When we come back, we'll talk a little more about state. We'll go to the text line. You can answer the question of the day, and the question is this. Cushiest job in sports, A, Sean Foley, B, Uncle Nate Fitch. If you don't know who that is, that's the personal assistant to Johnny Manziel. C, World Wide West. If you don't know who that is, that's the personal assistant to John Calipari of sorts. Or D, the tournament chair of the Maui Classic. You can do that at 67129. It's 351. You're listening to Fish and Stats on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Sports 56 Middays with Greg Gaston and Eli Savoy. Monday through Friday from 11 to 1 on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Hi folks, Rob Walker, Infinity of Memphis, with a message of hope for anyone struggling with the challenge of buying a used car. We understand your concerns as you search the online marketplace. Has it been maintained? What's getting ready to go wrong with it as soon as I buy it? Am I buying someone else's nightmare? Can I buy a warranty? What's a warranty? Boss, relax. relax. When you buy a used vehicle from Infinity of Memphis, you get a free lifetime powertrain warranty. So what happens if the engine has a problem? It's no problem. If the transmission has a problem, the drive shaft, rear end, or front wheel drive has a problem, or if an axle, universal joint, or bearing has a problem, it's no problem. And it's no problem for as long as you own the vehicle. No mileage limit, no time limit, no deductible, no hassle, and it's free. Go to infinityofmemphis.com and browse our inventory. Why would you buy a used car anywhere else? Not all makes qualify, but most do. See infinityofmemphis.com for details. Frontier Western Store in Olive Branch is pleased to announce their biggest back-to-school savings sale in history. All children's and youth jeans are marked down. Wrangler and Carhartt jeans are $5 off. Kids Miss Me jeans, $10 off. All kids shirts, buy one, get one free. 
Yes, you heard that right. Every children's shirt, short sleeve, clearance, and new long sleeve. Buy one, get a second free. Browning, Cotton Logo, Ducks Unlimited, and Carhartt for kids. And when it comes to boots, Frontier is the place for kids of all ages and young adults. Frontier has an unbelievably wide assortment for dress and play, whether they need boots by John Deere, Justin, or Ariat that are just as tough as Dad's, or dress boots from Smoky Mountain or Corral. Frontier can fit them in a pair. So come on in today and load up on the savings at Frontier's Back to School Sale. Frontier Western Store, 5880 Goodman Road, Olive Branch, or on the web at FrontierWesternStore.com. Family owned and operated since 1967. I commute from Schenectady to Manhattan. It's about a six-hour round trip, but it's cool. My family loves Schenectady, and I love books on tape. It's a lot of time to spend driving alone. On the other hand, Schenectady is really close to the highway, so... Life is a long drive. Make sure your car is along for the ride. Mobile Super Motor Oil is formulated to help prevent sludge and protect against wear. Mobile Super, for long engine life. Brian Elder's Roofing Solutions. I'm Brian Elder, builder of the roof on the 2013 St. Jude Dream Home. And now, I'm proud to announce, builder of the roofs of all six houses in this year's Vesta Home Show. Call me, 867-0303. Let me climb on your roof. My team of expert craftsmen will provide you with options from an inexpensive repair with a full warranty to a complete new roof system with a lifetime warranty. We are among the few certified builders of standing seam metal roofs roofs guaranteed to outlive your grandkids and more affordable than you might think call me 867-0303 i can measure your roof from outer space and give you an estimate right over the phone financing available a beautiful metal roof will be the envy of the neighborhood 867-0303 or brianelderroofing.com now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Time is real short, so, Paul, I'm not going to cut you off, but get your question in on Mississippi State. Good afternoon, you're on Fish and Stats. Yeah, I, I noticed that that clown you was talking to from Moo you there didn't mention the school up north when he was running down all their games for the year. Mm, yeah, because he, he's, not, he's not like that. He, 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 he doesn't, he, that's not his angle. Uh, six seven one two nine. If you want to answer the question of the day, and the question of the day is cushiest job in sports, is it? Is it a Sean Foley, the teacher for Tiger Woods? Is it B Uncle Nate Fitch, C Worldwide West, or D the tournament chair of the Maui Classic? That's got to be a good job, doesn't it? Tournament chair of the Maui Classic. You don't have to do anything at all. Well, you're not. You're not sweating the weather. Yeah, are you it's, really ever sweating a, a team saying no to you? <laughs> right, right. They're not going to say no, and you. I'm sure you have a, a lot of help. Hey, that, that that's a tough one. Sean Foley, Uncle Nate Fitch, World Wide West are the tournament chair of the Maui class. When we come back, we'll talk with a proud Mississippi State alum, graduate of the great turf management program there. He's head golf professional at Germantown Country Club. He's Keith Fanky. We'll talk golf, and we'll do some golf picks, and you can get on one of the three teams Bash will pick for a Rob. You can get on my team. You can get on Bash's team, or you can get on Keith Fanky's team. You can do that by calling 360-8255, and you'll win a lesson at Vantage Point Golf. That's in the next segment. At 430, we'll talk more state with Brad Locke from the Northeast Mississippi Daily Journal in Tupelo, and after that, I will go W's and L's for state. You know I got them winning at College Station. That's one. How many more for the Bullies, for the Maroons in this 2013 season? Went eight and five last year. Will they go better? Will they do better this year? First hour in the books on Fish and Stats on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Eventually, it's going to happen. You'll turn the key and your engine won't start. Don't lose your ability to get around. Visit O'Reilly Auto Parts for a super start battery. Whether it's a reliable economy, hardworking premium, or powerful extreme, you'll find it at an everyday low price. Don't let a dead battery slow you down. Visit O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. 
This is it. The one you've been waiting for at Landers Ford. Hey folks, Chris Price here for Landers Ford's huge model year in event. We're closing out all remaining new 2013 Fords with their rock bottom absolute lowest price. Up to $13,000 off MSRP. Hundreds remain and they all have to move out to make room for new 2014 inventory. This is a real opportunity to save thousands of dollars. New 2013 Ford F-150 XLT up to 13 grand off MSRP right here in Landers Ford. This weekend, join us for the Mid-South Mustang Club Car Show. We will have 30 of the coolest Mustangs in the Mid-South at Landers Ford from 10A to 3P. Check this out. Take up to $7,000 off MSRP on the new 2013 Ford Edge SE or new 2013 Ford Flex SE. You decide. Seven grand off. Call me, call me, call me. 800 Shop Ford. Visit LandersMemphis.com. Then come on into Carnival to Landers Ford. Your only president's award winner in the Mid-South for a record 12 consecutive years. Remember, if it doesn't say Landers, you paid two much the memphis redbirds are back in action and waving you home to autozone park this summer we're home this week with more fireworks giveaways and affordable family fun and tickets starting as low as six dollars see the future stars of the st louis cardinals right here in memphis for less than the cost of a movie so call the redbirds at 901-721-6000 or visit us online at memphisredbirds.com for tickets today come home this summer and spend some time with the memphis redbirds Eyes for You and AccuView have several great specials to choose from. That's right, for just $99, you receive two boxes of AccuView, two or one pair of lined bifocals, or two pair of eyeglasses that all include exam. Eyes for You also offers AccuView Oasis for Presbyopia for $159, AccuView Oasis $134.90, and AccuView Oasis for Astigmatism for $159, all including comprehensive eye exam, 60 day follow up care, solution kit, and and two multi-packs of AccuView Oasis for Presbyopia, Eyes for You, and AccuView also offer contact lenses for that hard-to-fit patient. Eyes for You has four convenient locations to serve you in the Memphis area. They have same-day appointments and open Saturday. Eyes for You, your one-stop shop for AccuView. And don't forget the $99 special that includes your exam. Call the Eyes for You nearest you today and save. Your home for the Ole Miss Rebels. Sports 56 WH. Now, a Sports 56 update. It's 4 o'clock. I'm Bash. Got some college football notes for you real quick. Alabama coach Nick Saban says starting inside linebacker Trey DePriest has been suspended for quote-unquote a short time. Saban didn't elaborate on what the linebacker did, but says it wasn't a very smart thing to do and there has to be consequences sometimes when you don't do the right things. DePriest was second on the team last season with 59 total tackles behind C.J. Mosley. Top receiver Amari Cooper wore a black non-contact jersey in today's practice. Saban says he'll be held out several days with a strained foot for Alabama. Little college hoops news as well. Tennessee won't have a home game against Kentucky for the first time in over six decades. Tennessee coach Conzo Martin confirmed Tuesday that the Volunteers would face Kentucky only once and that it would be in Rupp Arena for this season. In NFL news, Raiders are already going to struggle this season. Things might have just gotten worse. And losing arguably their best player, starting left tackle Jared Belt here will have surgery on a torn triceps and likely miss the entire season. Tom Brady reportedly took a shot to the left knee in practice today and limped off the field gingerly with trainers after 11-on-11 drills with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Apparently, it was one of the Buccaneers' defensive ends did a bull rush on Nate Soldier. Just kind of tripped up Brady. No word on how serious the injury is. And some baseball news as well. The contending Kansas City Royals are only four games out of playoff position. Just added utility man Emilio Bonifacio from the Blue Jays in exchange for a player to be named or cash consideration. Also had some plenty of day baseball going on. One final, the Reds beat the Cubs 5-0. to zero. Got a game in extra innings. The Cleveland Indians-Minnesota Twins are tied at 8-8 as they're in the 11th inning. Detroit's up 6-4 on the White Sox in the ninth, and Miami's up 5-2 on the Royals in the bottom of the ninth. This sports report is brought to you by Frontier Western Store. Time for a new pair of boots. Frontier Western Store has just a pair in the famous boot showroom. Work boots and dress boots from Ariat, Rocky, Red Wing, and more. Frontier Western Store is on Goodman Road and Olive Branch and on the web at FrontierWesternStore.com. Now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Hour 2 begins with Golf Talk and Golf Picks with Keith Pankey from Germantown Country Club. He's head golf professional there. And, Keith, I was talking Mississippi State right before we brought you on, and I said you were a proud graduate of the Mississippi State University great turf management program, and it brought you down south, and we got to keep you that way. Glad of it. 
Uh, yes, I was in the uh, PGM Professional Golf Management Program at Mississippi State. Graduated in 1997, so I was there from 93 to 97. I was there when we went to the Final Four in 96 and played against Syracuse. So that was one of my highlights of, of definitely being at Mississippi State. Gosh, you might have been in school with a buddy of mine that's now the golf professional at uh, Briarwood in Meridian, Rob McGraw. I don't remember that name. Rob, but I Rob might, might have been just a, a little before you, just a little before you. Big old Miss guy, but he had to go to state because of that, gr that great program they have. You know, there were, at the time, there was only four programs in the country. So oh, I grew up in Buffalo, New York, so, uh, so I had choices between Mississippi State, Penn State University, Ferris State, and New Mexico State. And once I came down south and saw the beautiful campus and and the, and the wonderful program and all the big time sports that I knew I'd be able to follow the rest of my life. It was, I was sold. Well, and you caught you caught a good stretch too. Basketball was good. Right? Jackie Sherrill had it going in football then, and then just a few years later was in the SEC championship game, beating Alabama in those years. You were the good luck charm. I was, and now look what's going on. Well, this year is going to be great again. We had a good year last year, seven and zero, but then we kind of. Kind of, uh, we kind of let it go by in the back, but, <laughs> Keith, but uh, you, you need to you need to get that good luck charm going again on these golf picks, boy. You were rolling. Oh, I'm just getting hammered, <laughs> man. I'm hammered every week. Now in now in third place. When we get to picks, we're not going to just yet. You will be the first picker, but we will start with last week before we go to the Wyndham Championship this week in Greensboro. The tournament used to be in Greensboro much earlier in the, than this. And it used to be the Pop Top Open. It was the biggest party on the tour. Not anymore. It's, it's in a good spot the week after the PGA, the week before FedEx Cup. People still scrambling to try to try to move up in the FedEx rankings. But the big story this week, it's been a SEC Auburn guy, Jason Duffner, and he's he's made the rounds with that Wanamaker trophy, hasn't he? He has. You know, he was on he was on Howard Stern, I think, the other day on the radio. He was up in New York, um, doing the doing the tour up there and Man, what a great story that was! Um, him winning the event after after being five down or five up, excuse me, two years ago and losing to Keegan, and uh, and then having Keegan there at the at the green to uh, to congratulate him, and he was just on fire Sunday. I mean, he just looks so smooth, and I mean, hitting shots like when you were thinking he's going to screw up, he's just knocking it up there. And you know, the funny thing was is he was hitting them so darn close that he couldn't, you know, even he couldn't miss them or anybody couldn't miss them. You and I could have gotten up and. And kicked them in with our shoe. They were so darn close. So uh, no, it was it was awesome, awesome watching him win Sunday. It was it was nice to see him win the golf tournament rather than Jim Furyk lose the golf tournament like he did at the Open last year. And so uh, you know it was fun. It was fun to see, and you know definitely fun to have an SEC guy uh, winning. And uh, and I think the whole world knows who Amanda Duffner is now, don't, don't they? Yes, and they know Jason Duffner did quite well, and he has confirmed on his uh, victory tour that the Wanamaker Trophy. Holds a comfortable 43 <laughs> 12 ounce beers. Yeah, I, saw that. <laughs> I, I think they've had every concoction that you can stir up in it. That's good. Uh, That's fun. I, I bet they would. I think, you know, I would probably do the same. It, if it, I win it. it. It was a fun win, and it seemed a little low key, and it seemed a little boring, and it seemed a little bit like his personality, but that's okay, isn't it? Yeah, you know, it is. You know, it's definitely not my personality. I could, but you know, I'm also not, a, you know, not as good a golfer as Duffner is, so maybe that's why. But uh, yeah, I mean, he comes up 18, and I mean, he's winning. He's got the tournament pretty much in hand, and, and you're you're waiting for him to throw out this big smile and something, and you know, and he just walks up, just totally co hum, and you can even hear the crowd yelling, "Come on, happy!" You know, it's kind of kind of trying to go him on a little bit, but even then, he knocks that last putt in, and he he did his little fist pump, and and but you know, just once again, it just. It's just not what you know what I would do if I was out there making that putt. I would be just I, I swear I'd be like hell ruin. I'd be running around the green <laughs> high fiving everybody. You know, I mean that'd be my personality. But, uh, but you know you do. I mean in golf you really truly need to uh, you know you need to stay composed and uh, and try to stay in the moment of every shot. And you know if you know if you hit this world class shot that's the most miraculous amazing shot you've ever seen. You can't get too excited. You can't get your heartbeat too too much. And you just got to try and stay in the moment and. You know, somebody like Duffner, he does such a great job of that and, and does such a great job of staying in the moment, not really worrying about where he is and what's going on. And, you know, even he said in his interview afterwards, he goes, I don't think it's really hit me yet. And I don't think it ever did. I think, I'm sure it did when he was drinking those 43 beers out of the, uh, out of the top of the cup. But, uh, he didn't get 43. You know, I mean, yeah. you know, the great golfers, there's not many Tiger Woods out there that can, that can get super amped up, super excited mid round and, and fired up with fist pumps and stuff.
excited, but you know, and truly in golf, you can't do that and and you know and keep it going. You really got to stay, like I said, in the moment and stay relaxed. And and you know, that's one negative to to golf is people want them to get excited, but you you, you need to try and not do that. And otherwise, it, you'll you'll get too too great too too much, and and your swing will start suffering because of it. Tiger's week not so good. Tiger's year has been Player of the Year, hasn't it? You know, I think so, especially now with Duffner won. I mean, he goes from 68th on the FedEx Cup to 14th with a major win. So so even there, he, he jumped down a lot, but still not even close to, to, to the number one, if you will. I mean, 14 is close, but, you know, not that close. But, uh, you know, I think it is. You know, it's, it's amazing, you know, how how he goes from winning by seven shots last week and then all of a sudden now he this week he was saying how bad his backswing was and he just couldn't get it on plane. He couldn't get his backswing to feel right and he sat there you know, Friday night till pitch black with with uh, with Foley trying to work on his backswing, and he just every interview he did, he said he just couldn't get it to feel right, couldn't get it to feel right, and it's so funny to me to to hear that. You know how this guy, best player in the world, going to be the you know more than likely going to be a player of the year this year, and, and he's got one of the best teachers in the world, and he's right there with him all day working with him, and he still truly couldn't get comfortable with with his backswing, and so. So it's unfortunate um, that he didn't win uh, in another year without a major. But yeah, he's still on. He's going to be playing next week. He's got the we got the playoffs that start next week, and he is going to be teeing it up. So, uh, so we'll look forward to some fun, fun golf ahead of us. And you corrected me, but a person also corrects me at six seven one two nine that you would have graduated, and you said it from the PGM program, not the turf management program. Golf course superintendents graduate from turf management program, not to be picky, but us superintendents like to keep it straight. Hale State, we got it straight, and I appreciate that. Keith, you, you corrected me on it. I'm very sorry. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, the PGM program is professional golf management, and then the turf grass, which Mississippi State has a wonderful turf grass program as well. And uh, we've we've had superintendents that have come on board at, Miss, at our facilities that have gone through the Mississippi State program, and uh, it is awesome. And I had to take a couple classes, uh, with one with Dr. Goatley. Man, that was one of my hardest classes in uh, – in college, the old turf grass, learning all the Latin names for all the grasses and all the diseases, and that was tough. But, uh, but yeah, what a great, great uh, program that is as well. The week for Phil, not very good. Year for Phil, fantastic. Almost like, well, kind of like Tiger. Yeah, you know, it's it was, you know, it was good for TNT though. You TNT had to be loving it because you had all morning you had Phil and Tiger on TV, which everybody loves to watch, and then. And then they would kind of bow out, and then they would go to the to the leaders. So uh, you know, you know, TNT was on in the morning on both Saturday and Sunday, and then they went to CBS for the evening or afternoon. So, but yeah, I mean, Phil, Phil just didn't have it either. I mean, that one shot he hits, he makes par on the hole, but he, I mean, he literally hits the ball three three yards on that one one shot on that one uh, one hole where he's in the deep rough, and uh, you know, it just. You know, I just feel like once you get it going sideways, and every golfer that's listening right now knows that, you know, you get a couple holes, and the timing's not right, and the golf ball's going sideways, uh, it's just, you know, it's hard to come back from that. And then and then you start getting a couple bad rounds, and then you start pressing and trying to go for more birdies than you should, and you're not playing your game plan where you're laying back and shooting to the center of the green and, you know, on situations where you know you can knock it tight, then you shoot for the stick. and. You know, uh, unfortunately, when you're 10 over or 4 over or 5 over and the leaders are 8 or 9 under, you got to, I mean, 68 is not an option. I mean, it's either going to be 62 or you're you're not going to be do, making up any ground. So so it's gonna, either going to be great and you're going to be in the papers for having the best round ever or you're going to be the opposite where you're going to go backwards. And unfortunately, Phil did that this weekend. But a year that he will never, ever, oh, ever, never. That's ever forget. It, uh, it, it was a spectacular year. We go through... We'll go through the President's Cup. We might take that week off after the Tour Championship, but we'll have you on through the President's Cup. So we have about five, six more visits with you to date, and you can't say, Phil, what's been your favorite tournament this year and your favorite tournament winner? Ooh, that's a tough one. And uh, last week may be it. Yeah, I mean, that last week was pretty fun, and it was, it was, but I, I can't say that was my favorite. Um, I'm going to have to go Masters. Uh, I mean, I love the Masters that much. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's that's really one of the only tournaments that I ever tape and watch late at night. You know, I, I try to pick up on events, but with three kids, I don't I don't watch every golf tournament from start to finish. But the Masters, I do. I mean, on the Masters, I tape it, and, and I'll sit up from 8 o'clock at night till 11 o'clock, you know, at night after the kids are in bed watching every shot and every round and, and just absolutely love it. And so definitely the Masters. Definitely. And, and that was redemption for Adam, Adam Scott, Scott, redemption oh, at the PGA for for uh, 
for Jason Duffner, it's been been a very redemptive year. Justin Rose criticized heavily through his career. He gets a major. Phil Mickelson, after losing at the uh, U.S. Open, he turns around and wins one that not many people thought he would win in his career. Yeah, definitely. And there's still some players out there that need some majors. You know, Lee Westwood, you know, I keep picking him. I mean, he he was up there in the leaderboard at, leaderboard at minus three and then didn't do much Sunday. And, uh, you know, it's just there's a lot of really good players out there that haven't won majors that, that need to get in there. And, and it was nice to get a, uh, Justin Rose, like you said, and get a Duffner and Adam Scott, get those guys a major right now this year. And, you know, and, and, and obviously Phil is a, just a, you know, everybody loves Phil. So, uh, so it's good to get him one as well. But player of the year is Tiger Woods, right? Right now, I have to say yes. We're 100%. What, what could change? We've got some big weeks ahead of us now. I mean, there's some big tournaments coming up. We've got mm-hmm. a FedEx Cup champion that's going to be crowned at some point. So, uh, but I don't see how anybody, if somebody else wins a FedEx, you know, FedEx Cup crown, how they can outdo Tiger with him having five wins in 12 tournaments. And, and he's that not to through. me is nuts. No, shoot, no. I bet he wins one more, at least maybe two more before the year is out because he's got four more tournaments coming. The rest of the year, the big tournaments, Wyndham Championship this weekend, the Barclays, Deutsche Bank, that's a Friday start, Monday finish, Labor Day Day. weekend, the BMW Championships, and then the Tour Championships at the home of Bobby Jones at East Lake. Yes, definitely. Big tournaments. I mean, it's it's a good – Good little stretch of golf because all your top players are going to play every week. They're not going to be taking weeks off, um, you know. And then and then we get right into football season, and then everybody's going to watch Presidents Cup. I don't care what football game's on. Everybody loves those kind of tournaments. So uh, so yeah, so we got some great golf ahead of us, and I am pumped. I'm excited, ready for some good golf. And there's great golf and great times ahead of us, ahead of you at Germantown Country Club. We talked about it last week, getting into fall. I know it felt like fall this morning, but getting really into fall. It, it may be the best time of the year to play, and I know you got deals that will accommodate people for fall membership heading into next year when you can do the pool thing again. Most definitely. You know, our pool is still going to be open for another month, but, yeah, the golf, I think golf, best time to play golf is September, October. We have our member guests in September, and we have our senior club championship September and our big one, which is our year-end tournament for all our point getters in October. But uh, most definitely, golf course is perfect. Uh, we finally got some, got some low humidity. We needed it, and uh, – so the golf course is perfect, and you know we'd love love to have some more people join Germantown. Uh, right now, we're still at no initiation fee, and the monthly dues are pretty reasonable. So uh, I feel free to have everybody call me and come visit us. How much are you watching the USM, Keith? I haven't really started watching it yet, uh, but I will watch it this weekend. Uh, but another big golf this weekend is the Solheim Cup. Mm-hmm. That's another big one. This so we got a lot of golf going. We got the USAM. We've got uh, the Solheim Cup and uh, and the tournament this the Wyndham this weekend. So it's a lot, a lot, a lot of golf to be watching. The local youngster in the US amateur. And I've said I thought the College World Series in college baseball, College World Series, the Road to Omaha and to the championship, and the US amateur. I think it's the two hardest things to win in sport. You know, the USAM is tough because you got you know you got to get in there first, and then you get into the to the field where you know for the man, stroke play field and then you got to get it down into the top 64 but then you got to win a bunch of matches in a row to to win that i mean that's a lot of golf in about a two to three week stretch mm-hmm. i know we had a qualifier over at um re- close to us for the U- for the usam one of our members tried to qualify get on a team now you can be on my team you can be on keith's team or you can be on rob's team bash will do the picking i won big last week since we've had the vantage point lesson i've really really been doing well don't be bragging i'm not i'm just i'm stating that <laughs> vantage, vantage point golf center is at 9850 macon road in cordova you can visit their website vantagepointgolf.com 22 acre golf driving range 10 target greens grass hitting mats available a brand new chipping green open until 10 o'clock with a very well lighted range golf instruction club repair clubhouse and grounds available for corporate events meetings parties fundraisers and this is where you can win a 30-minute golf lesson with instructor Chris Thompson. That includes video analysis and instruction. And this is a good time to work on all the things that hadn't gone so well all summer for you. You can work on them now, and you can get in at 360-8255. You can be on my team or Keith's team or Rob Fisher's team. Keith, you're on the tee first because you are in third with $9 million, $9.5 million. Rob's in first at 11.8. I'm in second at 11.3 after having my all SEC team last week and Jason Duffner coming through for me. So you got the first pick. 
at Sedgefield at the Wyndham Championship in Greensboro. You know, I was reading stats this week, uh, you know, your stats, man, and uh, couldn't believe when I read this, but this is my guy I'm picking. Sergio Garcia is leading the tour right now in putting, which I've always said he's one of the best ball strikers out there, and it's always been putting that's let him down. So I'm taking Sergio Garcia with the first pick. Sergio Garcia with the very first pick. This is not a bad field at all, and this is, and I'm not going my SEC team this week. He had a good PGA, and I almost took him with my third pick last week instead of Harris English from LSU, I'll take David Toms. Yeah, David Toms is like 145th in uh, the FedEx Cup points. So he, he, needs, needs, he needs to drop 20 points to get even into the uh, to play golf anymore. He's done for the year. 360-8255. Thank you, Keith. 360-8255 to get on a team for the – Less than advantage point golf you can call now, but Bash has got a lot. He's got a lot going on. He's trying to get the calls for the teams and do the picks. Boy, good. I hope it hurts Rob. Yeah, call, yeah, call, call exactly. now. Three. Call now. Three six zero eight two five five. Confusing. <laughs> I'm gonna call for my cell phone just to mess them up. Fluster Bash. We're trying to catch Rob. Hurry. Call now. Bash. So thoughtful of you guys. <laughs> yeah, you got two picks too. Call now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my two picks. I'm gonna take uh, old Sneedaker. Very good. Take Brent there and. Um, I'm going to take Zach Johnson. Yeah, that was you. I mean, we teed it up as high as you can get teed up on those two picks. Yeah, okay, back around to me. I'm going to go the old SEC. How about this one? A Georgia Tech guy, Roberto Castro. Oh, man, he was hot last week <laughs> running in some long putts. You know, he's the one, I keep saying it, he's the one that qualified here for the uh, for the U.S. Open last year. Was our final guy, one in the playoffs. Got to drive him and drive him to his car. Back around uh, to you for two picks. Back to me. Um, you know this guy hasn't won much, but um, you know what? I'm changing that. I'm going with uh, I'm going with another guy, one of our members' best you, friends. You, you Boo got Weekly. Two, you got two picks. Oh, I got Boo Pick. Boo. Boo. I'm going Boo Weekly and uh, Mr. Webb Simpson. Webb Simpson has has trying to get back on the winning tour. Webb, Webb Simpson. Webb Simpson, who played college golf, I think at Wake Forest. I bet he knows this course. I know he knows those people very well, so it's around to me. Do I stay with the new SEC thing, the old SEC thing, or do I go, <laughs> go to a local guy who played collegiately at NC State? you got a Wake Forest guy. I'll take a member of the Wolfpack. I'll take Carl Pedersen. There you go. I think he actually pronounced it Peterson, but it's with two Ts. It looks like Pedersen. He has two S's as well. Carl Peterson, my pick. Around to you, Bash. Uh, for Rob, you got Brant Snedeker and Zach Johnson, your last pick. Who are the two guys y'all just took? I uh, Keith took Boo Weekly, Webb Simpson, and I took Carl Peterson. Ah, all right. I'll take um, Jordan Spieth. That no, was, that's, that, that's what I was torn to. That's kind of the future SEC when we bring Texas in. Yeah. When will we bring Texas in the SEC? I don't know. I, th I thought it would already happen by now. You think they're going to be there, huh? No, I, th I think it was going going to happen. It would have been by now. Okay, okay. I thought it would have gotcha. been uh, kind of linkage with A&M, but I don't think A&M wants them. No. They're going to be good well, they're, again. They're doing their own thing. So here are the picks. Keith, you have Sergio Garcia, Boo right. Weekly, Webb Simpson, Bash Far Rob has Brent Snedeker, Zach Johnson, Jordan Spieth. I have for myself in second place David Toms, Roberto Castro, and Carl Peterson, and we've got people for the teams. The winner gets the gets the lesson advantage point golf. Uh, Keith, it's going to be fun to watch golf down the stretch for those that need to do well for the FedEx Cup, and then in to the FedEx Cup. Um, I, my my answer to my favorite tournament of the year, I think it was Ken Duke winning. Really? Mm -hmm. That's a, I mean that was a big, big win. Oh, for it, him. Made, it it. It made all the years of all the hard work and all the lousy tours and lousy travel. It made it all worth it. That was that was a fun tournament. And when he won up in Connecticut, and you know now he he's made you. And he's going to be in all these all the all the FedEx Cup events. He'll be in all the World Golf events. He starts next year in Maui. Right now there are about 28, 29 people that are already played their way into a Maui spot. Not all would go. Uh, let's say 25 plays dead last pays about 90,000. Oh, I know. And that's like the, uh, that's like Firestone last yeah. week. I mean, and he got that last place got like $82,000. I mean, even if you just teed it up for four days and, and, and played your worst scrap of your life, you were still making $82,000. So no, it's, it's always fun to see those guys, a guy like the Ken Duke guy that's been playing a lot or a guy, you know, just been practicing, practicing and, you know, we can't can't pull it out to win an event like that. And you got some guys right now that 
like we were saying with uh, David Toms and are on the on the bubble and and you know going to lose their tour card if they don't play well this week. And there's just so much pressure. So you'd love to see somebody like that play well this week and and get it back on tour for next year and and just tee it up and let it fly. All right, we're getting I'm getting ready in about 40 minutes or so to do wins and losses for Mississippi State. Give me yours. What's the oh my issue? goodness! Oh my goodness! They were on the first. Oh, you think we just gonna talk golf all day? Yeah, yeah Ron, yeah. Ron, Ron Higgins. Yeah, Ron yeah, Higgins had the tour. It. Started article with a fifth-year senior, yeah, quarterback. And, so, uh, so how many wins? Man, you know, it's gonna be a tough year this year, especially starting with OK State, um, first game of the year. Playing say twelve. In say twelve. Um, <laughs> what's that? Say twelve wins. Twelve wins. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Realistically, I'd love to get eight. Eight, eight, eight or nine wins would be awesome this year. It would be a good year. Dan Mullins won about that on average in his four years. He's won twenty-nine games in four years. That that. That's close enough. That's about seven. Yeah, or they so. just don't know this year. All the all the predictors, they you know, people are picking them to do well, and then some people are picking them to be dead in the bottom of the SEC. So I don't know, but we got a fifth year senior quarterback. We got some good recruits. Uh, so we're, I think we're going to do well this year. We just got a tough schedule. I that, mean, SEC is tough. That is Keith Panky, the head golf professional at Germantown Country Club and proud holder of a degree from Mississippi State in the PGM program. Yes. I want to get it right. Keith, I appreciate you. Hey, thanks, guys. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Keith Panky from Germantown Golf Club talking about – Country Club, I'm sorry, talking about golf and doing our picks. And we've got it, got the teams. What are the teams, Bash? This week we got uh, – Ren picked you first. He's smart, going after all these ones. Uh, Mike picked me second, and then another Mike picked Keith. Very good. Mike, Mike and Ren, that's the picks. Winner gets the golf lesson at Vantage Point Golf. We will visit with Brad Locke from the Northeast Mississippi Daily Journal about more Mississippi State talk when we come back at the bottom of the hour at Lot Afternoon Baseball. Bash has been keeping you up to date with all the scores. Talked about the Cardinals in the top story. Good win last night means nothing if they don't back it up tonight. Really need to sweep. And if they do, you got a flat foot tie in the National League Central, but still have to play Pittsburgh a lot the rest of the way. They got a wild one going on in, in many in the Twin Cities, 9-8 Indians lead the Twins right now. 12 hits for the Indians, 17 for the Twins outdoors in Minnesota. And, and if you notice the, the old Metrodome, the Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome, you know what the, now the new formal name of it is? Haven't heard. What is it? Mall of America Field. And Mall of America, I think, is located where old Metropolitan Stadium where the Vikings and Twins played when they were you know, uh, expansion franchises. Mall of America is massive. I didn't know it was called Mall of America Field, though. <laughs> it, it is, and I don't know that anybody calls it that. I wouldn't. I mean, it, it, it did something I don't know another stadium will ever do. In a four, five, six month span, it had World Series, it had Super Bowl, it had Final Four. I don't know if you, I don't know if we have the ability now to have that, but Mall of America, not, not much there. Cubs beat. Uh, the Cubs lose the Reds. Reds beat the Cubs 5-zip on the north side of Chicago. And on the south side of Chicago, the Tigers beat the White Sox 6-4. Marlins beat the Royals 5-2. You're listening to Fishing Stats on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Sports time with George Lopetis. Now weekdays at 10. Only on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. It's golf season again, folks, and that means the Mid-South Golfer Radio Show, sponsored by Lads, is back in prime time. Join Rob Fisher, Brett Norsworthy, and former PGA Tour professional Bob Walcott as they broadcast live from Tunica National each Thursday from 3 to 4 p.m. They'll break down each week's events, have knowledgeable guests to share their insights, discuss what's going on both locally and nationally, and tell you how to improve your game with Bob's Tip of the Week. That's the Mid-South Golfer Radio Show from 3 to 4 each and every Thursday, sponsored by Lads, your trusted source for all your turf, golf, and utility needs. Hello, this is Greg Hines from Windyke Country Club, a locally owned full service country club that served the Memphis area for over 50 years, and it continues to improve and get better every year. Windyke offers more golf than anyone in town, 36 holes of championship golf, an 18 hole executive par three, a driving range, and a short game practice area. In fact, Windyke is known for some of the best greens in the area. What you may not know is that we strive to be as family friendly as possible. We have activities for men, women, and children. These 
activities include our indoor outdoor tennis courts, an excellent swimming program, expanded dining options, and an award winning golf and tennis professional staff that can help anyone from the tiniest of tigers to the pros that just need a few pointers. Memberships are between $90 and $320 a month, no assessments, no minimums, and hey, if you're under 34, we have a great new membership just for you. For more information, call 901 754 1888 or go online to windike.com. It's time. Time to get yourself a new Honda ATV at the 2013 Honda ATV Clearance Event. We're moving out all our 2013 Honda ATVs with incredible deals to make room for the new 2014 models. Check them out now at Big Delta Honda. Get $1,000 in bonus bucks on America's best-selling ATV, the Honda Rancher, featuring program fuel injection and optional power steering. It's our best deal ever on a Rancher, so come on down for great deals and as low as 2.99% financing on all Honda ATVs. Get down to Big Delta Honda, 155 Cracker Barrel Drive in Batesville, Mississippi, and get yourself on a Honda ATV during the Honda ATV clearance event with great deals and $1,000 bonus bucks on a fully loaded rancher today. Honda recommends utility ATVs for riders 16 years and older. Special 2.99% fixed APR financing available for well-qualified buyers. Not all buyers may qualify. Bonus bucks go with select new and unregistered models. I like saving money. I mean, it's not like I have a purse stuffed with coupons or... Okay, I do. The other day, I went into Wells Fargo to get help with a loan. Good news. You qualify for our double discount promotion. For a limited time, get double the interest rate discount we normally give on select new loans and lines of credit just for being a checking package customer. And the best part? I didn't even need a coupon. Come to Wells Fargo to discuss how the double discount promotion can help with the interest rate on your new loan or line of credit. Wells Fargo. Together, we'll go far. Subject to credit qualification, Wells Fargo Bank and A. Hi, I'm Joan London, and if you're worried about your parent or a loved one living alone like I was, and you want reliable senior care information, then call A Place for Mom, the nation's largest senior living referral service. With one phone call, you'll get free information on assisted living, Alzheimer's care, nursing homes, even important financial information. It's a free service, so call now. Call now, 800-460-3580, 800-460-3580. The Home Depot's guaranteed low prices have made painting any room in your house more affordable than ever. With quality brand names like Bear and Glidden, you'll find the perfect colors at great low prices. Exclusively at the Home Depot is Glidden Duo Paint Plus Primer. This durable Paint Plus Primer can save you more time and money with just one coat. Visit homedepot.com slash paint for details. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Now, a Sports 56 update. It's 4.30. I'm Bash. Got a couple of college football notes for you. Alabama coach Nick Saban says starting inside linebacker Trey DePriest has been suspended for quote-unquote a short time. Saban didn't elaborate on what the linebacker did, but says it wasn't a very smart thing to do. It has to be consequences sometimes when you don't do the right things. DePriest was second on the team last season with 59 tackles behind linebacker C.J. Mosley. Top receiver Amari Cooper wore a black non-contact jersey today in, in today's practice. Saban says he'll be held, held out several days with a strained foot. Little college hoops news as well. Tennessee won't have a home game against Kentucky for the first time in over six decades. Tennessee coach Conzo Martin confirmed Tuesday that the Volunteers would face Kentucky only once and that it would be a Rupp Arena this season. In NFL news, the Raiders were already going to struggle this season. Things might have just gotten worse and losing arguably their best player. Starting left tackle Jared Belt here will have surgery on a torn tr triceps, likely missed the entire season. Tom Brady reportedly took a shot to the left knee in practice today and limped off the field gingerly with trainers. He headed back to the locker room. It's an 11-on-11 drills going up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers' first-team defense. In baseball news, the contending Kansas City Royals are only four games out of the playoff position. Just added utility man Emilio Bonifacio from the Blue Jays in exchange for a player to be named or cash considerations. Speaking of the Blue Jays, they also placed outfielder Colby Rasmus on the 15-day DL. Both he and pitcher Josh Johnson will undergo MRIs to see how those injuries progress. Do have some day baseball games going out the Throughout the day, three finals earlier, the Reds, Reds beat the Cubs 5-0, Marlins beat the Royals 5-2, and the Detroit Tigers beat the White Sox 6-4. Got an extra inning game right now with the Cleveland Indians beating the Minnesota Twins 9-8. That one's in the bottom of the 12th with the Twins at bat. San Diego has a, losing to the Colorado Rockies 3-2 in the 8th, and Baltimore has a 4-2 lead over the Arizona Diamondbacks in the 6th. Sports Reports brought to you by PC Doctor. Having trouble with your PC? If you have no time for downtime, you need to call PC Doctor today at 662-626-PCDR. That's 662-626-7237 or visit their website, pcdoctorit.com. 
Now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. We welcome you back in the question of the day. Cushiest job in sports, A, Sean Foley, B, Uncle Nate Fitch, Johnny Manziel's handler, body man, C, World Wide West, D, tournament chair of the Maui Classic, text me at 67129 with your answer, A, Sean Foley, B, Nate Fitch, C, World Wide West, D, tournament chair of the Maui Classic, winner gets a $25 gift certificate at Humdinger's, two locations, 6300 Poplar Avenue, or 1134 North Germantown Parkway. I love to go to the Popper Ave location. I call it the Toys for Tots location. It's the best favorite day of the year for just about all of us here at WHBQ when we assemble there around the holidays. And good bull bash, sometimes you just get lucky. Alan Schlesinger, the man that runs, owns, and great operator of Humdingers, big Mississippi State fan. His son just graduated there in May. So good that we're giving away Humdingers on Mississippi State Day, and we're going to talk more bullies right now with, with Brad Locke from the Northeast Mississippi Daily Journal in Tupelo. He's on the state beat. Parrish Alford from that paper is on the Ole Miss beat, and I don't think anybody works any harder than these two to bring you great coverage of both both of the SEC teams in the Magnolia State. Brad Locke, welcome. Glad to have you on with us, and I know I know this is this is the tough week, isn't it, before school starts and then game week? Uh, it is for me because I'm trying to finish up all this uh, all this copy for our preseason football tab. <laughs> you, and, but you and Paris, y- y- y'all y'all love to work all the time, don't you? You're you're those kind of guys. Yeah, uh, we really don't have a choice but to work all the time, especially <laughs> this time of year. We don't get a day off. No, no. Uh, and and for you, I, I guess it went all the way through Omaha, didn't it? Yeah, my summer was interesting. All eight days of it. The baseball, yeah, really, because the baseball team, you know, they went to the finals of the College World Series. That that was that took, you know, that took up until the end of June. Two days after I get home from that, we got to go on vacation. So I did get to go on vacation, went to Disney. But after that, you know, it was pretty quick turnaround to media days and now practice. Well, after a trip to Disney, Brad, you had to get back to work because if you're like everybody else out here, go you were you were busted when you got out of there. So what's the big yeah. story for the for this August camp? For Dan Mullen entering year five after four very successful years. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting. It's not. I don't know if you'd say there's a big overarching storyline, but there's a general sense that uh, people are kind of expecting, and the team's kind of expecting this program to take that, you know, that next step. I mean, they've done well. They've won. I mean, they've been to three straight bowl games, three consecutive winning seasons, and you know, if you look at MSU's history, that's, that's kind of a rare thing to happen. Uh, so they're certainly happy with that, but now there's kind of that expectation of getting to, you know, double digit wins, uh, being more competitive at the top of the SEC West. And I, I guess you could say that's kind of what's on a lot of people's minds right now. I, I know the world's not, I know life's not fair, and I know the sports world's not fair. Is that a fair expectation for this year? I think it will be and, and would be and will be for next year. Is that, fa- is, is that fair for Bulldog fans? to expect Dan Mullen in double digits wins this year? This year, I don't think so. Um, and, you know, that's not necessarily an indictment of the talent or depth, because I think this may be the, the, the deepest team that MSU's had, mm-hmm. maybe the most talent it's had in a while. But look at the schedule, man. They play in the West. I mean, late in the season, they got to they gotta go to South Carolina and to Texas A&M back-to-back weeks. I mean, that's kind of stuff they're having to deal with. Uh, okay, and, uh, and so... They had Oka open up with Oklahoma State. That's, that's a, then Oklahoma State, I think, is a two-touchdown favorite last I checked. The schedule's just brutal. I mean, they could be better than last year when they won eight games. They may not win as many games because the schedule, uh, I think, is just you know, a little bit tougher even than last year, and that was a tough one. So, 10 wins, I mean, you got to pull some upsets. Now, maybe this team is, is going to take it to another level, and we're just not seeing it. Of course, you can't really tell in the preseason, but maybe Tyler Ruffle just goes off and, and just has a, you know, a, a huge, huge year, and I think he could have a good year. He had a good one last year. It's really going to depend a lot on some of these other pieces, though. Good uh, offensive, well. li- good offensive line. A hoss tailback. Little, a lot of questions at receiver. Exactly, and you know the, the receivers. I think will be okay. A, they've got Tyler Russell uh, running things, and he'll uh, be able to help them along. And B, those are some. They, they have some talent at that position. I mean, there are some really talented guys, and it's just a matter of them getting out there and doing it. I think some of those guys will do it, and we've seen flashes in the past. On the offensive line, it is very strong, especially in the middle. Uh, kind of want to see how the tackles do. 
Uh, they had some troubles last year, so if they can get better protection for Tyler Russell, I think that allows him to do a lot more things. You mentioned Melvarius Perkins, the tailback. Great depth at tailback. they got four guys uh, that they can uh, throw out there in a the game. Uh, defensively, I think if they can develop a better pass rush and uh, still play pretty good pass defense, uh, it could be a pretty strong unit there, too. The, it, it's always more fun in egg ball country to win that game and then win your bowl game. Uh, you guys were on the right side of that for a few years. Ole Miss got it last year. It makes for a long winter when you're not on the right side of it. No, it does, you know, and under Dan Mullen, though uh, MSU has gone into the offseason, his first three years coming off a big win, his first year they uh, won the Egg Bowl uh, to go five, finish 5-7. Five and seven. Next two years they uh, win the Egg Bowl again and then win a bowl game. So you know, they go into the offseason each of those years feeling really good about themselves. This past year lost to Ole Miss, lost to Northwestern in the Gator Bowl, and so, yeah, uh, and they would have lost five of their last six total. Mm-hmm. So a pretty – pretty bitter taste in their mouths going into the offseason, but they've talked about that kind of motivating them and, and driving them to uh, be better this year and when, you know, when adversity hits, maybe not to let things snowball. A, so lot, a lot of exciting things going on in and around Starville and on the state campus and stadium expansion for Davis Wade Stadium being one of them. Opening yeah. night a year from now, 2014, it'll be about 62,000, and that opener is against Southern. Is that Southern Miss, is that correct? Yeah, Southern Miss. Yeah, that's, they're going to have it completely done by then. I mean, they're, uh, they're working on it right now, obviously, and, and so the, the seating – uh, the seating's going to be a little bit different this year, obviously, because they're doing all that work in the north end, but they're still going to be able to, I don't know what the exact capacity is going to be this season, but it, I believe it should be pretty close to what it was uh, before construction began. So, yeah, they're going to add, uh, I guess, uh, 6,000-something seats to the stadium, and that's the product of all the tickets they've sold. I mean, sold-out season tickets, again, they've got 23 straight sellouts at that stadium, and, and they talked back to early in Mullen's tenure that, you know, expansion would be something that could happen if it kept the people coming in, and that's what's happened. Supply and demand, and I, th- I, th- I yep. think that's when you expand is when they force you to. I don't think you do it in a hope. I think right. you do it after you know you know you have the, the, those checks setting in the ticket office. Oh, yeah, man, they've approached this in a pretty pretty smartly, I guess. Uh, I mean, I don't know a whole lot about this kind of thing, and other, but, but, yeah, they didn't rush it. They weren't, like, trying to bring fans in by expanding the stadium. They got the fans in, and now, okay, we, can, we should be able to fill the stadium even with with adding 6,000-something seats. And they make sure they, you know, secure the funding. And you got some private uh, money. You've got some uh, uh, some kind of bonds. Uh, and, you know, don't ask me about all that. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, it, it's pretty, you know, pretty ambitious project. It's going gonna, gonna to cost a lot of money, but they've got it all figured out. And, uh, and the hope is that if things stay on schedule, it will be ready to go for the 2014 Open. Brad Locke with us from the paper in Tupelo, the Northeast Mississippi Daily Journal. He's on the Bulldog Beat. Our buddy Parrish offers on the Ole Miss Beat, and that paper provides extremely, extremely good coverage. I mean, day in, day out, they don't miss a thing. They cover it very, very well, the two SEC teams in the state of Mississippi. Brad, uh, you, you talk about a plan, and that plan has been from Dr. Mark Keenum and Scott Strickland uh, down uh, with this Oklahoma State game, will that be returned? And what kind of schedule will, will Scott Strickland be scheduling for the Bulldogs to play in the new digs? Well, the Oklahoma State game is just a one-time thing right now. And I remember last summer, uh, MSU had Mississippi Valley State on the schedule. Mississippi Valley, they ended up having to drop that game because Valley didn't have enough people on scholarship, which means, you know, if you win that game, it does not even count as your win against the one double-A team. So anyway, long story short, they had to drop that game. They ended up picking up Oklahoma State, uh, moving into the season opener. Of course, it's the Texas kickoff classic. That's a, that's a new ESPN production. You'll have two other teams in, in that game, I guess, uh, next season. So um, I, I don't know when these teams will meet again, uh, but uh, certainly to me it's an interesting matchup and something, you know, I've talked about before. I, I've always thought MSU should schedule more of these types of games. Mm-hmm. You know, in recent years, they really haven't that that often. I mean, uh, at least certainly not against a team the caliber of Oklahoma State. But, you know, down the line, I mean, Scott's talked about this before. He wants to make sure he gives the, the, the team a good chance to get to a bowl game, which means, you know, not really scheduling a bunch of Oklahoma State. So, uh, you know, they've got the, the schedule pretty well set a few years in advance. And um, so, you know, I mean, they got Southern Miss coming up next year. That's a a good in-state game, 
and uh, you know I don't have the future schedules in front of me. I wish I did. But, I, I don't uh, know that they do anymore. We used to kind of have them, but now will it be nine league games? Will we someday maybe sure. possibly go to 13? I don't know. I, all, all that future stuff, if it's more than about two years out, I don't pay a lot of attention to it, Brad. But yeah, I mean, that's true. They're still trying to figure all that out. I mean, the 2014 schedule should come out soon. Uh, we don't know when. I talked to Larry Templeton back at Media Days last month. He's like, mm -hmm. well, it should be soon, but they're kind of want to make sure that, you know, they they figure some things out. Now, they're not going to do nine games for next year. They'll, they'll still do eight games for 2014, but still uh, trying to figure all of that out. And uh, so who knows? But as far as the, the non-conference uh, non conference schedule, um, yeah, you, you, do, you know, they, they do set that pretty well in advance. The other games this year, Troy, pretty decent Sunbelt team, uh, Bowling Green, and then Alcorn State as well. Mm -hmm. Seven seven wins and one of them being in the Egg Bowl, that that will pacify people, won't it? Eh, maybe, yeah, yeah, if you do in the Egg Bowl, that certainly helps. <clears throat> I mean, seven wins, I think reasonable MSU fans realize the seven wins against that schedule would be pretty good, really. I mean, it's a brutal schedule, as I talked about, and it's just... Uh, you know, you'd like to win four games at least in the SEC. I believe that's how many MSU won last year. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's at some point though you got to you got to beat somebody you're not supposed to, and they haven't really done that yet. Eight and five overall last year. The loss in the bowl game against Pat Fitzgerald's Northwestern team. Four and four in the SEC. That's fourth in the West. And you know, Brad, I used to say before when we were twelve teams, six in each division. Not a single fan core is prepared to be fourth, fifth, or sixth. Well, they're sure not prepared to be fourth, fifth, sixth, or seventh. You're right. They're not. I mean, that's not really going to, again, go back to the expectations they've kind of built up now. They don't, you know, they're not satisfied with just seven or eight wins anymore. That's fine. They've done that. That's good. It's progress. But they want to get to that 10 win plateau and start competing in the West. And that's really, I mean, that's what Dan Mullen openly talks about. He, I mean, he says, he says it himself. That, that's, that's what they're shooting for, and they're not going to be satisfied with less than that. You you, you can win a, a a friendly wager for a, a soda pop if you'd like in 2010 <laughs> as the defending national champion. They finished 10 and three, lost the famous game to Auburn and Cam Newton at Bryant Denny Stadium, and then destroyed Big Ten co-champ Michigan State in the Capital One Bowl. Alabama finished fourth that year in the West. Yeah, no, it's man, it's how tough it is. Uh, Auburn as national champ was one. I think Arkansas was two, and LSU was three. I know Arkansas was two because they went to the Sugar Bowl in right. BCS. LSU right. was three. Alabama technically, no, technically to it, they were fourth in the West. That's yeah. how brutal. That's how now yeah. so with a ten win team. They, that's how brutal this SEC thing is. It is, man. And now you got Texas A&M uh, coming on with Johnny Football and and all that. So I mean, really finishing fourth is not not bad. I mean, you're a good team. Probably if you finish fourth in the league, but uh, and certainly anything. I think if you, if you finish fourth this year, if MSU does that, you gotta feel pretty good about that. Well, I think you, uh, I think you should feel real that, good. Yeah. yeah, I mean, fence below that though, may may hear a little grumbling. I don't know. Maybe a little grumbling, but we fans, we we love to grumble and find something wrong with everything. But I know what what was right, and that was having you today. And we'll do it a couple times. I hope we can during the year, and maybe even once uh, opening game week before Oklahoma State or after that game, if it's a uh, Big shocking upset, uh, double-digit underdog right now. But yep. I'm, I'm going to go W's and L's in a minute, and I'll give away a secret. I got state, right. I got state pulling upset. Oh, well, there you go. Well, it could happen, man. We'll it see. It could happen. Brad Locke, thank you so much. It was fun. All right, man. I enjoyed it. Thank you. You got it. Brad Locke on the Mississippi State beat for the paper in Tupelo, the Northeast Mississippi Daily Journal. Parish offered with great coverage for the Rebels. Brad with great coverage for the Maroons. When we come back, W's and L time, Bash. I know you're ready to do your Bulldogs. We'll do that when we come back. It's 446. You're listening to Fish and Stats on Sports 56 WHBQ. Hard Bashing with John Harden and David Basham. Saturday mornings at 10 right here on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Brian Elder's Roofing Solutions. 
Solutions. I'm Brian Elder, builder of the roof on the 2013 St. Jude Dream Home. And now I'm proud to announce builder of the roofs of all six houses in this year's Vesta Home Show. Call me, 867-0303. Let me climb on your roof. My team of expert craftsmen will provide you with options from an inexpensive repair with a full warranty to a complete new roof system with a lifetime warranty. We are among the few certified builders of standing seam metal roofs, guaranteed to outlive your grandkids and more affordable than you might think. Call me, 867-0303. I can measure your roof from outer space and give you an estimate right over the phone. Financing available. A beautiful metal roof will be the envy of the neighborhood. 867-0303 or brianelderroofing.com. Call 867-0303. Brian Elder's Roofing Solutions. Hi, folks. Rob Walker, Infinity of Memphis, with great news for anyone looking for a local, late model, low mileage, one owner Infinity vehicle. Last month, Infinity offered their lease customers the opportunity to come out of their lease early, as long as the customer agreed to lease or purchase another new Infinity. It was a huge success, and it was a great deal for those customers. It can be a great deal for you, too. Because we've got a lot of like new Infinity vehicles standing tall, shining like diamonds, and looking for a new place to call home. They're still under factory warranty and come with our exclusive free lifetime powertrain warranty. Think about it. If someone has an Infinity and they're offered the opportunity to get another one, and they do, don't you think that they were really satisfied that Infinity is a great choice? You bet they did. Do yourself a favor. Go to infinityofmemphis.com and browse our used inventory. Infinity of Memphis, Germantown Road, one mile north of I-40. Tunica National's three-person scramble is here, and I'll be out there swinging the sticks, and so should you. Call Tunica National at 866-833-6331 before each and every Thursday at 530 and enter your team. Here's why. 30 bucks gets you nine holes with a cart, a chance to win great prizes from Tunica National and the Gold Strike Casino for the closest to the pin, and a free dinner buffet after play. This year, each week's winning team of any flight qualifies for the Tournament of Champions at the end of the year with an after party at the Gold Strike Casino. Tunica National's three-person scramble in the TOC, sponsored by the Gold Strike Casino, is back. All right, guys, time to make some decisions that will affect your entire football season. Are you going to fall for the game of the week or the year or the decade from somebody who lies about their 80% win rate, starts off talking a lot of smack, but disappears about two-thirds of the way through the season? Someone who promises a whole lot of free picks and then starts their high-pressure sales routine. Somebody who doesn't even use their real name. How about going with somebody you know and trust, the Rain Man and All-Star Sports? Our first 15 special is underway. Ball, college and pro, $1,500 total cost. And you get every play we make, no exceptions, 10-star plays included. This year, late money updates will be texted to our season. 600 or check out the specials at therainman.com. Our 36th football season is coming up. We want you to be part of it. Do you have unfiled tax returns? get worse. Seizure of property, bank levies, wage garnishments, and potential criminal prosecution. Call the experts at U.S. Tax Shield for help at 1-800-334-5070. Our tax advisors will review your case for free, inform you of your rights, and give you a guaranteed quote. And we have an A-plus rating with the BBB. So get protected. Call U.S. Tax Shield now at 1-800-334-5070. Now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. The Tex toy is just delightful today at 67129. Now, delight me more with Cushy's job in Sports Bash. We finally got it. We're not going to give it away. I predicted it before we came on today. Did I not predict we would get this? Oh, we knew that this answer was coming, but you predicted a little bit earlier. I did. I was off on my timing. I predicted Cushy's job in sports. Is it A, Sean Foley? B, Uncle Nate Fitch, C, World Wide West, D, Tournament Chair of Maui Classic. I don't know that you can win because I'm afraid the winner's already up there at 67129. If you'd like to weigh in, you can. I, I hope this is sincere. I'm going to take it as sincere. I, I'm gonna try, I, I, I do. I trust people. From an Ole Miss fan, enjoying the Mississippi State preview. Good luck to the dogs this season. I wish we had more than that, but I'm realistic, and I know – it's hard to, and I know fandom, and I and I love all that. I love all that, but I 
I think sometimes it gets a little too locked in on all fronts in other teams and Iron Bowl world and Red River shootout world, but that also makes it a lot of fun too. Uh, I love most aspects of fandom, but I don't really like the the cheap shots. I, I, li- I like pulling and cheering. I think it's more fun when you do it for your team and you get delight out of your team doing well, not necessarily the other one doing not so well. Here's Mississippi State prediction for the season. State fans, you're not mad at me yet. You may be in a little bit. <laughs> Here we go. Oklahoma State, opening day. I gave it away with Brad. Uh, I've had it for a while. I think it's my heart. I think it's my SEC flag waving may be too high, but I got a win in Houston against Oklahoma State. I will be insufferable. Probably will be anyway. The Monday after opening weekend, if the SEC goes 2-0 and against the Big 12. I may really cross the line at Bob Stoops. Anyway, 1-0 and over Oklahoma State, 2-0 and over Alcorn State. Bash, you, where, where are you on those first two games? I wish I had as much confidence in that first game as you. And you know I've liked it all summer. I know you off, have. I've, off I've, the record, in the hallway, just among us girls. Yeah, you've been big on it. I mm-hmm. haven't been, but I still think they can get it. It's going to be tough, though. I, I'm, I'll stay with 2-0. and State was better than the Egg Bowl and the Gator Bowl. I think they will play more like how they started last year than how they finished at the start this year. Alcorn State, you with me on a win. Then to oh, Auburn. <laughs> last Mississippi State win at Auburn, 2007. Hadn't beat Auburn two years in a row anywhere since four in a row for Jackie Wayne. Big win opening day, lost to Auburn. I'm bigger on, on Auburn than a lot of people. I'm going to switch it up then just because okay. there's no way I'm losing to Auburn, but I'll stay with you at 2 and one I'd rather lose opening day than lose to Auburn. Oh, I don't blame you. In the league game, that, that makes sense. Uh, that well, makes I am just because it's, it's Auburn. Right. right. <laughs> See, you're dug in on Auburn. See, there you go. I'm trying to bring harmony and peace and love and age of Aquarius to this show at this time <laughs> of year, and you have to go do all that. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Troy and Starville, W. Got to be a W. Uh, very, very, I think, much needed open date, the week, the playing date of September 28th, then home against LSU and Starville. Is that that game two years ago on a Thursday night and had a blast with a great crew. Uh, same result. It was 19-3, I think, that night. About the same kind of game. I think LSU gets the win. Yeah, LSU wins that one. Bowling Green, the Falcons. No, not Atlanta, but the Bowling Green Falcons. They come south to start a win for the Bullies. You with me? Oh, yeah. I hope so. Open date, then ESPN Thursday night game, and it be big for recruiting. We'll have a, uh, I don't know if can you have recruits on Thursday night. Maybe may, may, maybe not. Any, anyway, a Thursday night game against Kentucky. You win over the Wildcats. I think so. I think it wins there. Then the meat grinder. And again, how many people would like to play this down the stretch? How many would come out of this with with many wins and not a lot of scars and bumps and bruises and and some finger pointing to Columbia, lost to the Gamecocks. Yeah, lost there. College Station, I pre- I said yesterday, win over the Aggies. And if I pick the Aggies to lose to them, i got to have the state, state to win it. Win over the Aggies, and then I'm three straight losses. Alabama and Starville, Arkansas and, at War Memorial, and Egg Bowl to Ole Miss. That's an interesting one. I'm a, I'm a little different than you on those last couple of games. South Carolina loss. A&M loss, Alabama loss, and then I think they round out the last two with wins over Arkansas and Ole Miss. So what's your win total? Win total is at, was that seven? I'm six and six. One, two. I'm six and six as well. <laughs> I'll get this at six, seven, one, two, nine. Wonder if Kalo is still missing. State will never lose to Ole Miss again. I guess if you keep saying it and keep saying it, you, you, it will be right for a little while. We've heard that before. I got, I got State going six and six. Upset wins over Oklahoma State and Texas A&M, uh, two and six in conference. If I had to go up or down, would I go down to five or would I go up to seven? I think I would go up, and I think the spot would be Auburn, and the spot could be either or both Arkansas and Little Rock, where State has never won, or Ole Miss at home on Thanksgiving night. How about this nugget? Last win for Mississippi State in the entire state of Arkansas. You want to guess? Mm. Never won at War Memorial Stadium. Right. I have no idea. Never won at Fayetteville either. Last nope, win? Happen. Well, it's happened once. Halcyon days of 1916. State, Mississippi State, and Arkansas met in Fort Smith. 
1916? 1916. Ouch. 1916, last time. I bet they were the Maroons then. They were They were A&M then. Uh, I don't even know what Arkansas was then. I guess they were Arkansas. But 1916, the last time Mississippi State won in the state of Arkansas. Final out, we're coming up to listen to Fishing Stats on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. This is it, the one you've been waiting for at Landers Ford. Hey folks, Chris Price here for Landers Ford's huge model year in event. We're closing out all remaining new 2013 Fords with their rock bottom, absolute lowest price. Up to $13,000 off MSRP. Hundreds remain and they all have to move out to make room for new 2014 inventory. This is a real opportunity to save thousands of dollars. New 2013 Ford F-150 XLT up to 13 grand off MSRP right here at Landers Ford. This weekend, join us for the Mid-South Mustang Club Car Show. We will have 30 of the coolest Mustangs in the Mid-South at Landers Ford from 10A to 3P. Check this out. Take up to $7,000 off MSRP on the new 2013 Ford Edge SE or new 2013 Ford Flex SE. You decide. Seven grand off. Call me, call me, call me. 800 Shop Ford. Visit LandersMemphis.com. Then come on into Carnival to Landers Ford. Your only president's award winner in the Mid-South for a record 12 consecutive years. Remember, if it doesn't say Landers, you paid too much. Much. I'm with John Burgess of the world-famous Rendezvous Restaurant with a bit of a history lesson. Brett, I've spoken about our slaw before. What people don't realize, it's a hundred-year-old recipe. Around 1915, my grandfather had a hot dog stand on Beale Street. That's the exact same slaw we use today that he used to serve on his hot dogs. He also had a diner across the street from St. Joseph Hospital where he sold this slaw. People always ask me, where did he get the recipe for it? And I really don't know. I tell people he got it from the coleslaw ferry. But now, 100 years later, we've come full circle. Here we are serving our products at the FedEx Forum. And on our barbecue sandwiches, of course, we serve our famous coleslaw. Brett, our coleslaw is available along with our barbecue seasoning and sauce at all the local Kroger stores. If they don't have it, please ask your grocer to stock it. Or if not, call me at 901-523-2746. Our coleslaw is great on a barbecue sandwich, but Brett, 100 years later, it's still a great slaw for a hot dog. There's only one rendezvous, and it's in the alley in downtown Memphis. No matter what size, every business is unique and driven to improve results. What's right for one might not be right for you. It all depends on your business and your goals. Trying to grow revenue, focused on cutting costs, or simply need a better way to get work done? XMC, your Xerox authorized sales agent, can help. We offer exceptional Xerox products and are proud to provide cost-effective office equipment and electronic document management. Visit XMCINC.com and allow XMC to help boost productivity, enhance collaboration, and reduce costs at your office. Call 737-8910. That's 737 -8 Nine ten. I commute from Schenectady to Manhattan. It's about a six-hour round trip, but it's cool. My family loves Schenectady, and I love books on tape. It's a lot of time to spend driving alone. On the other hand, Schenectady is really close to the highway, so... Life is a long drive. Make sure your car is along for the ride. Mobile Super Motor Oil is formulated to help prevent sludge and protect against wear. Mobile Super for long engine life. Your home for the Ole Miss Rebels. Sports 56 WHBQ Memphis and 87.7 FM WPGFLP Memphis. A Flynn Broadcasting Station. Now, a Sports 56 update. It's 5 o'clock. I'm Bash. Got some notes out of the college football landscape, specifically out of Alabama. Coach Nick Saban says starting inside linebacker Trey DePriest has been suspended for quote-unquote a short time. Saban didn't elaborate on what the linebacker did, but says it wasn't a very smart thing to do. Says there's kind of consequences sometimes when you don't do the right things. Priest was second on the team in tackles last year with 59 total behind C.J. Mosley, the other linebacker. Top receiver Amari Cooper wore a black non-contact jersey in today's practice. Saban says he'll be held out several days with a strained foot injury. Little college hoops knows as well. Tennessee won't have a game, home game at least, against Kentucky for the first time in over six decades. Tennessee coach Conzo Martin confirmed Tuesday that the Volunteers would face Kentucky only once this year, and it would be at Rupp Arena for the season. In NFL news, the Raiders are already going to struggle this year. Things might have gotten worse, losing arguably their best player. Starting left tackle Jared Veltier will have surgery on a torn triceps and likely miss the entire season. Tom Brady reportedly took a shot to the left knee in practice today and limped off the field gingerly with trainers, headed back to the locker room. He was doing 11-on-11 drills against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers starting defense. In baseball news, the contending Kansas City Royals, that's hard to imagine, only four games out of playoff position. It just added utility man Emilio Bonifacio from the Blue Jays in exchange for a player to be named or cash consideration. 
Also have plenty of day baseball going on. Four finals earlier. Rockies beat the Padres 4-2. to two. The Reds beat the Cubs 5-0. Miami beat Kansas City 5-2. to two. Detroit beat Chicago 6-4. to four. Cleveland finally finished off that 12-inning game in Minnesota as they beat the Twins 9-8. to eight. Only other game going on right now has the Baltimore Orioles leading the Arizona Diamondbacks 4-2 to two in the 7th. Sports Sports brought to you by Cowboy Corner. Visit Cowboy Corner Boots and Jeans where you'll find over 5,000 pair of Western boots and work boots for the entire family. You also find lots of jeans and Western apparel, lots of service, and lots of savings. Cowboy Corner on Goodman Road in South Haven. Now, back to Fish and Stats. Presented by Auto Nation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. We are presented by Auto Nation GMC, and we appreciate it very, very, very much. What really sets a car dealership apart these days? Well, it's value, selection, and price. Whether you're looking for the perfect new vehicle or a great deal on a low-priced car, low-mileage car, check out Auto Nation GMC located at 2621 Hall Road, south in Memphis. Derek calls the GM there. He's the head coach. He's the general manager. He's the owner. He's Jerry Jones. It's his team. And he does a great job for you. He looks out for you, the customer. When it's time for regularly scheduled service, maintenance, or repairs, consider Auto Nation GMC's modern and friendly service department. They can save you time and money. If you need parts or accessories for your vehicle, they're glad to help and are standing by ready to serve you. Come in today and see their great inventory of new GMC vehicles and pre-owned cars. Give them a call anytime. Who are you going to call? You can call Auto Nation GMC, and you do it by dialing 888 888- 201-1640. Auto Nation GMC, our title and presenting sponsor, and we appreciate it very, very much. A lot on the table. You can text at 67129 your Mississippi State predictions for the season. We get this. Stats 6 and 6 is overrated for state. State's DBs will get embarrassed versus Oklahoma State's wide receivers. Well, they may. It's an all-new defensive backfield, and that one last year was a real good defensive backfield that had a tough night at the Egg Bowl and had a tough game uh, New Year's Day against Northwestern, against Pat Fitzgerald, my favorite coach in all of college football. They could. We'll see. That'll be opening afternoon. As a state fan, we get this. As a state fan, I feel like MSU should it, should just at least win six. Let me try that again. As a state fan, I feel like MSU should just at least win six and get to a bowl game almost every year. With the way the SEC West is, there's going to be very little room for ERA to get to that nine or ten win level in most years. That's right. Uh, at first, I thought he was he, he was saying win six every year, but he said at least win six. It's tough. It's tough for everybody in the Beverly Hills of college football in the SEC West unless you're Alabama, LSU, and maybe, maybe, small sample size, maybe Texas A&M. Everybody else, I don't have to go through them. You know who everybody else is. It, it's tough. It's kind of all fishing off the same, same pier. It's really tough, and you have, to, you have to have a lot of things go right for you. I think you have to have an experienced quarterback. The well, state's got that. They definitely have the experience at quarterback. It's just he's got to get to that next level. He's got to get over that hump to where he does play better against the better teams. Mm-hmm. Talking about Tyler Russell, of course, but I'm with that texture. I mean, as a state fan, I'm a lifelong state fan. My whole family went there. Been around it for a long time. The expectation level, it's it's different at places like that. You know when you're playing in the, in the West against Alabama and LSU, the best you, you can really hope for in a season, a great season for a team like Mississippi State, is a 9-10 win season. If you can get to that, that is a f- unbelievable season. Mm-hmm. But you have to understand that that expectation level has to be dropped down because it is always a tough schedule. If you can make a bowl game each year, and that's six wins, six, seven wins each year as teams like Arkansas, like Mississippi State, like Ole Miss, like Auburn, and every once in a while maybe have that magic in a bottle that everything comes together and you can have a really good season, that's all you can ask for as a fan base. Who would be that fourth team? If, it, if it's Alabama, LSU, and maybe A&M, the fourth team would be Auburn. What I mean, just a few years removed from winning a national championship, and they've been to the SEC championship game more they were than that, the rest of them. They were that catch magic in a bottle team. Though. They did. With, that, with I mean, they completely caught it. He, he wasn't a, a experienced senior quarterback. It was his one and only year, but it was a shooting star. It was. It, it it wasn't lightning in a bottle. It was meteor. That crashed into Bryant Denny Stadium the, the the Friday after Thanksgiving that year in arguably the greatest Iron Bowl ever and maybe 
the biggest win for either side ever in Iron Bowl history. And Cam Newton engineered it, but it, it, it's just tough in the SEC West. It'll get tough again in SEC East. We went through this right after kind of the expansion and the split. The East was a little, it was a lot tougher, I think, through the balance of the 90s and into early 21st century. And then then it got it got tougher in, in, in the West. But Arkansas has been to the championship game. State's been once. Ole Miss, is, it's, ne- it's never been. Uh, other than A&M, they've only had one year to get the chance, only one in the West that hadn't been able to do it. State did it once. Arkansas has done it three times. Uh, it, it will be hard. I, you know, Over the next 21 years, we've got 21 in the books. Over the next 21 years, I, I don't know how many times o- Ole Miss, State, Arkansas uh, will go, but – I, I don't. I don't think. I don't. I don't think you need to plan for, you know, double digits, because it's gonna. It's gonna get spread out a lot. You know, Alabama and LSU are gonna get it, a uh, mo. Uh, a lot of years, and especially if Nick Saban goes, you know, he he he'll turn 62 this year. Steve Spurrier is 68. What if he just goes six more and just gets up to where Spurrier is? Yeah, maybe. He goes four times to Atlanta. Uh, yeah. I mean, minimum three. Minimum three? I think minimum three. Other three, who gets them? LSU two times and somebody else once? LSU at least one of those then times. Then what, what if we have another round of expansion? <laughs> you're right. You bring I mean, a team like a and You're right, though. I mean, how many teams are actually going to make it to that next level? I'll paraphrase Josh Pashner. It's hard. Winning is hard. Getting to Atlanta is hard, and that's why when you do, you better you better enjoy it. And State did. That was a fun game and fun weekend in 98 when they got there against Tennessee, and there was a time in that game that State State had Tennessee, had had the eventual national champion, owned the ropes, bloodied, mouthpiece, knocked out. Yeah, it was, what's that, right after the Kevin Prentice return, or was that huh? just before it? Right after. That, that's right, when right the, after that the, was when Tennessee started making their comeback. They, that was they, a great game, though. It was a great game, and, you know, that was a, that was a magical year for Tennessee. It took a lot of fortune luck it takes it in any magical year they got it with the sterner stumble and they got it in that game they kind of you know they were reeling and they, they got recentered and and went on to win the game and, and then against florida state fortunate it's part of sports you know they they didn't uh, they didn't get chris winky uh was it winky was he the starting quarterback for fsu i think it was the, and then who the marcus outzen started who did start quarterback in that one? I think, I'll double check that. I, I think Marcus Outson, but it takes some luck. It takes a lot of things going just just your way. Even when you're lo- you're loaded like Tennessee was a lot of those years. We talked we've talked a lot about Mississippi State today. I said six and six for the season. We'll get Rob to catch up on all these picks next week. He'll go game by game. We did at Kentucky on Monday. It was four and eight for the Wildcats. Went a little crazy predicting the Louisville outright upset for Kentucky. Might have gone a little crazy today with Oklahoma State lost to, to Mississippi State. Yesterday was Texas A&M, 9-3 for the A&M Aggies in year two in the SEC. Tomorrow we will talk Vandy, and on Friday we will talk Auburn. Next week it will be Mizzou, Tennessee, LSU, Georgia, and Alabama. The following week will be Ole Miss, Florida, South Carolina, and Arkansas on the day college football starts, and that's 15 days from today uh afternoon baseball was pretty wild and woolly the reds get the win they're not going away it it looks like the five teams in the national league settled i still think reds are cardinals and maybe the cardinals more than the reds now vulnerable to someone else to to someone on the rear flank coming up and somebody always does it about this time of year cardinals win last night and Really, just luck, lucky style with what happened to the Pirate left fielder and then able to win it in 14. I did not stay up and see the end. I was partly cloudy in the ninth and kind of gave up, and the, the timer was set on the TV, and I woke up to the good news this morning. Cardinals were 0-40 after seven innings going in when trailing going into last night. So turn it around. We'll see if it's a trend or if it was a blip or if it was just lucky like it looked last night as they play tonight, 7-15 in St. Louis. Tomorrow's afternoon game against the Pirates. Uh, Pirates are for real. They're, they're going to be around at the end. They're for sure going to have a winning record, and probably they may win the National League Central. They will be in postseason. It'll be fun. The Pirates' attendance, though, this year, not a shot. 
it's you, you you can go you can go to the Google machine yourself and see it either thir- 14th or 13th in the National League, and they'll have a chance to pad it down the str- down the stretch with the success that they've enjoyed. But how much will football in that football crazed area on every level impact the late August September crowds for? For the Pirates, because once high school gets going and in college in that area, and for sure, you know what what the Steelers are, what they what, what they become in in that area, and I and I can remember, I I, I can re- well remember through most of the 70s, even with Steelers success, if you had to say what is Pittsburgh, it was a pirate town through We Are Family, and and that was with Steelers success in the 70s with Terry Bradshaw and Lynn Swan and that cast of characters. But now it, you know it's not even close. Uh, I mean, the penguins may penguins really may be too. I think the penguins are too. Uh, that town is huge uh-huh. in Pittsburgh. As I, far I as think penguins. so. I've been one time in my life. I don't want to sound like an expert on Pittsburgh because I'm sure not. But I loved it. The, the Pittsburgh Chamber of Commerce. They should hire me. I loved it. Beautiful, friendly, clean. And I asked the, the uh, security guard at the hotel. I said, safe to walk around. He said, "Buddy, you'd have the worst luck in the world if something happened to you. This is the safest place anywhere, and, and it it was. And ballpark's beautiful, but hard to catch up on attendance this far into it. It can help down the stretch, but uh, but we'll see if it they get out of the 13th, 14th spot. We've talked about Mississippi State last year, eight and five, four and four in the league, uh, seven and zero oh start, lost to Northwestern in the Gator Bowl. Dan Mullen, 29 and 22." in four years. Sylvester Croom, he only got four years and only had 21 wins. Jackie Sherrill had 25 wins. I know the record books will show 26, but one of that was a uh, uh, forfeit. I, I don't count those. He had 20 on the field. He had 25 wins after four years. So Dan Mullen going in the right direction, I would say six back on offense and on defense. 2012 rushing on offense, 82nd in the country, Ninth in the SEC, passing 58th in the country, seventh in the SEC. Total offense, 79 nationwide, seventh in the SEC. Rushing defense, 67th nationwide, 11th in the SEC. Passing defense, 45 nationwide, seven SEC. Total, 52 nation in the nation, eight in the SEC. Tough opener and a brutal November. That kind of Cap that kind of cap you know sizes it up for state. Four teams that won bowl games in 2012 they face in November and a trip to Little Rock to War Memorial Stadium where states never won. And as I said earlier, they've never won in the state of Arkansas. They tied once in Fayetteville after Arkansas joined the SEC. Only time they've ever won 1916. Whoo, 1916 in a game played in Fort Smith. 75 million being spent on Davis Wade Stadium, Scott Field, to take capacity to uh, almost 62000 for opening night this time next year. About about 55 weeks from now, they'll open in that new stadium against Southern Mississippi. And Tyler Russell, he, he's thrown for a career-high four touchdowns twice. Did it last year against Arkansas in the route during the middle of that tough stretch of teams last year, but Arkansas was just trying to get to the finish line, and he did it in 2010 against the Memphis Tigers. couple of Memphis area youngsters on the team, tight end Hunter Bradley from Collierville, linebacker that both of our state guests today, both Bart Gregory and Brad Locke, both, both mentioned Philando Bohannon from Whitehaven and defensive back Will Redmond from East High School. I think they're much better on defense they will be much better on defense. If the wide receivers emerge, they could surprise some people on offense. We will have this comparison as long as they're both at respective places because I think they were 1-2, one, 2-1, two, two, one, however you want to toss it up and down last year in in the nation and for sure as defensive ends between Chris Jones out of Houston, Mississippi, and Robert Kim Diche, who signed with Ole Miss. It will be fun to watch. Who, who's better? Because you, you can have the February recruiting arguments, and then it takes the old test of time to see who's really better on the field, doesn't it? And it always does. you got to get out on the field and actually play it out. That's the only way that, that's the only standard that you can measure anything by. Bash, it's time for the sleep cheap big number of the day. So listen, um, I was wondering, can I have your number? The sleep cheap big number of the day, it's 
boy, what a good deal. Here's the really the big number. It's 503-9930. Another big number. Five stores in Memphis to choose from. Layaway, no credit check financing available. All you have to do is have a checking account, account and you are approved. All mattresses, brand new. No refurbished or used mattresses. I know someone that's on the beach in Florida that he's probably the only guy in Florida anxious to get home, and that's our very own fish. He's ready to get home and get back to his mattress from Sleep Cheap. Fuller Queen Pillow, top mattress on sale for $149.99. Fuller Queen Memory Foam mattresses on sale for $249.99. All the Memory Foam replica of Tempur-Pedic at a quarter of the price. Five stores to choose from in, in Memphis. Phone number again, 503-9930. Big number, $75 million. The, expand, the money being spent on Davis Wade Stadium. We had a caller yesterday talk about the $12 million. And, and, and it's a start. It's worth something on, on the Liberty Bowl Stadium. You have to do that almost every year. Texas A&M spending $450 million. State spending $75 million. Uh, what Arkansas just did, what Ole Miss has kind of on the uh, in in the planning stages. Everybody's expanding. There's a couple spots: LSU and Alabama, Tennessee, maybe even Florida. I don't know how they can. I don't know where they're going to go up up to the heavens, I guess. But it it the arms race continues, and you have to keep spending. And that 12 million spent on the Liberty Bowl Stadium, that's a starter. That, that, that's just the opening bid. Yeah, you hope so. And I, I think uh, Brad was pointing it out perfectly. When I'm talking with Brad Locke. You you don't want to be the you don't want to make those expansions hoping to get fans to come in. You want it to you want to make those expansions because it's being demanded, and that's what's happening down at state. You've got people that are wanting to go to these games, so it's a necessity to expand the seating. That's the sleep cheap big number of the day. The phone number, 503-9930, 503-9935, stores in Memphis to choose from. Layaway, no credit check, financing available. All you have to do is have a checking account, and you are approved. Sleep cheap, big number of the day. Bash, you ready for a round of high hard ones? Just a bit outside. I take that as a yes. I'm always ready for some high hard one stats. Let's get them. Good job, bad job. Four years from Dan Mullen at Mississippi State. Um, good job. Oh, great. I think a very good job. Great job. I ask it flawed. Great job. I know uh, last year. Remember year's... where it was, bullies. Oh yeah, no question. Where it was at is, is compared to where it's at now is fantastic. And I, and I, I, and I love Sylvester Crone. Wish oh. it, wish it had worked. Kind of did, but mostly didn't. And forty-five to nothing in the big game. We'll, Will we'll get you fired. <laughs> it's not going to help the cause. <laughs> no. I love Sly, no doubt about it. But he didn't have that team on the right track. Mullen does. I, I like where he's got this team moving and what he's doing with the program over at State. Last year's into the season was disappointing, no doubt about it. But it's still he's done a successful job, without a doubt. But the reason why it was so disappointing was three in a row and a lot of fun and a little bit of the needle, and that's okay. Uh, I, I don't, I've never taken the affront, the irritation at Dan Mullen. He's doing his job. His job's to stoke the base. His job is to rally uh, state fans. His job is to every day try to get in the Ole Miss grill. And you know what? It's got to be that fire's got to be returned. You got one? Yeah, it's got to be. No question about it. All right, I'm going to go with you. Stick with you for the SEC. Out of all the teams that didn't or that made bowl games last year, who doesn't make one this year? Made it last year, won't this year. You know, see, I got 12 out of 14 going. Yeah, that's true. Who are the two that you don't have going are who? Uh, and t- ten- I have Tennessee and Kentucky not going, so I, it wouldn't be anyone. Right. Uh, the, the, the one I think in the most jeopardy that went last year, went last year and won, Vanderbilt. I can see that. Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt could definitely struggle. And I don't mean that in any stereotype. It's just still Vanderbilt. I guess that is a stereotype. That's that's the definition of a sorry, stereotype, sorry I think. <laughs> so, nice. so, very sorry about that. Afternoon baseball. Uh, you, you see what the Tigers are doing. Uh, Tigers in the World Series against the Braves. Would you like that? I'd love it, but the Tigers would win. That Tigers team is just nasty. When you look at the Leland's pitching staff, doing, the hitters, what's that? Leland's do. He got swept last year in the World Series. Yeah. He's going to join the Tony La Russa, Sparky Anderson, win one in both leagues club. 
I'd love to see Tigers Braves matchup, but I don't know if the Braves are gonna get there. The Dodgers look like the team to beat out of the National League, which would be fun. No, oh, that'd be a blast. Wouldn't t- Dodgers Detroit would be a good one. Dodgers Detroit would be a lot of fun. Dodgers hadn't won it since '88. Tigers hadn't won it since '84. Wow, '84. Yeah, that sounds about right. All right, I'm gonna go back to the SEC for you. We've heard all the talk about Jadavion Clowney and all that good stuff. How many games does Jadavion Clowney make it through the entire season, or does he miss a couple of games? No, he, he's all the way through, and it could be, it will be, it will be, it will be dominant. It will not end in a Heisman Trophy, though, because as Warren Sapp says, look at that trophy. You see somebody with his hands on the football. He's not gonna have his hands on the football enough. Now, if he had the big opening night game against North Carolina and then a just a monster game and he's the dominant presence maybe tips one and catches it and scores against Georgia and then later in the year gives you something else he's not going to give you anything on offense there's no package for him to slide in there at tight end and run a tight end reverse but what if he blocked an important kick what if he blocked uh, blocked scoop and scored in the state championship game against Clemson then that could build the momentum for him to win it. I think he'll do enough to be on the stage in New York City, but I don't think he'll win it because it's an offensive award. Well, and the other thing about defensively, if, if you're trying to be that guy, Manti Teo, he was, in, he was the front guy for Notre Dame the entire season last year. Jarvis Jones, there were people that were talking about it at the beginning of the season, kind of halfway through, that he might be a Heisman contender. If a defensive guy has one game where he disappears, he's off the ballot completely, and that's what happened to Jones. Bash Tom Brady injured today in practice. MRI on Brady's left knee, negative. I know the player that it happened because it's quick whistles. They're very protected. It, I don't. I don't think. I don't think it was anything cheap, untoward. Tom Brady, does he does he play longer, or does Peyton Manning play longer? Who's got the most years left in him? Ooh, that's a good one, Manning. I think so. No, sorry, sorry, <laughs> Brady. I think so. I think Brady can be, play it. Another five seasons, maybe, depending on if he's able to keep those knees healthy. Manning, we might see the end of Peyton Manning in the next two seasons. I was, I was going to go part two, low hard one, if, if I may. Is that allowed? Yeah, sure, why not? Low hard one, kind of sink or slider. You want that? Yeah, why not? Something <laughs> at the angles. Yeah, and get you to wave at it like David Freeze does every outside pitch. Lay <laughs> off of it, please, but I don't want you to lay off of it. Could this be it this year for Peyton? Did he signal that a few weeks ago when I asked about the future? And he said, all in for this year. That's all I'm talking about. Maybe that's a hint at it. You know, with all the talk that was centered around him last year and him saying the possibility of him retiring, everybody's just kind of going into this one expecting, oh, he'll be around this year, probably be around next year. You thought you would have heard something else about it. I think we're going to see at least one Two full seasons left of Peyton Manning, and that includes this year and the next year. If he won it in New York City, where Super Bowl 48 will be played at his little brother's stadium, and he won it, and he had that big game, and he has any kind of of stat line, he'll be the MVP. I think he might pull Elway. Walk away, tip of the cap, but it's going to be hard for him to ever do it. If if he wins it, I could definitely see him walking off. What about – I'm getting out of order. What about a Peyton Eli Super Bowl in New York City? Any any chance? I just I can see the Broncos getting there. I really can't see the Giants getting there this year. I don't have any faith in that team. I don't I don't know if it's the defense that I've got question marks with or what it is, but I don't think the Giants make it. Broncos most certainly could be there. Broncos coulda shoulda almost last year. It would have been Peyton back at home in New Orleans for that game and he didn't play great that day. He, he he bears, and he's taken, and he should get a lot of responsibility for that, a lot of criticism for it. He's taking it. But he didn't play defense that day. They didn't cover anybody in the secondary late in that game. Not, a, not an excuse for him. He gets his blame, but he wasn't in the secondary. But it, it was a miracle win for the Ravens. I thought, they, I thought the Broncos had it that day. When we come back, we'll talk a lot of baseball with Dave Chase, the commissioner of the Prospect League, former boss of the Memphis Redbirds. You're listening to Fishing Stats on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. We are the voice of Grizzlies fans. Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. 
Hey, I'm here with Greg Hapke, General Manager at Acura of Memphis. And Greg, I'm excited because you guys have a bunch of new arrivals to tell our listeners about. We do, Peter. We've got the brand new 2013 RDX, which gets 28 miles per gallon, has 273 horsepower, and starts from only $399 per month. Also, we have the brand new 2013 ILX with 35 miles per gallon, $209 per month. That's a super nice vehicle to get started in the Acura. Greg, sounds great, but I heard a little rumor that there's something really special that you guys are just ready to announce. Peter, everybody talks about the Acura Legend. Well, the Legend actually became the RL, and now the Legend returns. For 2014, we have the new Acura RLX. This vehicle, Peter, it's amazing. It will pull you back into the lane. It will stop you. I mean, it practically drives itself. I've got to take a test drive, Greg, and I know where I can find it. 385 and Ridgeway or online at AcuraOfMemphis.com. When you see the happy face on our truck, you'll be confident your drain will be unstuck. Get the Happy Face Trucks headed to your house today to learn more about Energy Star's certified products that reduce utility bills. Hiller features the Rude Ultra Series AC system that is rated number one for reliability. You can rely on Rude and Hiller Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Look for the Happy Face on our truck. Call the pros at Hiller Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling, your Rude reliable local contractor. Rely on Hiller's 100% satisfaction guarantee. Happy you'll be, or the service is free. Call Hiller today, or go to happyhiller.com. If you're not happy, you don't pay. That's the Hiller Plumbing way. So call a Happy Face truck today. Germantown Hardware and Paint is happy to announce they now have the famous Yeti coolers in stock just in time for the football season. Come check out why everyone is raving about the Yeti coolers. And if you're looking for the perfect grill for that outdoor football party, Germantown Hardware and Paint stocks the largest supply of Weber grills and accessories in the entire Mid-South. And now has added Holland grills to their extensive inventory. Conveniently located at the corner of Poplar and Germantown Parkway, it's Germantown Hardware and Paint, the only real hardware store in the Mid-South. Hi, I'm Glenda Hastings, owner of Natha Cafe, and I'd like to invite you to see our private room for your next big celebration. Whether it's for your wife's birthday, your daughter's rehearsal dinner, or your best friend's engagement party, Natha Cafe is prepared to tailor a menu and decorate our spacious dining area with absolutely no room charge just for you. Recently awarded Best Place for a Business Dinner from Memphis Magazine. We can host your company's next lunch or dinner program in our private room that holds up to 65 guests. And we have free Wi-Fi for your convenience. We can also accommodate more intimate occasions in our glass-enclosed wine cellar from two to four guests where many of our loyal customers have celebrated anniversaries, engagements, and even marriage proposals. Call 683-0441 to book your upcoming event or visit us at 5101 Sanderland and make Napa Cafe your choice for your next event. Check the website napacafe.com for daily specials and reservations or just drop by at 5101 Sanderland. Oh, oh, oh. Alrighty. Eventually, it's going to happen. You'll turn the key and your engine won't start. Don't lose your ability to get around. Visit O'Reilly Auto Parts for a super start battery. Whether it's a reliable economy, hardworking premium, or powerful extreme, you'll find it at an everyday low price. Don't let a dead battery slow you down. Visit O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Now, a Sports 56 update. It's 5.30. I'm Bash. Got a couple of college football notes, specifically out of Alabama. Coach Nick Saban says starting inside linebacker Trey DePriest has been suspended for quote-unquote a short time. Saban didn't elaborate on what the linebacker did. It says it wasn't a very smart thing to do, and things there has to be consequences sometimes when you don't do the right things. DePriest was second on the team with 59 total tackles last year, directly behind C.J. Mosley, the other linebacker. Top receiver Amari Cooper wore a black non-contact jersey in today's practice. Saban says he'll be out at several days with a strained foot for the receiver. Little college new hoops news as well. Tennessee won't have a game, home game at least, against Kentucky for the first time in over six decades. Tennessee coach Conzo Martin confirmed Tuesday that the Volunteers would face Kentucky only once 
and then it would be a rough arena for this season. In NFL news, the Oakland Raiders are already going to struggle this year, and things might have just gotten worse, losing arguably their best player. Starting left tackle Jared Velt here will have surgery on a torn triceps and likely miss the entire season. Tom Brady reportedly took a shot to the left knee in practice today, limped off the field gingerly with trainers. They were doing 11-on-11 drills with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers' first-team defense. Adam Schefter is reporting the MRI was negative. It's just a slight strain right now on Brady's left, left knee. In baseball news, the contending Kansas City Royals, four games out of playoff position, just added utility man Emilio Bonifacio from the Blue Jays in exchange for a player to be named or cash considerations. Also got plenty of day baseball. A couple of finals from earlier. Indians finished off the Twins in a 12-inning game. 9-8 to was the final there. Tigers beat the White Sox 6-4. to Marlins beat the Royals 5-2. to Cincinnati shut out the Cubs 5-0. And the Rockies got a win over the Padres 4-2. to Only game going on right now is Baltimore Orioles leading the Arizona Diamondbacks 4-3. to That one's in the top of the ninth. Sports reports brought to you by Dixie Pickers. Located at 99 North Center Street in Collierville and open Monday through Saturday from 10 to 5. Dixie Pickers should be your one-stop shop for fine southern apparel and classic sports memorabilia. Visit them online at DixiePickerStore.com. Now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. We welcome you in. We will talk baseball with Dave Chase coming up. Dave is in Dayton, Ohio. He is the commissioner of the Prospect League, and he, for years, ran the Memphis Redbirds down at the corner of 3rd and Union. Redbirds still in contention in their division. They're hanging on. Last night was a... a Long night of baseball as well. It was really a long night day before last when they had the – well, yesterday was the doubleheader. It was two games they split last night, losing 2 nothing and winning 8-6. They're back at it tonight, 7-35 first pitch, 7-05 pregame. Steve Selby out in Colorado Springs. They come home on Friday, last homestand of the year, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday against Omaha. That will go a long way to sorting – out there, division six seven one two nine. Still time for you to get in on the question of the day: the cushiest job in sports. A. Sean Foley, Tiger Woods teacher. B. Uncle Nate Fitch, handler of Johnny Manziel. C. Worldwide. He's twenty years old too. C. Worldwide West. D. The tournament chair of the Maui Classic. You can text six seven one two nine for a shot to win. $25 gift certificate to Humdingers. Two locations for Humdingers, 6300 Poplar Avenue or 1134 North Germantown Parkway. It's time to talk baseball, and we do it every Wednesday with Dave Chase, the commissioner of the Prospect League. Dave, I know you're on the road. Uh, the baseball is getting good on the major league level. It's getting good on all levels right now because it's getting down to the end for everything below the major leagues. How are you, Dave? I'm, I'm doing quite well. I'm uh, standing in front of the Kentucky Motor Speedway. I thought it would be a good place to stop. It's got a, I got a strong signal, and I think we can talk some baseball. Well, thank you. Uh, on, on your way to Dayton, OHIO, aren't you? That's where I'm heading. Dayton and then, uh, Springfield, Ohio tomorrow. All on prospect league business. But you're right. It is an exciting time in baseball. The minor league seasons are just a couple of weeks away from winding down. I think like it was just yesterday the season started. Uh, all the college summer leagues are, are now finished. The kids are heading back to... Uh, to the various colleges. That's, that's kind of cool. Uh, so it's a pretty exciting time, and generally in baseball. The race is probably not what we were hoping for across the board, but we'll have a couple of exciting ones anyway. Yeah, and it, every year we have that surprise team that kind of gets hot about right now or a uh, week or two, two weeks from now. If you're not hot by Labor Day, you're running out of time. Uh, I heard Jack Buck years and years and years ago say that if you're more than – the days in the week out at seven. If you're more than that out, you're you're probably out of it. You, it. It's time to push the pedal. And Boston resurgent. Detroit keeps on keeping on. Texas back. Uh, Oakland and Tampa slipping a little bit in the American League. But isn't it kind of interesting that the uh, the teams that you would expect for the most part to be near the top always manage to be close this time of year. Maybe this year, with the exception of. Uh, of Washington, I think those teams would pretty much predict would be there. Mm -hmm. Could Washington be that team that you know, you know? They've now won four in a row. They're still two under five hundred. I heard Bob Carpenter on with Wolo and Bash, and he was right. You just you, you can't be taken seriously until you're you at least get to five hundred, if not one or two over, and start pecking away. Well, I thought I thought they had a pretty good shot at finishing uh, third before the Mets ran into the Dodgers. The Mets were in. Uh, Two games out of second place, which is kind of hard to believe. 
And that would have been really embarrassing for the Nationals to finish third or lower in the uh, National League East. I think that's just as likely as them closing the gap on the Braves. I don't, I don't think they can close that gap completely. Uh, I don't even know what the math looks like if they could get back in the wild card race or not. But they've got to chalk this up as a major disappointment for you know, the Nationals organization and certainly for the fans. Did they? Did the Nationals lose this year or last year? Well, we've talked about it a lot, and I think in some ways they did. I think by by shutting down uh, Strasburg, that uh, they sort of put it on themselves. That we we were telling them then that you don't know when you're going to get back in the situation. You better take advantage of it while you can, and they opted not to. I think it's set a bad maybe not precedent is not the right word, but it certainly it, it, it left the gate open for second guessers to take a long, hard look at it. They got off to a rocky start. Uh, Strasburg's record is still under 500. I was shocked the other day that he got his first complete game shut out this season. I would have bet you he had come close to doing it last season. And you uh, talk, you, you mentioned the second guessers, Dave. And how about us first guessers? We get to say, I told you so. Well, sometimes it pays to be right, you know. And and I, I'm just stunned that uh, you know, just a few weeks ago the, uh, the Nationals rewarded their general manager with a a new title and a long-term contract. And I'm not sure. Someone's got to be responsible for this, I would think. And you can't blame it on all the all the 25 baseball players, but they rewarded him. So I, I just don't get that. And Dave, I, I do not get it. Davey Johnson, their 68, 69-year-old manager, a baseball lifer, great manager, great baseball man, great player for the Orioles when he played, great player for the Braves when he played, and won it with the – Mets in 86, he said last year that if they didn't win it, he said in offseason, if they didn't win it or go to the World Series, that he, he would fire himself, and now he's going to re- retire. So I, <laughs> I, I guess he's firing himself. I guess, but how do you how do you justify it? I'd, I'd love to sit down with him and just a baseball man with a pedigree you just outlined. How does he buy into this whole thing that uh, we're going to win next year? I just I just don't get it. I just there are too many teams. Even David Johnson with those great Mets teams, he won in '86. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's it. So you don't, you just don't know how the season is going to turn out. Well, as great as Jim Leland, as great as he is, you know, he, he just has one, doesn't he, with the Marlins? He, yeah. And, and you know, he's trying to join the the Sparky Anderson, Tony La Russa, uh, uh club, small club, two man club of winning one in <laughs> AL, one in the National League. Uh, in, in and he could do it after being swept last year by a team that this year win, winners winners are two out of three years the Giants but this year dead last in a not great National League West. Yeah, you know, we're all talking. You, know, you hear people talking about the Dodgers who have obviously turned it around in the West, and many people declaring them to be the best team in, in the National League, at least maybe in baseball. Uh, I, I, I think that's a pretty tough thing to sell anybody. I, I think you put the uh, you put the Pirates ahead of them for sure. You put the Braves ahead of them. Um, you know, that makes them the third best team in the National League. And it, the only reason they've been able to do, the only reason, a significant reason they've been able to do what they're doing is because they play in the uh, Western Division. Could have a lot of uh, very experienced managers not back next year. We talked about Davey Johnson in the East. I don't know. I think Terry Collins has done a pretty good job with the Mets, but you know they could always change and you know try to uh, you know reinvigorate the, the fan base, season ticket holder base, and they always trying to everybody's always trying to sell tickets and the Mets sure are they they face a lot, uh the economy and New York City and the Yankees. Philadelphia with um he, he Charlie Manuel could be out. Uh Bruce Bochy wouldn't go anywhere, would he? I wouldn't w- think wouldn't so. be fired, but he wouldn't step away, would he? I don't think he would step away and I I'm sure he wouldn't be fired. Um uh, but those other jobs you're talking about, someone Somewhere along the line, we lost responsibility for things. Uh, no, it, it, Sandy Alverson with the Mets seems immune from any criticism. Uh, you know, do you blame the manager for what they're doing? I think he's he's turned the season around. He's, of course, he's doing it on the back of the pitching staff. Uh, and I understand that they're talking about shutting Harvey down when he gets to 200 innings. Sounds like Strasburg Part Two. Um, so I don't know if you know so Alverson is back to Collins for now and. Collins has certainly played the company line, so I don't know if they would make the change. But you know, at the end of the day, in a city, 
situation like New York, it's almost more marketing than anything else. And uh, they're not going to be in a free agent hunt, so maybe changing manager is, is the way they go. I think in Philadelphia, I, I'd, I'd be shocked if there's not a manager change there. Mm-hmm. Just because they got to sort of, they have to hit the reset button and start rebuilding. Seems like he's ready for it, too. You're right about Sandy Alderson. He's really kind of immune from all criticism. He's immune from the state of the game uh, criticism. Some of the some of the criticism critics of the game, he doesn't get any of it from when he was right there as one of Bud Selig's lieutenant, and he doesn't get any from being right there in the middle of the Bay Area, uh, steroids, Balco, where it all started with the Bash Brothers. You know, he, he's 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 always had good press, and uh, uh, people respect him, and that's that's fine. But you know, I mean, you you just you just listed the litany of our current problems and. He's been involved, and another one he was involved with was the Latin players and all the problems we've had with determining their ages and identities and all those kinds of mm-hmm. things. And there's certainly the, the Latin players who, for whatever reason, are you know, top of the list for minor league suspensions for violating the uh, uh, performance managing drug policy of, of Major League Baseball, minor league baseball. Uh, so he's been involved in all those things, but somehow he's got an office at City Field must be made out of Teflon or something. Must Nothing be. Comes near it. Must Nothing be. Sticks. Everything's all good in Queens for Sandy Alderson. Uh, another manager, I, I think he'll make the postseason. If he doesn't, I, I'm pretty sure it answers the question or the premise here. And if he does make the postseason and doesn't do very well, Dusty Baker back in Cincinnati. I tell you what, people seem to really, people with the right really like Dusty Baker. Uh, maybe if they fail, they don't make the playoffs, or they don't go very deep. We'll hear some stories about it otherwise. But I'm not hearing any of that. Uh, Dusty seems to uh, be tight with Jockety. Uh, I keep hearing that through it all, the players love playing for him. Uh, but sometimes when you watch him manage, he seems so disinterested. <laughs> I mean, he's just, he's not in it. He doesn't seem to be into it. But if he keeps Jockety happy and the players are, are you know, really want to play for him, I would imagine he survives. Now, but, you know, Dusty had some health problems, too, so we don't uh-huh. know what the status of those are. Help me with managers. Are they? Uh, is it just like players for them after after they retire five years to the Hall of Fame? Or could, could they, if Tony Russo, if something happened in Cincinnati and Dusty's out and, and Walt Jockey hires his old buddy Tony Russo in Cincinnati, does that reset the clock for him into Cooperstown? That's a, that's a good question. You know, there was talk when Ted Williams came back to manage the uh, Washington Senators that they were they were going to turn his clock around in uh, in Cooperstown. Uh, I don't know if managers have that uh, same. I would I would I would guess they still have the five years. In the NFL, they do because it it reset for Bill Parcells a couple times, and then a couple other times in the last few years. When his name was involved in jobs, I think he pulled out because he was ready to go to Canton and not have another clock resetting. Well, you, you, you know, we weren't we weren't on the same page. You're talking about resetting the clock before the five years or before they're in the Hall of Fame. And I was thinking more mm-hmm. along the lines of if they're in the Hall of Fame and they go back to work. What happens to them? Uh, I don't know. I, I would guess the clock resets if they come out of retirement before I- being elected. And I, I saw Ted Williams manage a game in the first year the Rangers were in Arlington. I think it was 72. Yep. And right. Ted Williams was he, he was the manager, and it was against the Yankees, and he came out for a pitching change, and Dad said, there he is. <laughs> I said, who's he? <laughs> yeah, it's hard to imagine Ted Williams the great hitter uh, when you see him, when, you, when your first exposure to him is as a manager. Yeah. But he, he was one of the great stories of, you know, we always talk about the great players don't make very good managers. I don't have any recollection of how good a manager he was, but I know he had some very mediocre hitters that hit a lot better when he was the manager. Man, it so, was hot that night. I can tell you that either the night before or the night after, we went to a Browns-Cowboys preseason game at the Cotton Bowl and miserable, and then the the next night, or it was the night before, to to this baseball game about this time of year, right before school started back, and the last place Yankees against the last place Rangers. But Ted Williams, <laughs> manager, I got you know got to see the Yankees, you know, you know, kind of knew of their lore, and and learned a lot about Ted Williams after that trip. Uh, last night in St. Louis, the Cardinals just stole one, didn't they? Did you see how it ended? Yeah, 
or how it, how, how the rally with the left fielder dropping a r- routine that a major league player makes nine yeah, ninety nine out of a thousand. Well, I think in the last week we've seen a lot of routine major league plays not be made on on any number of games, but you know, sometimes the team starts getting those braces because it's the team of destiny. I just think the Cardinals make their luck. I mean, they, I don't I don't mean they're lucky. And, it's got to run out, bad, doesn't it, Dave? I've been saying it for about four years now. It, it's bound to run out eventually, but boy, they got to. They must have built up a whole lot of good karma somewhere along the way, because right now, year after year, they get those, they catch those breaks, and you can see them going on a uh, win six out of the next seven or eight games after that. I mean, it's just that kind of team that you just can't. I was, I was listening to the uh, Redbirds a little bit last night with their doubleheader, and Shelby was groaning that Wainwright had come back out, I guess, in the seventh inning and was over 100 pitches and was losing the game and. Whoa, what are they doing? That kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> just you don't second guess the Cardinals. They, whatever's going to happen, it's, it's going to happen. It's going to work out for them. The Dodgers. It's, 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 the Dodgers now sixty-nine and fifty, winners of seven in a row, nine of their last ten. I opened up a seven game in the all important loss column. The only thing that <laughs> we look at, Rob's the one that looks at all those halves, not not not, not Dave Chase and myself. Uh, Yasiel Puig, what he he's done for this team. I hear, I, I don't know his name, but I hear there's another superstar in the on in the making on the way. Cuban defector already defected. Should those players go through the regular draft, or is it just the wild wild west and get the checkbook out and go go get them? Well, it certainly has been the wild, wild west on, on, on the Cuban players, and uh, you know, baseball made an effort to create an international draft, and that hasn't that hasn't happened yet. So I guess I guess that's going to continue. Uh, it just means that the ads are going to continue to have more. Uh, it, it seems to me, and to you, I mean, that's how the original draft was created. It was people got tired of the rich teams gathering up all the players, so they created this draft, and well, all it's done is drive up the signing bonuses, I guess. But uh, yeah, they're they're not defecting to go play in Kansas City. They should be probably. You know, Kansas City's played well lately. <laughs> L- lost two in a row. Bash and I earlier in the week were talking about are they for real? Or are they just kind of what Cleveland? You know, two weeks ago we were kind of getting interested in Cleveland. They backed up. Now the Royals have backed up as well. And, and a lot of times you can you can have that burst. It's just really hard to sustain it. But uh, you, Kansas City's got a lot of young players, but I, I, I don't think that's where superstar defector wants to go play. No, when you look back at it, you, you see someone like George Brett played his whole career there and some of the other great players that went through there. Just the dynamics of the game that have changed so dramatically that I'm not sure we're going to ever return to those uh, those days. I mean, these guys, these teams are going to have to do it. Pittsburgh, Kansas City, Cleveland, Delaware, they're going to have to learn to do it with homegrown talent that they know they're not going to keep for a long time, but they might be able to hold on to them long enough it, to win every now and then. It's why, uh, which is probably all you need to do to be successful. Yeah, and it's why, I, I, Dave, I enjoy the pirate story. I, it wouldn't, you know, I, I think people know who I'm for first and foremost. I don't affect the outcome of the games, though. I'm just cheering at home and making an idiot of myself when I'm there at the games. <laughs> but if, if, it's Pit, if it's a Pittsburgh game, Tampa World Series or Pittsburgh Oakland that sounds like the 70s doesn't it Pittsburgh and Oakland uh, I, I'll, I'll be fine with it and for those long suffering fans uh, I would be happy for them well you know we the Cardinals need other teams to play so you got to hope for some of these other teams to have some good years to maintain the fan interest and the stability of the franchise and all that sort of stuff but I think it's just good for the game there's having Pittsburgh be in the in the breath when we're talking postseason now it's been been a very very long time since we last did that, but I think it's good for the game. I do too. Uh, for them to be back in in that in that spot, uh, and then you know we got young upstart teams. Uh, Tampa Bay's lost by six in a row or something. Yeah, they're, amazing. they're scuffling. Baseball and, term uh, scuffling. And not and not looking good either. I mean, no. It's not doing the basics. And I got some when players. Do, when do you scuffle and look good though? I say, you know, it's it's hard to, isn't it? it? It's pretty hard, but you know. You could you could argue that the uh, Cardinals are scuffling a little bit. Um, you know they get that uh, the Memphis St. Louis shuttle has been working overtime the last uh, couple of weeks. Boy, it has. Like every day, someone's moving somewhere. Yeah, if you see anybody broken down on I-55, it's probably a Memphis Redbird headed to St. Louis. Louis, Dave Chase, thank you for your time today and your trouble, and uh, and I know you're ready to depart the Kentucky Motor Speedway. 
I am. I really, uh, it's been a crazy day. And anyone who's telling you the economy's in bad shape hasn't been on the interstate. <laughs> That's right. It's, it's, it's border to border trucks right now. They're I mean, giving away gas, Dave. It's, 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 it's 30 <laughs> cents, not 3.30. Thank you so much. Be safe, Dave. We'll see you next Thanks. Wednesday. Thanks, Brett. You got it. Dave Chase on baseball. And we come back, the winner of the question of the day, the Humdinger's $25 gift certificate, and we'll wrap it up for this Wednesday afternoon. You're listening to Fishing Stats on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. The Press Box with Keith Parker and Elliot Wender. 1 to 2, Monday through Friday on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Interest rates are rising, and the real estate market is and has been blazing hot. And if your home hasn't sold yet, why not? This is Sheldon Rosengarten with Mark Spensdorf, the oldest real estate company in town. I recently had a contract on a house in 18, 18 hours. Another took 21 days, another in three days. Were they priced too low? No. It all involved preparation, plus my highly successful strategic marketing program, which includes superlative internet exposure and even a shell bucks option. The plain and simple truth is that being realistic in your pricing and expectations, being aware of what the buyers are looking for, and being sensitive to the market around you can make the difference in whether you sell or sit. So if you're thinking of selling, remember to talk to two to three real estate brokers and make sure that I'm one of them. Find out the difference in what I do and what others may not do. Call me, Sheldon Rosengarten, 682-1868, or through my website, memphisrelocate.com, at 682-1868, or memphisrelocate.com. Hi, Stan Sanzoni asking you to join Chuck Ronsville and me for the Cannon Motors Rebel Yo Hotline show every Monday night from 6 until 7. We talk Ole Miss sports with coaches, players, and you, the fans. So join us Monday night for the Cannon Motors Rebel Yo Hotline show from 6 until 7 right here on Sports 56 WHBQ. Don't miss the Cannon Motors Rebel Yell Hotline Mondays at 6 p.m. on the voice of the fans, Sports 56 WHBQ. You'll see the dedication in every single step. You'll see it in the smiles when smiles are hard to get. You'll see it in the little things that add up to success. The caring and passion are the things that we love best. Wolf Chase Linden Brace is your Mid-South provider for orthotics and prosthetics. They are an ABC accredited facility and their practitioners are ABC certified. At Wolf Chase Linden Brace, their services include artificial limbs, legs and arms, braces of all kinds, and custom molded inserts. You can call them today at 901-507-7821 for their location on Highway 64 in between Germantown Parkway and Appling Road. Or visit them at their new location in Jackson, Tennessee. That number is 731-660-5900. Or visit them on the web at wolfchaselemonbrace.com. To yours. Chase Lim and Grace. I like saving money. I mean, it's not like I have a purse stuffed with coupons or... Okay, I do. The other day, I went into Wells Fargo to get help with a loan. Good news. You qualify for our double discount promotion. For a limited time, get double the interest rate discount we normally give on select new loans and lines of credit just for being a checking package customer. And the best part? I didn't even need a coupon. Come to Wells Fargo to discuss how the double discount promotion can help with the interest rate on your new loan or line of credit. Wells Fargo. Together we'll go far. Subject to credit qualification, Wells Fargo Bank and A. Now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Time is short, Bash. we got to get right to it for the winner of the question of the day. Tomorrow we will be at Tunica National from 3 to 4 for Mid-South Golfer, the radio show, and then 4 to 6 Fish and Stats. Come on down, play in the three-person scramble. Call Tunica National about getting in that. You better get in it now. A lot of fun down there on Thursday. Come by and see us. We'd, we'd love to see you. The question. Cushiest job in sports, A, Sean Foley, B, Uncle Nate Fitz. He didn't get many votes at all. Uncle Nate didn't get many votes at all. Very sad. Almost the Reuben Askew, the New Hampshire primary, uh, how few votes Uncle Nate got. C, World Wide West and a late charge with a strong one for World Wide West. Or D, the tournament chair of the Maui Classic. Somebody goes off the grid, as predicted Bash, and said, Stats, you have the cushy job. That's the told one. You Before I, the show started, I we told said you somebody would do that. That would come. We I, do have a very cushiony job. Yeah, they're they're great. I don't. I'm, I'm not going to apologize for it. It's I a, love my job. It's a great job. It, it, yeah, and doing everything I can to hang on to it. And some days are easier than others. Uh, but down to the semifinalists. One, 
will be World Wide West. Nobody knows his title, so he can't be fired. Plus, he gets to see great basketball games. That one are very early. This came in. A is a hard job. That's Sean Foley. B and C make you feel like you need a shower. Uncle Nate, World Wide West. Dirty jobs are seldom cush. It's D, partially by its own merit and partially by default. I, I love that one. It's he, spot on. He set the goalpost unapproachably high very early. It's uh, it's that one. It's A is a hard job. B and C make you feel like you need a shower. Dirty jobs are seldom cush. It's D, partially by its own merit and partially by default. Area code 662, we will get with you, and we'll coordinate how you get your gift certificate to Humdingers, $25 gift certificate to Humdingers. Again, tomorrow we will be at Tunica National 3-4 to four Mid-South Golf for the radio show with Bob Walcott, the, head golf, uh, the, super, the golf superintendent, the director of golf at Tunica National. He's the boss at Tunica National. And Jimmy Dar. We hope Jimmy's there with us tomorrow. And then 4 to 6, we will have Fish and Stats, and we will talk a lot about the SEC. We'll have uh, Vanderbilt predictions tomorrow, I think. For David Basham, I'm Brett Norsworthy. Good night, everyone. Keep your car looking like new. It only takes a few minutes at Car Wash USA Express. Washes start at just $5, and the vacuums are free with purchase. Clean your car as often as you like with a Car Wash USA Fast Pass, starting at just $24.99 per month. For convenience and safety, they always have an attendant on duty. Visit Car Wash USA Express at any of their eight locations in the greater Memphis area. Visit CarWashUSAExpress.com to find a location near you. Car Wash USA Express. A dirty car is a dirty shame. Join Sports 56 in the Midday Show at Big Delta Power Sports in Batesville, Mississippi on Friday the 16th from 11 to 1. We'll have lunch catered by Central Barbecue and Arctic Clear Bottled Water. This is Big Delta Power Sports open house and clearance sale, so you don't want to miss the best deals ever on Hondas and Polaris. We'll have drawings for great prizes like steel blowers, chainsaws, and other products as well. That's this Friday at Big Delta Power Sports in Batesville. Don't miss it. Hey, are you a busy adult ready to make a change to improve your future? Southwest Tennessee Community College is really affordable, about half the cost of your average state university. Busy adults can attend classes at Southwest before work, after work, even on weekends. You can learn anywhere, anytime with online classes. And Southwest accelerated and fast-track classes mean you can finish coursework in as little as 6 to 18 months. Plus, graduates from Southwest have a very high job placement rate. What are you waiting for? Call 901-333-4399 or go online at southwest.tn.edu forward slash recruitment. Once again, I find myself at Bonefish Grill. Tonight's romantic rendezvous, Lady Lobster. Her peak of the season succulents isn't around long, so I dive right into Lobster Rangoon. Hand stuffed at just $8.50. Across the room, the robustly choked lobster roll on a New England brioche roll, only $13.90. Then arrives the cold water lobster tail and wood grilled steak duet. Forbidden love on one plate. Hurry in and for a limited time, celebrate our summer lobster romance. Bonefish Grill, happiness here. I commute from Schenectady to Manhattan. It's about a six hour round trip, but it's cool. My family loves Schenectady and I love books on tape. It's a lot of time to spend driving alone. On the other hand, Schenectady is really close to the highway, so. Life is a long drive. Make sure your car is along for the ride. Mobile Super Motor Oil is formulated to help prevent sludge and protect against wear. Mobile Super for long engine life. Eventually, it's going to happen. You'll turn the key and your engine won't start. Don't lose your ability to get around. Visit O'Reilly Auto Parts for a super start battery. Whether it's a reliable economy, hardworking premium, or powerful extreme, you'll find it at an everyday low price. Don't let a dead battery slow you down. Visit O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. The voice of the fan. Sports 56 WHBQ Memphis. Fan 87.7 FM WPGFLP. You, I'm Kay Adams. Let's start in the NFL. Tom Brady left the practice field with an injury this afternoon. The Patriots held a joint practice with the Buccaneers leading up to week two preseason action. The veteran QB went down after a hit. He stayed in for a couple of drills before limping to the sidelines. An MRI did come back negative. The injury being reported as a left knee sprain on NFL.com. It's worth noting Brady did miss all of the 2008 season with a torn ACL in that same leg. He's listed as day-to-day -day for now. He's doubtful to play Friday against Tampa. 
In Oakland, left tackle Jared Vildier has a triceps tear. The latest reports tonight are that it's a partial tear. He's expected to undergo surgery and will be placed on IR with the designation to return. Veteran Alex Barron will start at left tackle for the Raiders. Vildier eligible to return in week eight. The Rams have suspended linebacker Jolan Dunbar. It's four games for violating the league's PED policy. And Broncos' Von Miller arrested Saturday for failing to appear in court after being charged with traffic violations back in October. Miller set to appeal his four-game suspension for a PED violation on Thursday. The linebacker was released Sunday. He didn't miss any practice in Denver. Over to the NBA, the Timberwolves locked up restricted free agent center Nikola Pekovic. The team made a clear signing their center a priority. In the offseason, it's five years, $60 million with $8 million in incentives. College football just around the corner. South Carolina's Steve Spurrier offered an update on Jadavian Clowney today. The All-American defensive end missed a scrimmage in practice with a shoulder injury. He will be on the field August 29th to play the Tar Heels. Plenty of daytime action on the diamond. Underway, Manny Machado with a two-run shot to deep center. The Orioles and Diamondbacks tied in extra innings as 4-4 to four in the 10th. I'm Kay Adams. This is NBC Sports Radio. This is NBC Sports Radio. All sports, all the time. Where every day is game day. And now, John Stash Hour. That's right, it's the John Stash Hour show, but I know I just don't sound like the dude, do I? No, it's Anita Marks in for John for the next three hours. We're going to rock and roll, a lot to talk about, a lot to get to here on NBC Sports Radio, NBCSportsRadio.com. Hopefully you've already downloaded that mobile app. My goodness, each and every show, every single guest, every single host, I should say, talks about that mobile app, whether it's a droid, an iPhone, because it's what you need to do. Take us everywhere you go. Also, phone lines will be open for the next three hours. 855-323-4622. You want to jump on board. Uh, As I said, a lot of topics we're going to hit on. Maybe you've got an opinion, a question about one of them, I welcome you to join us on the show. Kay Adams with the updates. Uh, She'll join us as well a little bit later for Good Call, Bad Call. Can't wait for that. Haven't played that game yet. Can't wait to do it. Ryan Smith, our producer. Brett Abbott uh, on uh, on the board, spinning the hits. But uh, the biggest story right now today is uh, a number of people in New England, maybe folks out there who uh, are New England Patriot fans, kind of flock to their Twitter account, their Facebook, Sports Center, whatever means of sports information uh, you you kind of play around with to find out the latest with Tom Brady. And this is what we know. Uh, went down with a knee injury, tried to continue to play, left, went in, got an MRI. MRI results are negative for right now, but still tweaked a knee that he had torn the same ACL in back in 2008. So the biggest story today, therefore we're going to kick off the show with Greg Bedard, Sports Illustrated senior writer, does everything in the NFL, now part of the MondayMorningQuarterback.com with with Peter King. Greg, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Good. Hey, Anita. Good to talk to you. Appreciate you joining us on such short notice, but uh, obviously this is the biggest story today. Uh, Tom Brady, obviously, you know, one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Everything the Patriots have been through so far this season and and take a really big scare. What do you know? What have you heard from the organization? Well, you know, the right now it's all good news that um, the initial MRI on Brady uh, was negative, that there's no damage, that the ACL that he had repaired is, just fine. They're going to be doing more tests uh, just to be sure, make sure they're covering their bases. But uh, as of right now, it looks like a minor tweak to his left knee and that at this point he's day-to-day. I would say uh, he's almost assuredly not going to play Friday night against the Buccaneers. Uh, but I would, I would think he stands a decent chance, depending on how it comes along, of playing in the third preseason game, get him some action, get him out and then get ready for the regular season. Again, Tom Brady uh, went down during 11-on-11 drills. Uh, They've been been participating in this joint practice with the the Bucs. Bucs head coach 
head coach Greg Schiano came out and said he told his players not to touch the quarterback. Well, they didn't. They actually touched an offensive lineman. One of the defensive linemen touched an offensive lineman who then fell on Tom Brady. But, uh, you know, Greg, just to go one step further here, I mean, it's one thing when you're practicing with your fellow teammates because I I'm watching the Giants practice. They know, huh, you know, you got to be careful. I mean, you know, Eli Manning goes down. Uh, season's over. And and so now you're going up and you're scrimmaging and, and you're doing these 11 on 11 drills against Bucks players who really at the end of the day let's be honest they don't give a you know what about Tom Brady. Tom Brady has nothing yep. to do with their season. Uh, this is this is a little risky uh, on on the part of Bill Belichick. Agree or disagree? Uh, I think so, but I think the benefit of practicing against another team kind of outweighs all that. Um, you know, this is this is something that could have happened in a preseason game. It could have happened in their own practice. I mean, you have to understand, Nate Solder, the left tackle, got bull rushed by Adrian Claiborne um, of the Bucks, and Nate got knocked uh, off balance. And look, Nate, Nate Solder is like eight feet tall. Like, I mean, if he falls backwards, um, and it could happen in just their, their regular practice, um, there's going to be trouble for Brady. And that's kind of what happened. Brady threw an incomplete pass to the right side of the field to Aaron Dobson and and, and you know, Solder was protecting Brady's backside. Uh, you know, your point is definitely valid that these other guys, uh, when you practice with them, they don't care as much as if it was if their own quarterback. Um, but you know, I think I don't think these are going to stop. I think Bill's Bill Belichick sees a lot of value in these, not only for his own team but also uh, scouting the other teams that he's practicing against. And uh, you know, look, this is this is football stuff. Stuff's going to happen, and uh, it's unfortunate what happened to Brady today, but the good news is he's going to be okay, and I think the next time they just got to reinforce, hey, when you take two steps into the backfield, ease up. You know, we don't need you to push a guy back six feet. You can do it for two or three feet, and we'll be okay. By the way, the video is up online. All you have to do is Google it. It's all over the place. If you do want to, there was a spectator there filming practice and actually got a great shot, Greg. Not sure if you've seen it yet. Yeah. Um, in, in the back of the end zone, I mean, he was like maybe a stone's throw away from Tom Brady when he went down. So it's actually quite compelling video. Greg Bedard joining us again. You can find him, senior writer at SI and part of the Monday Morning Quarterback, MMQB.com. Let's talk about Ryan Mallett. Let's say hypothetically speaking, okay. um, granted we know the MRI came back and it's negative, but hypothetically speaking, let's say that maybe this is a little bit worse than uh, what we know right now. How good is Ryan Mallett, Greg? Well, um, he's okay. Uh, he is not. He is not a. In my opinion, he is not a starting caliber franchise quarterback in this league. I mean, this is kind of his. This is his third year. It's his chance to go out there in the preseason and show that he has value to the other teams in the league. And and he was okay in the the opening game against the Eagles, um, but that's all he's pretty much been. He has not shown. Much of that first round talent that people talked about in the 2000, uh, I think it was 2011 draft where he dropped to the third round because of character concerns. Everybody said he's got first round talent. He's got first round talent. Well, he hasn't really shown that. Now, if, if Brady, say Brady was out for the first month of the season, um, I, I think that this is probably the worst season that it could happen if Brady went down for a knee injury. you got to remember in 2008 when Brady went down and Matt Castle took over for him, you know, they're coming off a 16-0 16, 16 and season, 2007. The team is pretty much intact. He has Randy Moss. He has Wes Welker. They have a really soft schedule, and they go 11-5 and five and miss the playoffs on a tiebreaker. This year, they have none of that. You don't have Gronkowski. You don't have Fernandez. You don't have Welker. You have a bunch of new guys learning new routes, and then all of a sudden they have to learn uh, a new quarterback and a guy's got to get his feet under him. That's just not a recipe for success. So, so for any, for this to happen in any season, if Brady was out for a stretch, this would be a bad one. All right, last before uh, we go, last but not least, let's talk about Tim Tebow. Um, 
hearing what Bill Belichick says, and, and I, I kind of get the sense that he kind of defends him at times when he does talk to the media. I also found it interesting, I was reading something today where the defense really likes having Tim Tebow on the team because he runs the pistol offense extremely well, and the defense feels that with this new breed of quarterback and Colin Kaepernick and Russell Wilson and, and RG3, that, that Tim Tebow is helping the, the defense prepare for these teams at practice. Thoughts on Tim Tebow? Do you think he makes the team? And, and what are you hearing from the organization right now? I do think that he makes the team. I think that he has some value to this team, at least, um, you know, in just that he's a good football player and he's a good worker and he's a, he's a positive influence. And I think that the Patriots can use a little bit of that right now. And I, and I think when you talk about the Patriots organization, you got to remember that offensive coordinator Josh McDaniels, who has a ton of sway with Bill Belichick, you know, dr traded three draft picks to trade up into the first round to take Tim Tebow as a quarterback. So the offensive coordinator believes in him. By extension, the head coach believes in him. I have seen steady progress from Tim Tebow. Now, do I think he can start and win for this team tomorrow? No, but I think he has a chance with this this group with development with at least a year. And I think he's going to get that in, in some way. I think he's going to be on the team. I think he's going to be inactive a lot. Um, but I think he's going to stick around because I think the Patriots like having him around. Great stuff, Greg. And, and again, thank you so much for joining us at such short notice. Greg Bedard uh, breaking down what's going on with uh, Tom Brady and the Patriots. Always, always enjoy my time with you, Greg. Thank you. No problem. Talk to you later, Anita. You got it. I want to remind you the Home Depot is bad projects with stylish bath products at guaranteed low prices. So you can finally revamp that vanity. Oh, the wifey's going to love that. Retile the floor and rethink that shower. Visit homedepot.com for details. More saving, more doing. That is the power of Home Depot. This is the power of NBC Sports Radio. Getting you Greg Bedard right at the top of the hour to talk about Tom Brady going down with a knee injury. But up, oh, MRI says not a big deal. Only time will tell. We'll open up the phone lines, 855-323-4622 is the phone number. You want to get in, thoughts, comments, concerns about Tom Brady and the Patriots. How good could they be without Tom Brady? We just heard from Greg Bedard. He said, ah, oh, Ryan Mal, it's okay, but he's not going to win a lot of games for you. I already went on the record by saying the Miami Dolphins win that division, even before this happened today. Agree with me? Disagree with me? 855-323-4622. When we come back, we'll hear from Rex Ryan, Geno Smith, who had a horrible, horrible day of practice. Who's going to win that quarterback battle? NBC Sports Radio, NBCSportsRadio.com. NBC Sports Radio. Hey, this is world champion ski jumper Sarah Hendrickson, and you're listening to NBC Sports Radio. You're listening to NBC Sports Radio on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Jay Farner here, president of Quicken Loans. Right now, the rates on a 30-year mortgage are among the lowest that we've seen in decades. So we asked ourselves, what could be more perfect than that? Then we came up with the answer. The Amazing 5 Mortgage, exclusively from Quicken Loans. You see, with our Amazing 5 Mortgage, you get the best of both worlds. It has a low initial rate for the first five years, and it's a 30-year term. After the first five years, the rate may change once per year. It's perfect. The Amazing 5 Mortgage lets you take advantage of a super low mortgage rate for the first five years. That's five entire years till the year 2018. Today's super low initial rate on our Amazing 5 Mortgage is all the way down to 2.875%, APR 3.01%. Call Quicken Loans today at 800-QUICKEN. That's 800-QUICKEN. Or visit us at quickenloans.com. The Amazing 5 Mortgage. One more way we're engineered to amaze. Adjustable rate subject to change. Call us for cost information. Equal housing lender. Licensed in all 50 states. NMLS number 3030. Run and run and run and run and Back to school got you on the run. Let's get it started. Ah, let's get it started in here. Office Max has everything school requires and everything your student desires. With over 2,800 supplies in store. Save on touchscreen laptops, tablets, printers, and ink. Plus weekly penny deals and max value items at a buck or less. Let's get it started. Office Max. The hot deals start here. Offer ends September 14th. Restrictions apply. I commute from Schenectady to Manhattan. It's about a six hour round trip, but it's cool. My family loves Schenectady and I love books on tape. It's a lot of time to spend driving.
alone. On the other hand, Schenectady is really close to the highway, so... Life is a long drive. Make sure your car is along for the ride. Mobile Super Motor Oil is formulated to help prevent sludge and protect against wear. Mobile Super, for long engine life. Good. Oh, we've had some great weather this summer, which means folks have been out in full force, jogging and biking and gardening and playing with their kids and doing yard work. But one thing that can keep people indoors, on the sideline, that's pain. Folks at Campbell Clinic have been treating chronic or urgent injuries and pains right here in Memphis for more than 100 years now. They have four convenient locations, Germantown, Collierville, South Haven, and downtown, and they can take care of the pains and strains that keep you from doing whatever you love during the summer. So whether you just pulled something yesterday or you've lived with the nagging ache for years, now is the time to see the physicians at Campbell Clinic and start feeling better. They've got 45 doctors, and they actually just added three more this month. They're growing their practice to serve you. What's keeping you from getting back to what you love? Feeling better and being more active is just a phone call away. Call Campbell Clinic for an appointment. 759-3111, 901-759-3111, or visit CampbellClinic.com today. I like saving money. I mean, it's not like I have a purse stuffed with coupons or... Okay, I do. The other day, I went into Wells Fargo to get help with a loan. Good news. You qualify for our double discount promotion. For a limited time, get double the interest rate discount we normally give on select new loans and lines of credit just for being a checking package customer. And the best part? I didn't even need a coupon. Come to Wells Fargo to discuss how the double discount promotion can help with the interest rate on your new loan or line of credit. Wells Fargo. Together we'll go far. Subject to credit qualification, Wells Fargo Bank and A. Hi, I'm Joan London, and if you're worried about your parent or a loved one living alone like I was, and you want reliable senior care information, then call A Place for Mom, the nation's largest senior living referral service. With one phone call, you'll get free information on assisted living, Alzheimer's care, nursing homes, even important financial information. It's a free service, so call now. Call now, 800-460-3580. 800-460-3580. The Home Depot's guaranteed low prices have made painting any room in your house more affordable than ever. With quality brand names like Bear and Glidden, you'll find the perfect colors at great low prices. Exclusively at the Home Depot is Glidden Duo Paint Plus Primer. This durable Paint Plus Primer can save you more time and money with just one coat. Visit homedepot.com slash paint for details. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Do you have unfiled tax returns or owe the IRS or state more than $10,000? If you don't take action now, your tax problem is only going to get worse. Seizure of property, bank levies, wage garnishments, and potential criminal prosecution. Call the experts at U.S. Tax Shield for help at 1-800-334-5070. Our tax advisors will review your case for free, inform you of your rights, and give you a guaranteed quote. And we have an A-plus rating with a BBB, so get protected. Call U.S. Tax Shield now at 1-800-334-5070. Mommy, you should take the time and do a lot just to keep me safe. Knee pads, baby gates, corner cushions, socket covers, and that fancy car seat for big girls like me. Where'd you find that thing? The odds of a child being in a fatal car accident are 1 in 23,000. Highly unlikely, but it's still worth untangling those buckles time after time. Well, there's something out there that untangling buckles won't protect a child from, and that something is autism. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism are 1 in 166. That's right. 1 in 166 children will be diagnosed with an autism spectrum disorder. And one of those could be your child. Knowing what to look for and catching it early could make a world of difference to your child and you. So, Mom, while you're remembering to protect me from the unthinkable, don't dismiss the possible. To learn the signs of autism and what to do, go to AutismSpeaks.org. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. As NFL camps amp up and battle the heat of the dog days of summer, the season creeps closer with every passing day. Keep it here as we cover all of your breaking NFL news. This is NBC Sports Radio and NBCSportsRadio.com, where every day is game day. Every day is game day. It's 
right. It is the John Stash Hour Show. Anita Marks in for John this evening and tomorrow, by the way. NBC Sports Radio, NBCSportsRadio.com. Phone lines are open, 855-323-4622. How good are the Patriots going to be? I'll tell you what. It's a big scare right now. Just don't know. EJ Manuel, new quarterback for the Buffalo Bills. Uh, some are saying possibly could have the same season we saw Cam Newton have his rookie year. I don't know. The Jets. Ugh, we're going to get into that in a, in, a, in a hot second. But I'm telling you, the Miami Dolphins, I think the Miami Dolphins are the real deal. I think the Dolphins are going to win this division. And now with Tom Brady re-injuring, again, MRI negative, no tear, it's just a sprain. But this is the, the same left knee that Tom Brady tore his ACL in in 2008. It's a long season. It's going to be a long season for Bill Belichick, Tom Brady, and the Patriots. How good do you think they're going to be? 855-323-4622. Kind of frightening. Keep in mind, Timothy Burke from Deadspin.com is going to join us next. Excellent article out right now on Deadspin about the family history of Johnny Football, Johnny Menzel. They were into cockfighting, dude. Cockfighting. Unbelievable. Great story. You want to check it out and you don't want to miss the interview. Again, Timothy Burke, all that's going on with the NCAA investigation, with uh, Johnny Manziel, what's going to happen. Big question on the show tonight, too, is uh, what if you're Texas A&M, keep in mind, all this transpired with Johnny Manziel after the season ended. So this, is all, this all happened like in the offseason. So right now, let's say the NCAA comes down with their investigation. The only person who's getting in trouble is Johnny Manziel. Uh, Texas A&M is not because they have, still have not played a quote-unquote ineligible player. If the NCAA finds money changing hands, yada, 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 well, then he's ineligible. If the NCAA plays him, then yes, then they're in trouble. But they're not in trouble yet. So the question is, listen, A&M takes on Rice. They take on Rice, and they, they take on Sam Houston State is game one and two. If the NCAA has not made a decision yet in regard to Johnny Manziel, sit him. Heck. You could win with me a quarterback against those two teams. Please. The big game is September 14th against Alabama. That's the big game. I think the NCAA, I think we'll know what time it is by that time. But Timothy had some interesting things to say about the NCAA. So you definitely want to stay tuned for that interview. We're still talking NFL, where another big storyline is what's going on at, uh, at Jets camp. Never a dull moment, right, when it comes to the New York Jets. I'll tell you what. It's unbelievable here in New York because the Giants are the better team, but the Jets get all the coverage because they're so freaking dysfunctional. It's really insane. But anyway, Rex Ryan spoke to the media today. You've got a quarterback battle going on between Geno Smith and, and Mark Sanchez, as we know. Geno Smith hurt his ankle in preseason game number one, had a big practice today, ran mostly with the first team, but did not look very good. Oh, it was brutal. That was that was Geno's worst day. And obviously, you know, the ankle's part of it, but he's, you know, way too many picks. That did not look comfortable. You know, obviously he has to come back from it. He will come back from it. But we've seen it. Guys have bad days. But this was, uh, this was a, a really bad day for Geno. Yeah, it was a bad day. It was a horrible day. He had three interceptions in live, and, and one on 7-7 seven, seven drills. So four interceptions total. Big question mark whether or not he's going to play against uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars on Saturday night. Keep in mind, look, he's, he's battling. He's battling with Mark Sanchez for that position. You know, you're not going to win it in the tub. You're not. You're not going to win it being injured. I, I honestly, I do believe that Geno Smith is a better quarterback here. But what's the philosophy? You know, if you, let's say you start with Geno Smith and he struggles early, then you sit him, you bring in Mark Sanchez. You know what time it is with Mark Sanchez. Mark Sanchez isn't going to win any games for the Jets. They're just not, it's just not going to happen. So now you're playing with the psyche of a rookie quarterback in Geno Smith. I say, just for the mental aspect of it alone, you know that Mark Sanchez is, is just, he's going to fall flat on his face. Butt fumbler. So just go with Mark Sanchez. 
you know he's going to get the early hook, and then and then you just let Gino. I mean, let's face it, Jets aren't going to do anything this year. But anyway, Gino Smith had an opportunity to talk to the media after practice today as well. Feeling pretty good. I was able to go out there and push this week and uh, get some good work in. I've been going out there giving it my all. I think I've done a good job of uh, you know just pushing through this week. I, mean, I hate the fact that everyone tries to make this about me because it's not. It's about this team and these guys out here. We all work hard together, and uh, everyone's out there battling injuries. Yeah, everybody's out there battling injuries. Chris Ivory, mind you, who I think actually is going to have a pretty admirable season for the Jets. He's been battling injury as well, so uh, it, it's unfortunate because uh, I actually I, I named one of my fantasy football teams I Dream of Geno. I did. I did it. Not that I'm a Jets fan. And not that I'm a really big Geno Smith fan. I just can't stand Mark Sanchez. Some other injuries that are going around in around the NFL is uh, Jamal Charles. He actually had a scare. Reports are that uh, his injury is not very significant. Here's Andy Reid on Jamal Charles. So Andy Reid had an opportunity to talk to the media on Monday. Again, Jamal Charles went down with an injury and um, looks like it's not as severe as once assumed. Uh, if he can go, he'll go. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how he does here in the next next little bit. You know, see see where he's at uh, as far as pain or or swelling. Good hands, pain or swelling. You know, we'll see how he does. So Jamal Charles, keep in mind the Kansas City Chiefs are scheduled to take on the San Francisco 49ers on Friday. Uh, Jamal Charles, uh, big talk right now with Jamal Charles in regard to fantasy because uh, the new system, uh, the the new regime with Andy Reid in Kansas City. Uh, some hefty expectations for him. How Andy Reid's going to utilize Jamal Charles this season. Not only as a running back, but also uh, implementing him in the passing game as we saw what Andy Reid was able to do with LaShawn McCoy in Philadelphia. So hefty expectations for Jamal. You've got Alex Smith there at the quarterback now, Dwayne Bow. But this could be t potentially a, a tremendous season for Jamal Charles. So keep an eye on him. We're going to take a quick break. We come back. As I said, Timothy Burke is going to join us. He's from Deadspin.com. Deadspin all over the Johnny Manziel story, Johnny football, NCAA investigation, and took a really deep look, really an investigation into the Manziel family. You'll be shocked what they uncovered. I don't know. Maybe not shocked. It is Deadspin. Timothy Burke on the opposite end, NBC Sports Radio, NBCSportsRadio.com. Sports 56 Middays with Greg Guest and Eli Savoy. 11 to 1 weekdays here on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. This is your NBC Sports Radio update. A scare for the Patriots today. Tom Brady left the practice field with a knee injury. An MRI came back negative. The injury is being reported as a left knee sprain. The veteran quarterback set to have a reevaluation tomorrow. He could practice as soon as Thursday. It's worth noting Brady missed all of 2008 with a torn ACL on that same leg. He's listed as day-to-day. -day. On the diamond, some excitement in the Bronx. It's the Yankees hosting the Angels. New York up four, safe in the bottom of the first, thanks to a grand slam from Alfonso Soriano off of Jared Weaver. Underway, the Orioles and Diamondbacks still added. They're tied in extra innings. It's 4-4 four four in the top of the 12th. The Braves and Phillies in a rain delay. The Giants and Nationals scoreless. Mariners up one zip over the Rays. Earlier this afternoon, the Reds shut out the Cubs 5-zip. Tigers beat the White Sox. Other winners, Miami, Colorado. The Indians rally to a win over the Twins in 12. I'm Kay Adams. This is NBC Sports Radio. Purolator oil filters were invented in the USA. So when you change your oil with Purolator, it's as American as cowboys. Actually, it's more American than cowboys. Cowboys originated in Spain. So they sat around the campfire eating paella, not beans out of a can. Sounds kind of nice, but still not invented in America. Purolator oil filters were invented in America 90 years ago, and we've been trusted by professionals and do-it-yourselfers ever since. Purolator. Keep it pure. Available at Advance Auto Parts, Pep Boys, Meyer, and other fine retailers. Ad Parum Casarum. We seper fuit. Serias super osura qualitas. That's Latin. A serious language. Because at Little Caesars, we've always been serious about quality ingredients. Like using sauce made from farm fresh tomatoes, while some places use concentrated tomato paste. Qualitas serious. That's right. More Latin. Little Caesars. When it comes to quality, we're serious. Pizza, pizza. 
50 years ago, you could have paid less than $13,000 for a new house or less than $3,300 for a new car. Did you know that 50 years ago, you could have also gone to Lads to buy your new golf car? That's how long they've been helping people in the Mid-South with their turf, golf, and utility vehicle needs. A gallon of gas is nowhere near 29 cents anymore. But even after 50 years, you can still get a great deal on a new or used golf car at Lads. Lads is the only authorized club car dealer in the Mid-South, and club car is the best you can buy. Lads can customize your gas or electric golf car to your specifications. Whether you use it for golfing, hunting, or hauling loads around your property, let Lads show you what is possible. Golf cars are not just for golf anymore. Call Lads today at 324-8801, online at lads.net, or just go by and see them at Witten and I-40 for the best golf cars in the business. Lads and Club Car, driven for 50 years. All right, guys, time to make some decisions that will affect your entire football season. Are you going to fall for the game of the week or the year or the decade from somebody who lies about their 80% win rate Starts off talking a lot of smack, but disappears about two-thirds of the way through the season. Someone who promises a whole lot of free picks and then starts their high-pressure sales routine. Somebody who doesn't even use their real name. How about going with somebody you know and trust, a rain man in all-star sports? Our first 15 special is underway. The first 15 customers who sign up get season football, college and pro, and season basketball, college and pro, for $1,500 total cost and you get every play we make no exceptions 10 star plays included this year late money updates will be texted to our season customers call us at 461-4600 or check out the specials at therainman.com our 36th football season is coming up we want you to be part of it hi this is morgan freeman has anyone ever said you are the picture of health you look healthy you feel fine but that may not be the full picture. Colorectal cancer is the second leading cancer killer of men and women over 50. Since it doesn't always cause symptoms, you may not know you have it. The only way to know is by getting screened. Screening can find precancerous polyps, so they can be removed before they turn into cancer. This is one cancer you can prevent. Plus, Screening can find colorectal cancer at an early stage when the chance for a full recovery is very high. Talk with your doctor and get tested for colorectal cancer. Medicare and many insurance plans help pay for screening. Get screened. Make sure you are the picture of health. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Ferry residents, this is Tooth speaking. I'm sorry, did you say credit? Credit ferry? Perhaps you have the wrong number. Actually, no, I'm not familiar with the credit ferry. And I know all the ferries. We're a tight-knit bunch. Why don't you tell me more about what the credit ferry does? Maybe it'll ring a bell. The credit ferry magically raises your credit score so you'll be more likely to receive better interest rates? <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's not a credit ferry. But I do know you can improve your credit rating by paying bills on time and keeping your credit card balances low. Glad I could help. Me? Well, I leave money under children's pillows. Adults? No, kids only. But I do know a good dentist. There's no magic to improving your credit, but there is help, and it's free. Go to creditferry.org. A public service announcement brought to you by the Consumer Bankers Foundation, the Leadership Conference on Civil Rights Education Fund, and the Ad Council. When it comes to using their wireless phones, drivers everywhere are making safety their most important call. You gonna get that? <laughs> nah, it's tough just driving right now. I'll call them back when we get there. Driving in bad weather, they're saving calls for later. Hey, hon, the highway's crazy. Let's just talk when I get home. Driving in challenging traffic, they're cutting calls short. Terry, I just left the office and I'm in the car right now. Could you call back and leave those figures on my voicemail? They're using voicemail to take notes for them instead of fumbling with a paper and pen. Your wireless phone can be your best safety tool to call for help, report accidents, or alert authorities to dangerous drivers. Don't let it become a distraction. When you're on the road, make sure your phone is in easy reach before you leave. Know all the features of your wireless device and always dial sensibly. Dude, did you text Bob back? Not now. I'm driving. The wireless industry and the Tennessee Governor's Highway Safety Office remind you, with wireless, safety is your call. 
And now, back to John Stash Hour. This is NBC Sports Radio. Joining us on NBC Sports Radio, NBCSportsRadio.com, is Timothy Burke. You can find him. He's a Deadspin. He's the assignment editor and Deadspin all over the Johnny Football, the Johnny Manziel story, and actually goes one step further and really researches uh, the family history. So, Tim, Timothy, welcome to the show. Really appreciate your time, but... Uh, again, folks, please log on to Deadspin. Check out this article. And uh, first and foremost, how long did it take you to, to do all this research and, and really find uh, the depth of uh, the history of the Manziel family? Uh, well, I started uh, looking into it last last Monday or so, uh, right after the initial report came out from ESPN that uh, that Johnny Manziel was going to be looked at by the NCAA for signing autographs for money. And a lot of the early responses were, why would he ever do that? He's, you know, filthy rich. He's the heir to an oil fortune. And having not ever seen any actual evidence to, to support that, I decided to look into it. And little did I realize that I was going to discover a, a, a vast and fascinating Manziel family history. Well, out of all the things, for example, um, really b beyond just the oil, uh, the family was into cockfighting. The family allegedly was part of cocaine trafficking, murder, match fixing, um, grifting. I, I mean, I mean, just a number of things. Kind of, if you can share with our listeners exactly what what you uh, you you revealed. Well, uh, believe it or not, it, it really Johnny Manziel traces direct lineage to the Mayflower, and uh, even his. Even his ancestor who came aboard the Mayflower was described famously by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow um, as, as, as being a schemer. But uh, the, <laughs> the, the story of the Manzels in America, I mean, that was 1620, but it really starts in 1907 uh, when his great-grandfather, or his great-great-grandfather brought his, his, his great-grandfather over from the, the Syria-Lebanon area. And... Early on, um, his his great great grandfather was caught up in a land theft scheme in Louisiana, and then you know later on, early in his career, his great grandfather was a fight promoter, lost his license in Louisiana to to promote fights because he he was accused of fixing a professional wrestling match, which seems a little strange to hear now. You know, there was. A, a scandal about a fixed professional wrestling match, but apparently uh, they were supposed to be on the up and up back then. Uh, moving into the you know the oil business, uh, he was a wildcatter, which means that he would he would just you know drill in places for oil that did not have previously known uh, oil fields under them, and he and he hit one. Um, it was on the in the back the backyard of a church uh, and he had to you know run down every member of the church congregation to get them to agree to let him drill there and it turns out that he struck oil and uh, from there it started a whole train of lawsuits and and uh, and in trouble with the government the federal government and the state government he got into trouble with his um, he had a partnership with the boxer Jack Dempsey and that got got him into trouble but really it was his son that you know both picked up the tradition of the cockfighting both raising them uh, breeding them training them and fighting them uh, and you know trouble with the law um, it was it was Bobby Joe Manziel jr. who you know went to prison uh, for cocaine trafficking it's Bobby Joe Manziel jr. who was indicted for conspiracy to commit murder it was Bobby Joe Manziel Jr. who uh, was busted for counterfeiting, and 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 these aren't really the sort of things that you expect people who are heirs to you know multi-million dollar oil fortune to do, frankly. Wow, uh, great stuff, Timothy Burke joining us again. You can find him at Deadspin.com. Has an excellent article, the history um, of the Manziel family. Let's fast forward to what's going on right now. NCAA investigation. The latest is that Manziel signed more than 4,000, 4,400 to be exact items for different brokers. Two additional uh, sessions were just revealed this week, so that would that would be a total of six sessions with three brokers. And uh, reports are that uh, he profited fi a five-figure deal for those to be signed. Now, uh, there's no paper trail here. 
There's no evidence that we know of of monies being exchanged. What is the latest? What do you know? And what do you anticipate to happen with Johnny Manziel and the NCAA? Well, I mean, I certainly hope he got paid. I'm not signing my name that many times without getting <laughs> some major compensation. Right. Um, you know, especially if he's signing with his throwing hand. I mean, now we're talking about that many items. That's a you know significant risk to his playing future. Uh, you know, the, the 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 stupid thing about the NCAA is is how utterly ineffectual they are at enforcing the rules that they that they claim to stand behind and. And this is going to be another one of those situations. This is another example where uh, the NCAA has too much to lose by punishing Johnny Manziel that they will not put forward whatever effort it would take to uh, convince themselves of his guilt, and they'll just drop the case. Um, it's a very similar to what happened with the academic scandal at, at the University of North Carolina. Um, you know, faculty members you know, we're openly talking about how, you know, they were complicit in, in this scandal to change athlete grades. The NCAA knew this, but they chose not to talk to these faculty members because they didn't really want to put North Carolina in trouble. And that's, I think, what they're going to do here. Now, you know, when, you know, the University of Toledo, uh, you know, gets into some academic trouble and some of their players don't make grades, oh, we're going to take scholarships away from Toledo. Because Toledo doesn't matter. And that's how the NCAA works. Well, Tim, one of the questions on my show today for some of our listeners out there is, should Texas A&M sit Johnny Menzel for the first two games? Now, keep in mind, it's against Rice and also Sam Houston State. So those two games, you could say, ah, Texas A&M has enough talent uh, that they really don't have to worry. They could still beat those two teams without Johnny Menzel. But the big game on my docket, on my schedule, that I'm – I'm already I'm I'm already throwing a party. I've already sent out the invitations, and that's September 14th, 14th against Alabama. And if Johnny Menzel's not suited up for a and I, I don't know. I mean, half the country won't watch. So that's going to be the big game. I think you hit the nail on the head. Does the NCAA have too much to lose? Um, does the SEC have too much to lose as well? It's going to be interesting to see how this all pans out. But do you think a and should sit Johnny Menzel for the first two games? Well, I think the only reason they would have to sit him would be if they would be if they would be acknowledging that he had done something wrong. If they're acknowledging that he's done something wrong, then the NCAA is, uh, you know, they would be compelled to punish him in the university. So, I, I well, what if what if what if they were because you know violation of team rules, whatever garbage, you, you can't just sit him for games and and say, oh, you know this for his various, you know, off-field behaviors. Well, no, because, sitting him, you know, this is, this is what... Done way worse than that. Uh, yeah, but Tim, this is what I'm saying. If, if an NCAA, if a decision is not made made at that point in time when they face, they face Rice, their first game against Rice, and they're still waiting for the NCAA investigation to happen, if this is how Texas A&M gets in trouble is if they play an ineligible player. Uh, I, I would say that if the NCAA hasn't decided by the time the season starts, the NCAA is not going to decide. Interesting. Uh, the NCAA is fully capable of <laughs> deciding these things quickly, and that they haven't yet, it, it tells me already they're not going to do anything. So you don't feel the NCAA is going to do anything? You feel that they just have too much to lose monetarily for the TV deals and the fact that Johnny Manziel is like uh, the face of college football right now? Yeah, I, that's, I really... I, that's, yeah, I, you know, again, the NCAA has so little power to enforce... To uh, you know, compel people to talk to them in the first place. That you know, I, again, if the NCAA hasn't made a decision by the time the season starts, I would say the NCAA is not going to not going to affect any punishment. Thanks for joining us again. He's Timothy Burke. You can find him at Deadspin. Deadspin.com has an excellent, excellent article out. If you are intrigued and interested, in the history of the of the Manziel family. Um, it's it's a very good read. I highly recommend you uh, you hit it up. Hey, Tim, thanks for joining us this evening. Appreciate it. Hey, thank you for having me. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Cockfighting. Small-time grifting. Match-fixing. Federal indictments on cocaine trafficking and murder. The history of the Manziel family. <laughs> Check it out on Ted Spin. Hey, uh, coming up at the top of our next hour, 8 p.m., Mike Freeman is going to join us. 
Um, so make sure you get those questions to us from the O'Reilly Auto Parts Ask the Pros email inbox talking all things NFL. Hit us up, ask the pros at NBCSportsRadio.com. When we come back, it's time for what's trending. You don't want to miss it. NBC Sports Radio, NBCSportsRadio.com. Stay tuned. There's much more coming your way next on NBC Sports Radio because we come to play. Come to play. You're listening to NBC Sports Radio on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Head into the Home Depot for big savings on simple updates, like this small project. Give your bathroom a style makeover with a new Chelsea vanity at a new lower price of just $99. You save 50 bucks, plus you get a whole new look for your bath. One of many ways to make a big difference for less during the Small Projects Big Values event going on now. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. U.S. only. See store for details. Davis steps up to the workbench. His whole project comes down to this. He removes the clamps. The glue is holding. Oh, but we've got an excessive foaming penalty. The polyurethane glue is foamed up and seeped out, leaving a sticky mess everywhere. Goodbye, Hall of Fame. Hello, Hall of Foam. Don't be a Hall of Foamer. Try new ProBond Advance from Elmer's. Strong, versatile, weatherproof, and it doesn't foam when it cures. So you get all the hold with none of the mess. ProBond Advance from Elmer's. Available at the Home Depot, Lowe's, and other hardware retailers. I commute from Schenectady to Manhattan. It's about a six-hour round trip, but it's cool. My family loves Schenectady, and I love books on tape. It's a lot of time to spend driving alone. On the other hand, Schenectady is really close to the highway, so... Life is a long drive. Make sure your car is along for the ride. Mobile Super Motor Oil is formulated to help prevent sludge and protect against wear. Mobile Super for long engine life. Every heart stopper, every moment of genius, every wild celebration, every crushing disappointment, every added time robbery, every howler, every bruising tackle, every goal, every match, every team, every week. Live this season, the Barclays Premier League is on NBC and the NBC Sports Network. Weekend coverage begins Saturday at 7 a.m. Check NBCSports.com for the full schedule. When you go to the big name pharmacy, you get a filled prescription. When you go to your medicine shop, you not only get your prescription, you also get a familiar face and personal attention from someone who knows your health, someone you trust, someone who listens, someone you respect. When you have only so much room in your life for a pharmacy, make it the medicine shop, 920 Estate of Poplar. Call 901-683-3511. Hi, this is John Conway with Conway Services. In this summer heat, there is no worse feeling than coming home and opening the door to a hot home. If this happens, better call Conway Services. When you call Conway Services, you'll know from the first phone call you're receiving the most professional service in the Mid-South. From our delightful and courteous office staff to the most professional service technicians you'll ever meet. We'll perform a thorough evaluation of your entire heating and air conditioning system, letting you know up front, in writing, what's going on with your unit. No surprises, and we'll have you cooling in no time. Don't wait days for an AC repair. Man. Conway Services team of professional service technicians run most calls the same day you call. Right now, during the month of August, take $25 off your air conditioning repair when you mention this radio coupon. Professional service, upfront pricing, and a money-saving coupon. Now that's the Conway Services way. So call Conway Services, the Mid-South's premier heating, cooling, and plumbing service company at 384-3511. Call 384-3511. Conway Services. Call Conway today. Junior Canational's legendary three-person scramble is underway. Every Thursday at 5.30, $30 gets you nine holes with a card, free dinner buffet, and a chance to qualify for this year's Tournament of Champions sponsored by the Gold Strike Casino. Each week, all winning teams and all flights qualify, so if you win the second or third flight, your team qualifies for the TOC and the after party at the Gold Strike Casino. Now listen up. This year, both par threes will have a closest to the pin contest, and here's how it works. One lucky winner will win a fantastic prize from Tunica National. The other lucky winner will get a ticket put into an 
end of the year drawing for a chance to win one of five prizes from a collection of gifts valued at $2,500. So call Tunica National at 866-833-6331. That's 866-T-OFF-1. Anytime before 530 every Thursday to get your team entered. So for 30 bucks, you get golf, free dinner, a chance to win great prizes, and each winning team from every flight qualifies for the TOC. Plus the after party at the Gold Strike Casino. Call 866-T-OFF-1 and get your team entered today. Tunica National's three-person scramble is going on right now. I commute from Schenectady to Manhattan. It's about a six-hour round trip, but it's cool. My family loves Schenectady, and I love books on tape. It's a lot of time to spend driving alone. On the other hand, Schenectady is really close to the highway, so... Life is a long drive. Make sure your car is along for the ride. Mobile Super Motor Oil is formulated to help prevent sludge and protect against wear. Mobile Super, for long engine life. The Home Depot's guaranteed low prices have made painting any room in your house more affordable than ever. With quality brand names like Bear and Glidden, you'll find the perfect colors at great low prices. Exclusively at the Home Depot is Glidden Duo Paint Plus Primer. This durable Paint Plus Primer can save you more time and money with just one coat. Visit homedepot.com slash paint for details. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. My name is Joe Thompson. I'm 29, and thanks to my college degree, I'm a systems analyst. And the college me would tell you. I wouldn't be here without Big Brothers Big Sisters. My big brother believed in me, and to a 7-year-old... That means a lot. My big brother's name is Phil, and Phil is the reason that this 7-year-old grows up to be a systems analyst. Whether you donate money or time, you're helping Big Brothers Big Sisters help a child. Start something today at BigBrothersBigSisters.org. Brought to you by Big Brothers Big Sisters and the Ad Council. Got a question? We've got the answer. All you have to do is email us at askthepros at NBCSportsRadio.com and your question will go right into the O'Reilly Auto Parts Ask the Pros in Butts. From there, the ball's in our court and we'll answer your questions on the air. You can also call us at 855-323-4NBC. We are NBC Sports Radio, where every day is game day. It is the John Stash Hauer Show, and Anita Marks in for John today, NBC Sports Radio, NBCSportsRadio.com. It's time to talk about what's trending, that's right, out there on your mobile device, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, you name it, whatever you follow, let's dive into it. And uh, Ryan Smith, as well as Brett, who spins the board for us, uh, I want them to join us in on this segment, just because uh, I, I want to get a feel. You know, it is social media, it means everybody gets a voice. So let's throw out there what's trending. First and foremost, Alex Rodriguez and, and the Yankees are trending. Believe it or not, Alex hit his first home run on Sunday. Uh, the Yankees have won three straight. They swept the, the Detroit Tigers, mind you, who was really hot at the time. It was th their first really win of a series since the All-Star break. And granted, I, I get it. it. Look, Alex Rodriguez hasn't been hitting the cover off the ball, but sometimes a team needs like a B12 shot, no pun intended, do you guys think maybe Alex Rodriguez is it? Is Alex Rodriguez coming back and returning to the Yankees maybe what they need to really step up and truly contend in the American League East? What do you guys think? Uh, personally, I think the Yankees want no part of A-Rod. Uh, I think he got lucky against, uh, I think he hit that home run off Justin Verlander, and Verlander just didn't, wasn't really expecting much, and he got lucky. I think the Yankees are just getting by on luck right now. Really? So it's all about luck? Yes, exactly. Ryan? I think anything that A-Rod gives them, a half a half good A-Rod is better than what they're putting out at their base this year. Exactly. So. If you look at the stats, right? The, the batting average in, in, in the production that they're not getting from third base, exactly, Alex Rodriguez. But, I mean, not that it's by leaps and bounds, though. No, I mean, like I said, A-Rod's half the player he was, but it's better than what they're putting out. So anything they can put in that lineup... And they're getting healthy, so I, I think their push is starting to happen right now. Also, Victor Conti came out today and said that 50% of Major League Baseball is using performance-enhancing drugs. Uh, that doesn't surprise me. I, I, I actually, I, I would think that that percentage is even higher. Uh, if, if you guys, if based on, uh, granted, listen, this is what we're assuming. We're assuming here. 
Um, if you guys, what what would you assume the number would be? Victor Conti says fifty percent. Over or under fifty percent? What you would assume? I would have to say uh, over. Uh, I don't think uh, baseball even touches. Uh, 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 I think most of the players are on HGH, so I'd say about seventy-five uh, percent. I think. Wow. Okay, so seventy-five percent. Ryan, I'm gonna take the over too. Baseball is such a grind, the day by day, the bumps and bruises. They need something to to keep them going on a daily basis. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm with you guys, and, and I'll go one step further, and and, and uh, you know, we might get in this into this topic tonight or maybe tomorrow, and that is the whole HGH testing in professional football. Uh, you know, it's such a big stink because, granted, baseball is a team sport, but you have individual stats that come with that team sport, and, and that's why I think it's it's more unfair, in a sense, when baseball players use performance-enhancing drugs as opposed to football players. I just don't know what... I, I believe that, that at least 70 to 75% of the NFL is using performance-enhancing drugs and HGH. Again, this is not nothing that we know. This is our assumption and what we think, and um, and, and our thoughts are, are, are not a part of NBC Sports. They're our own. <laughs> uh, but with that being said, you know, the NFL and the NFLPA, they've agreed to some type of testing system that they're going to implement this coming season uh, for, for HGH. And I just I wonder how it's going to change the game. I mean, you know, you look at some of these guys, and, and granted, we've heard the comments from Adrian Peterson where, you know, he, he swears he's not using, and he says that it, what a compliment it is for those who think he is because, because of his performance. But I just wonder how many guys out there that are just absolute rock stars when it comes to the NFL and, and if they have to stop using, what is that going to do to the quality of the game? You know? I, do you guys think it will diminish it? I think there will probably be less injuries. I mean, football is always worried about concussions and injuries. Well, the main reason, in my personal opinion, is because everyone's juiced up. You take someone like uh, Sean Merriman when he knocked out Priest Holmes, and a year later he gets popped for steroids. I mean, most of the league is on something, and if you cut that out – you're going to see less injuries. What else is trending? You've got Kobe Bryant. Did you hear about this? Kobe Bryant's tweet. It said 12th, I see. Well, apparently uh, there's a lot of predictions out there. How good, how bad are the Lakers going to be this coming NBA season? And uh, in some power rankings, have them listed at 12th, actually below the Pelicans. That's pretty embarrassing. I don't think the Lakers are going to do very well. I think the West has gotten so much more competitive. The fact that Dwight Howard is now in Houston as well. Um, I, you know, I, I get, and Kobe's coming off of that Achilles injury. You've got Steve Nash long in the tooth. He's dealing with injury. I just, I just don't see the Lakers doing much. I, just, I look at this season as a down season. Get ready for 2014. Go after LeBron. Go after Carmelo. Um, focus on 214. Let the season be a wash. How good do you guys think the Lakers are going to be? I think it depends uh, how soon uh, Kobe Bryant comes back because if he doesn't come back, you might see a new coach pretty soon, and Mr. Pringles, a.k.a. Mike D'Antoni, will be out of a job. Hmm. Yeah, I think the Lakers are in a root for a rude awakening this year. I, I, I agree with you. I think they should go 2014. There's big-name free agents. The Lakers are still a nice draw. I think you just bite the bullet, get a good draft pick this year with a very deep NBA draft, and, and rebuild then. I love it. And you guys are out in Los Angeles. See, I, I'm, I, I, kinda, I do the show. I do, I do my show on the weekends with uh, Canadian Mike and Danny G, and they're all about the Lakers. All the uh, Lakers, they're still going to be good in 2000. No, I, they,